This story was truly interesting and mystical, and it began in Sichuan province. In the forest, which was very far from the nearest city, there stood a man, and his face was very tense. He was constantly thinking about how to act next, because the strength in his body was becoming less and less. His opponent stood in front of him, and due to the fact that he was on a hill, he looked down on him. This man called his opponent a bastard, and he meant it. After all, it was difficult to call such a person anything else. He had eliminated three heavenly blood squads, and it wasn't much of a problem for him. Moreover, he did not stop there, and after the meat grinder he killed four more elders of the palace, the world from blood. And finally, the supreme demon So Gunak fell from his hand in a fierce battle. This was a real monster, and he confirmed his title by piercing one of the corpses with his sword right now. He stood on a huge mountain of lifeless bodies, and asked the man why he was so pale, as if he had seen a ghost. His face was confident, and he called the man he saw in front of him his disciple brother. This monster was the fifth disciple of the leader of the demonic sect of the heavenly demon, and his name was Yun Seo Wun. One day, during the height of the battle between the Order faction and the demonic sect, something amazing happened. One appeared who stole everything within the central plains. It was the legendary elusive thief. And one day, the tomb of a thief who did not cast a shadow was discovered in Sichuan, and then all the fun began. Influential sects, despite fierce battles, sent their elite masters there to obtain treasures. The heavenly demon discovered their plan and immediately sent Yen Seo there to investigate the tomb. However, it was not the order faction that had to be fought. He had to fight with a traitor who was the second disciple of the heavenly demon, and whom everyone knew as the supreme demon who enjoys killing. Shortly before the battle, Yun Seo was poisoned with the Tang clan's seven-part poison. But despite this, he was still able to fight. And that would impress anyone. The supreme demon told Yun that he had heard that his talent was even the talent of a sect leader, and therefore it must be killed in the bud. Then Yun Seo said that he had already said that he was not interested in the position of the head of the sect. The traitor answered him that others think completely differently and therefore this will lead to its consequences. Yun Seo reproached his brother student for betraying the sect in order to become its leader. Moreover, he added that that man should work on his damn complexes, and then his life would become better. A smile appeared on the enemy's face, and from that moment it became obvious that he was definitely not the type to give up. Dark energy began to circulate around his hand, and he said that judging by the way Yun Seo provokes him, there is not much strength left. Yong tensed, because he realized that an attack would now be made and it was better to be prepared for it. Brother Disciple accelerated, and was deliberately to deliver a huge blow with an energy fist instead of where the enemy was standing. An explosion of incredible force occurred, and the shock wave spread over many hundreds of meters. Yong I realized that my brother student understood everything perfectly, and would use his knowledge in battle. The Supreme Demon while delivering blows, said that Yun Seo looks like he is on the verge of death, but he still had strength in his body, and he used my sword to repel the energy fists that were flying in his direction. But still he missed one of the fists, and this caused him irreparable and very strong damage. An explosion occurred, which was much weaker than the one that sounded a few seconds ago. The supreme demon immediately hurried to the place where his opponent's body fell in order to finish him off as quickly as possible. But the catch was that for some reason the body fell and the column of dust was very high. This only meant that Yun Seo had actually landed on his feet and was now standing at his full height. Then energy began to spread from the smoke and the supreme demon took measures to evade. He lowered his body and was able to evade it quite quickly, receiving almost no damage. There was only one small scratch on his face, while his opponent was truly exhausted. He was coughing up blood and open arterial bleeding was something normal in his body. But he still stood on his feet, and was ready to fight no matter what. Then the nuclei had already spread throughout Yun Seo's entire body, and he had very little chi energy left. The supreme demon suggested that he surrender, as it is obvious that after a few more attacks he will simply go to the ground. But he answered him that although everything was bad with his body, it was not yet to such an extent that he could not kill the supreme demon. Then the man said that he would no longer have to fight with Yun Seo, because the outcome of the fight had already been decided long ago. Yun Seo said that he thought that the supreme and mighty demon decided to simply run away with his tail between his legs. But suddenly he felt someone's presence, 
and this made him very scared. He instantly turned his head to look in the direction from where he felt the spread of this energy. Then the supreme demon said that it's good that now I also felt the energy of these scum. The demon said that if Yong does not want to disgrace himself by being captured by these idiots from the order faction, then he better offer him his neck. Yun Seo answered him that it was very stupid for the supreme demon to say such a thing, knowing his bad character. He told his opponent that he would die with him, and nothing would affect this. The supreme demon told him that this bluff will not work, because in such a situation it sounds simply ridiculous. But very quickly a realization came to him, because he saw something that he never expected to see in his life. Yun Seo Wung's heart began to glow with a very bright blue light and this light became brighter every second. It seems that the guy was in unbearable pain when this happened, and his body very quickly began to emit a large amount of energy. His physical shell seemed to melt away, sacrificing itself to something greater. The appearance of an ancient creature appeared right above the guy, and the supreme demon did not understand how this could even happen. Yun So asked why he was so surprised, because it was obvious that each of them had learned at least one forbidden technique. And this was a forbidden technique of the last moment. This is a demonic technique with explosive potential. The supreme demon could not believe that he was seeing this with his own eyes, because the use of this technique was so rare that it was more like a legend. He said that the consequences of using this technique would only be painful and painful death. But it didn't matter to him whether he would die in agony or not, because he truly sincerely believed that it would be great if his clan brother went with him. As soon as he said this, he immediately jumped away from the place where he had been standing all this time in order to make an attack. Approaching close enough, he said that he believed that they should die together right now. He fired several blows at once, and the supreme demon even missed one, despite the fact that he was extremely focused. Energy began to appear around his hand, and in these few seconds he tried to think through a detailed plan. This man realized that the enemy is very dangerous now, and first he needs to gain a greater distance. Therefore, he directed a stream of energy directly at the enemy, and at the same time jumped back. But Yun Seo didn't even dodge this attack, but simply walked straight through it. At that moment, it became clear to the supreme demon that there was only one thought in the head of his clan brother. He really only thinks about dragging him with him to the next world. He had to hurry and redirect all his energy into defense, otherwise he could die in a matter of seconds. The supreme demon realized that now he just needed to hold back this attack with his sword, and then there would be a small chance. But suddenly the man gave way, and because of this, one of his hands rose and could no longer provide energy for defense. There was an incredibly huge splash of blood that I covered everything around within a radius of a couple of meters. The limb was cut off, and now Yun Seo had every chance to win this fight. His face was as focused as possible despite the fact that he was now feeling unbearable pain. But the pain that the supreme demon felt was one thousand times stronger, because he had just lost his arm. Another explosion of incredible power occurred, and this shock wave had already spread over hundreds of kilometers. This was visible from a very long distance, because such a surge of energy occurs once in eternity. The supreme demon's body fell to the floor, and now he was no longer a warrior. He had completely lost all his strength. But Yun Seo still stood on his feet and pursued his only goal, to kill this student brother. And it seems that now he was ready to do anything to achieve this goal very quickly. His opponent's body flew several meters away and stopped, losing all kinetic energy. Yun Seo looked absolutely crazy and you couldn't see anything in his eyes. With the last of his strength, the man looked at his death and realized that he had only seen a forbidden technique once in his life. And even using it, Yun Seo had enough strength to fight on par with the strongest people in the sect, and he intended to do what he had wanted for quite a long time, because his dying dream was about to come true. The man realized that perhaps Yun Seo, in the state he is in now, is even stronger than he thought. With the last of his strength, he asked him to stop, but it is obvious that Yun Seo was not going to do this under any circumstances. The subsequent incredible explosion was visible even to those who were running through the forest. One of them said that they need to follow quickly, because most likely these are bastards of the demonic sect. The body of the demon who enjoys killing lay lifeless on the floor, and was disfigured by the absence of an arm. Yun Seo stood in front of his corpse for some time, and tried to normalize his breathing, because fury had completely enveloped him. It was very difficult for him to breathe, 
but how angry he was at his clan brother was beyond words. He just looked at his lifeless body, and it made him feel a little better. He took a few steps towards him and prepared to strike again. Swinging his sword, he prepared to unleash another powerful blow that would create an explosion. His eyes were still crazy, and he believed that it was at this moment that his life would end. One more blow, and his opponent's body was split into several pieces. He repeated these blows over and over again. It became obvious that he was acting for sure. The enemy did not beg him for mercy, but he simply struck him over and over again. His stance was so strong at that moment that the ground under his feet began to crack. Suddenly he felt that the energy that his body radiated was gradually devouring him, and this made him feel worse and worse. A second later, he felt blood coming to his mouth, and this time there was much more of it. He coughed up blood again, and felt that he had lost the last strength his body had. Gradually the world around him became darker and darker, and he felt a very strong cold in all parts of his body. The monks who arrived concluded that they no longer felt those two powerful energies, and they were very surprised when they saw a terrible picture in front of them, which they saw for the first time in their lives. The person who was sitting opposite the corpse was the hidden dragon general named Yun Sia Wun. They came closer to understand who the corpse was before it was mutilated, but his body was so badly disfigured that it was completely impossible to understand who he was. But then they paid attention to the ring of this corpse and realized that this was the supreme demon who enjoyed killing from the demonic sect. One of the monks poked his stick at the corpse that was sitting, and concluded that it was still alive. Yun Seo Woon did not have a single day that he could live as he wanted. Even his entry into the demonic sect was not his desire. His own parents sold him, and some man took him away from his own father and mother, and the one who did it said that the guy was unlucky, because he had just been sold for just a couple of coins and for the next ten years, he was locked in a secret demonic cave, and did various terrible things in order to survive. But mostly he killed, and in general his life consisted only of killings, and he did not do anything else. Another ten years passed, and he went through a life that consisted only of many battles, betrayals, and murders. But still, he never managed to get what he so desperately wanted all this way. Come to think of it, he had never done anything of his own free will in his entire life and in the end, he met his death due to the betrayal of his brother-disciple. Yun Seo concluded that his life is complete crap. Meanwhile, the monks turned his body over, and one of them asked what his last words were. Yun Seo did not answer anything, and then the monk moved on to action. He began to read some kind of prayer, and at the same time his body began to emit some kind of yellow energy. The monk said that he sincerely hoped that this person would be useful and achieve nirvana in his next life. In the last seconds of his consciousness, Young Seo said that if he could live another life, he would want to live it as he wanted. Young Seo thought that he was in hell, but when he opened his eyes, he realized that in front of him were guides to the afterlife. But for some reason these guides began to hit him with some objects, and after a few seconds Young Seo shouted, ordering them to stop. The man who had just beaten him with a stick could not believe that he actually dared to say this. Young Seo, who recognized this man very quickly, also did not understand what he had forgotten here. This was the same bastard who took him the day his own parents sold him. It was the one who threw him into the cave in which he had to kill every hour. But he already found him once and tore off all his limbs before eliminating him. Having come close enough, this man said that if Young said anything else, he would cut out his tongue. The guy didn't understand why this crazy guy even called him a puppy. But when Yun Seo Woon looked at the reflection on the sword, he realized that he looked like a child. There was constant screaming in the building where Yun Seo was now. The man manipulatively asked him to call him a freak again, threatening that in this case he will cut out Yun Seo's tongue at that very moment. But this did not frighten him, because at that moment his head was busy thinking about why he now looks the same as in childhood, and the lack of response from Yun Seo made that man very angry. He constantly called him an asshole, trying to get some kind of answer. Then he didn't like the fact that Yun Seo looked at his reflection in the sword, instead of looking straight into the man's eyes. And for this the latter kicked him in the stomach with all his might. But it didn't end there. This man began to kick this boy's body many times. Yun Seo's hands were tied, so he fell. Yun Seo had an idea that this is what his hell looks like. But why did he then feel the pain so vividly, as if everything was happening in reality? The second man who was also standing in the room, 
pulled the aggressive bastard away from Yun Seo, and at the same time said that with such an action he would ruin the goods, to which he replied that the boy would still die in the cave of the hidden devil. Yun Seo realized at that moment that this man was really the one who threw him into the cave of the hidden devil twenty years ago. The place where Yun Seo was now was the home where he had stayed before he was dragged into the demonic cult. Thinking about this, every now and then he heard the man in a rude voice indignant at why the boy was ignoring him. Everything looked very familiar, and as if all this had happened before. Was he really able to go back in time? While thinking about this, Yun Seo heard dialogues between the bandits. They were in a hurry to get somewhere, but Yun Seo had no time for these dialogues. He couldn't believe that time travel was actually possible. Perhaps this is all due to the fact that at the end of his past life he sincerely prayed to Buddha. One of the bandits said that there were rumors that Alliance Elder Murema was nearby. This means that they can sit on their tail, so you need to notice the tracks and get away from this place as quickly as possible. But the smiling bald bandit said that these decrepit senile people, who spend days wiping their pants, will not chase anyone. And that sounds like complete nonsense. Another bandit answered him that they probably just sent their henchmen, while they themselves sat and discussed the future of Mirim, or some other nonsense. They were frightened by the very thought that if these elders really showed up here in person, they would be crushed like cockroaches. They discussed the news, mainly talking about the fact that the Heavenly River Sword became an elder at the age of forty, despite the fact that he was not coming from the nine great sects or five great clans. They dreamed that maybe they should join the Murim Alliance and become an elder. After all, if this allowed them to live their lives the way they want, then they would not regret anything. In parallel with these conversations, one of the bandits approached the boy and looked straight into his eyes for some time. He then picked it up and placed it on his left shoulder, looking like he was getting ready to go somewhere with it. He turned to his brothers and ordered them to stop chattering, as they would now return to the cultists. When Yun Seo heard this, he knew it meant very bad news for him. And realizing this, he was very scared. After all, if he was dragged back, he would again end up in the cave of the hidden devil, which served as a training camp for the demonic cult. According to legend, the cave of the hidden devil is a training camp for a demonic cult that raises future adherents there. But in reality, this place is hell on earth. Engaged in conspiracies, betrayal and underground battles. Children here are forced to risk their lives every day. They must do anything just to survive. This is not a place where being strong or performing well is enough to survive. Even though Yun Seo managed to survive the hidden devil's cave last time, it's obvious that no one would want to go back there. Moreover, no one can guarantee that he will be able to do the same thing again. After all, if he gets stuck there again, he will only be able to get out after ten years. Therefore, Yun Seo decided that he had had enough and one time in that cave was enough for him. While Yun Seo was thinking, the man carried him closer to the exit and told his colleagues that he would be in the cart with this kid. And once again he urged everyone else to follow his example. But as soon as he finished speaking, members of some clan burst into the building, holding swords in their hands and ready to destroy the bandits. The criminals were very surprised when they saw them. They did not expect that the members of this clan as a whole would want to return to them. Yun Seo noticed that last time everything happened exactly the same. A wave of memories washed over him once again. The bandit, who was holding the boy on his shoulders, said that in front of them were the suckers they had encountered a couple of days ago. The bald bandit said that they should have calmed down and calmly left when they had the chance. But the girl, who most likely was the leader of this group, did not react to these words. She also drew her sword and said that they would pay with their lives for insulting the Manchon clan. The bandits smiled at this, and they said that this was a useless thank you for sparing them last time. The bald bandits said that if they so wanted to die, then they would arrange it. The battle was unequal in the number of warriors and unequal in the balance of forces. The bandits easily dealt with the clan members. Since the bandits were more trained and experienced, they were able to destroy a huge number of enemies in a very short time. Within a few moments, only two girls remained alive standing back to back and ready to take their last battle. Real, genuine fear was visible on their faces. The bandits behaved crazy, for example. One of them began to lick his sword, which had the blood of clan members on it, and this added even more horror to the remaining girls. 
one of the bandits laughed and ordered his subordinates not to touch those two girls, but to take them alive. Yun Seo realized that if his memory did not fail him, then the chance to escape would be given to him right now. At that moment, one of the girls took several steps towards the enemy and struck him with a blow, which he was able to dodge at the last moment. But this bandit was not her final goal. Her eyes glowed blue and she realized that the target was a little further away. Making a very quick lunge, she began to move towards the leader of these bandits, who had been standing steadfast all this time. Ever a piercing attack directly to the enemy's head, but he was able to dodge even such a quick blow. He said that it was a good try, but obviously no one would fall for such a trick. He said it was a good try, but obviously no one would fall for such a trick. He failed to come to an agreement, because at that very moment, Yun Seo, still on his shoulder, was able to hit the bandit right in the back of the head with his knee. At the same time, he snatched a bottle from this same bandit from his traveling belt. While everyone was stunned by what was happening, Yun Seo jumped from the bandit's shoulders straight to the ground, simultaneously holding this bottle in his hands, and prepared to run. After running a few meters, he jumped off the wooden floor straight into a window boarded up with wooden boards. A second later he was already in flight, but on the street. Under the angry screams of the bandits, he began to run away from this house as quickly as possible, without looking back at all. But very quickly he realized that he could not run far with such a weak body. Moreover, the fact that he was being chased by one of the bandits, who shouted that as soon as he got to him, he would immediately kill him, added to the panic. Yun Seo found himself at the crossroads of several paths in this forest, and was thinking in which direction exactly he should run. Because he remembered that in one of these directions his salvation lay. Looking to the right, he saw that this was the direction he should run. After a moment of hesitation, he ran again. The bandit approached him closer and closer, asking the young man whether he really thought that he could escape so easily. It seems that Yun Seo was very close to breaking away, but he suddenly tripped over a stone that was lying vilely on this path. Even before he fell, he realized that he was doomed, and he would never escape, because the bandit was already approaching him. When his body touched the ground, the bottle he was carrying with him also fell to the ground along with him. The bandit was already a few meters away from her so, the boy reached for it, even in such a situation, for some reason he still tried to pick up this bottle. But by this moment the bandit had already run up close to him. He stuck his sword right next to Yun Seo's head and said that he would pay in full for this run. A few minutes later, the bandit brought Yun Seo back to the house, where the rest of the bandits were, who were busy hiding the bodies and thinking about what to do with the captive girls. The main bandit beat the young man, saying that if he tried to escape again, he would cut off his head. At the same time, another bandit tried to calm him down, saying that they needed to leave. The guy was lying on the floor and almost lost consciousness. One of the bandits ordered him to be tied up as tightly as they could. Having given the last order, the head of the bandits decided to rest by drinking some wine from that bottle. Now was the perfect time to relax a little. He took a few sips looking like he was really looking forward to finally drinking some alcohol. Having drunk a little, he threw this bottle into the crowd of bandits, saying that now they too could drink, because there was enough for everyone. The bandits immediately began to drink, at the same time saying that wine after a good fight was just the thing. They very quickly emptied this bottle, and one of the bandits asked the leader if they had any more. Well, the head of the bandits replied that that was all and if they have finished drinking, then they should move forward. At the same time, he turned his head to see how far the bandits were ready to go, but the sight that he saw in front of him seriously horrified him. What frightened him most was that he could not understand what exactly he was seeing before his eyes. The leader saw how all the bandits were coughing up blood and walking from side to side trying to find some kind of help. Then, he also very suddenly began to feel unwell, and also began coughing up blood. Although he did not feel severe pain, he covered his mouth with his hand so as not to spit blood all around. But when he paid attention to his hand, he realized that it was all soaked in blood. The leader quickly realized that he needed to make some decisions in order not to simply die from the poison. Since everyone already realized that he was quite strong, therefore, he ordered all the bandits to immediately go into meditation. At that moment, Yun Seo freed himself and said that poison is truly the most effective way for the weak to get rid of the strong. 
The leader heard this voice and could not believe his ears. Is Yun Seo, who is so young, really capable of something like that? After all, such a plan required a very great mind. Yun Seo felt like he was in control. He was amused that all the bandits were now unable to do him any harm, so he simply walked around the room past them. When he approached the leader, he said that this time, so be it, he would let him die quickly. The head of the bandits was still alive, and through the pleas of his brothers for help, he looked embittered into the boy's eyes. Yun Seo Wun stood in this room and motionless watched as the bandits, one after another, fell dead to the floor. Once again, he said quietly that poison is the most effective way for the weak to get rid of the strong. It is interesting that even at the moment when he began to run away from the leader of the bandits, he already had a plan for how he would eliminate all of them. At that moment, when he was running away from one of the bandits, and out of confusion stopped at an intersection, he saw a flower. Remembering his skills from the hidden devil's cave, where he had to learn how to use poisonous plants and substances, he immediately picked this flower. Then he very quickly threw this flower onto one of the stones, and began to rub it with another stone, while the bandit got closer and closer to him. Then he carefully collected all the substance obtained in this way and added it to the bottle, which he then brought with him. He mockingly asked the bandit leader and everyone else if they liked the drink he made. The idea was dangerous, since this flower had a peculiar taste that could be noticed. He then picked up one of the swords and brought it to the throat of one of the bandits, who was no longer strong due to the effects of the poison. Once again he said that this time he would allow them all to die quickly. When he dealt with all the bandits, it was the leader's turn. Even though they all didn't have the strength to counterattack, anger was still visible on their faces. There was an ominous aura of death in the room due to the fact that many clan members and bandits had died here. Yun Seo looked around to see if he had missed some bandit who was carrying a sword to his back when the effect of the poison wore off. There was no one around, so he took a few steps back and decided to rest a little. His body was exhausted, so he fell to the floor. He had to think about various things. Well, although the realization of this made him smile, in parallel with this there was something that made him confused since now he did not understand what to do next. After all, last time everything was planned and decided for him. He began to delve into his thoughts, remembering the past. And he remembered the demon Suzerain, with whom he reveled in murder. He was haunted by the thought that he dared to betray him, and it made him angry. The feeling of desire for revenge was stronger for everyone else. After all, his past creed is to repay any evil tenfold. Therefore, he decided that he must return to the demonic sect in order to take revenge. But moments later, when he turned this thought over again in his head, a new thought appeared that dissuaded him from this idea. After all, if he again follows the path of revenge, he will stand on the same rails and repeat his previous life. And he didn't have the slightest desire for this. What added to the complexity of his further choice was the fact that at the same time he did not want to give up the path of martial arts. It is more than natural for a powerless person to be subjected to unjustified violence and humiliation. At first he thought about becoming a wandering warrior. But this option was not suitable not only because they have either money nor influence, but also because they are doomed to remain unrecognized by society. Becoming one of the leaders of the Murim Alliance or sect is also not an option. Because of the responsibility placed on them. He wondered if there was a way to live a prosperous life while at the same time remaining a respected member of society. All he needed was wealth, prosperity, and authority. But no options came to mind, and after a short time the task seemed absolutely impossible. But he remembered the conversation of the bandits before they drank the poison, and realized that such a method might exist. And hope lit up in Yun Seo's eyes, and perhaps everything was not so hopeless. He remembered how the bald bandit said that decrepit senile people who only have time to wipe their pants for days will definitely not chase them. And the second bandit answered him that he would probably just send his henchmen, and they themselves would sit and discuss the future of Murim. To Yun Seo, this sounded like almost no responsibilities compared to the opportunities this title provided. These were the Murim Alliance elders he had seen in his previous life. They shared power in the Murima Alliance based on their interests and were a breeding ground for corruption, and enjoying all their privileges, they never appeared on the battlefield. From his past life, he remembered that he had never seen them in battle. Yun Seo remembered how his past brothers, 
after another battle, talked among themselves that again they did not find traces of these elders, which was to be expected from the old men who had gone. The members of the demonic sect laughed at them and despised them. But he envied them, because the lifestyle of these elders was the complete opposite of Yen Sio's. It would be very difficult for someone like him who did not come from the nine great sects or five great clans to become an elder of the Murima Alliance. But using memories from a previous life, everything can work out. But now he was just a weak child, and to become an elder, he first needed to find a safe place. A place where he could plan his future while cultivating his power. Suddenly, a sound interrupted his thoughts and dreams about the future. This sound was a cry for help from two captured girls. They were exhausted after the battle and only at that moment were they able to gather enough strength to say something. One of the girls asked the boy to deliver them and the heiress to their clan. At this point, Yun Seo had a plan in his head. But first he wanted to find out which clan they were from. For this he approached the tied-up girls and bent down to one of them to look at the medallion. Looking at him, he realized that these girls were from the Manchong clan. Which was strange, because it was the first time Young Seo had heard such a name. But of course, he decided to help them, because this clan could become his lifeline. Young Seo decided to do this, although he was somewhat alarmed due to the fact that he had never heard of this clan before. But it looks like they were quite rich. Approaching the main gate, he looked at the bright sun, which at that moment was at its zenith, and this made him stop and leave the girls behind. And when they noticed this, they called him to follow them. After some time, the girls led him straight to the central hall of the building where the group arrived. The man who was sitting here on the throne asked the boy if he was sure that the enemy group was part of a demonic sect. Yun Seo Wung looked very confident, and said that they themselves mentioned this in dialogue among themselves, so there is no doubt about it. This elderly man was Cho Chiong Gun, the head of the Manjang clan. Due to insufficient evidence, he did not believe that it was exactly a demonic sect, but the boy assured him that he told exactly what he heard, and he doesn't know the details. Seeing the disbelief, he also told the head that their bodies were still there and could be studied. Then the head of the clan became calmer. He replied to Yun Seo that in this case, this incident would be investigated by the Manjong clan brigade. At that moment, one of the girls, who had been held captive in that very house a short time ago, cried out that she was ready to take responsibility for this mission. But the head of the clan did not agree with her. He couldn't believe that a group of ten young clan warriors were defeated by the remnants of the demonic sect, and the survivors were saved by an ordinary child. Therefore, he ordered the clan follower to reflect on her actions and draw conclusions until this incident was resolved. This clan had turned to the boy, saying that he had heard that he had been kidnapped. So he asked if Yun Seo had somewhere to go back to to which the boy replied that he was an orphan abandoned by his parents. This story touched Cho Chung Gun, because it was not the first time in his life that he had met such children, and he knew that usually they were doomed to a lousy life. He told Yun Seo that he has excellent manners despite his young age, and is also quite smart. After thinking about the plan a little more, the head of the clan turned to General Wang. He ordered him to provide this young man with housing and take care of him, taking him under his wing. The general took the boy to one of the nearby houses and said that from now on this was his home, and he could rest there. Yun Seo thanked him and bowed. As he walked inside, he thought about many things. It seems that he is now provided with the basic necessities, which means that he has everything to begin preparing to become the elder of the Murim Alliance. Considering that he is not from the nine great sects or the five great clans, he will need achievements and reputation for this. And, and at the heart of all this, of course, will be powerful martial arts. The situation was simplified by the fact that in his previous life he already knew how to wield them to a sufficient extent. In his previous life, he was a disciple of the heavenly demon, meaning that if he managed to reach the same level of power he was at before his death, he would be a more than suitable candidate for the role of elder. Then he decided to check the state of his chi energy now. After all, this is very important, and when the energy began to manifest itself, awareness came to him, and it contrasted with all the positive thoughts that had come before. Yun Seo Woon realized that throughout his previous life until his death, he had been studying demonic chi. Let's move to the library of the Manjong clan. It was evening then and the weather was quite nasty, with cold winds and heavy rain. 
It's been two days since Yun Seo joined the clan. While living here, he began to work under manager Wang. During these two days, life got back on track, and everything seemed to hint that everything would become stable. While doing this work, he heard someone behind calling him to him. This made him turn around. Standing there was Wang Chong Song, the manager of the Manjong clan, who in a nasty voice told the boy to be more diligent when he worked. Having said this, he leaned a little towards Yun Seo and said that he accepted him as an assistant only because the head of the clan himself asked him to do so. But if he does his job carelessly, he won't stay here for long. Then he said that he would go to the estate, and for now the boy should finish his work quickly. Yun Seo Woon, having listened to the manager completely, asked him how much he would be paid for this work. Wan Chun's son turned around and looked at the boy with a very surprised face. Such a grimace was on his face for several seconds. Then he laughed very loudly, and when he finished, the boys said that he had very funny jokes. But seeing the seriousness on Yun Seo's face, he concluded that it looks like this guy is not joking. Then he turned around and continued to walk in the direction of the exit, while simultaneously saying that Yun Seo had not even been confirmed in the position yet, so he should not think about payment. But if Yun Seo works well, he will give him money from his pocket so the boys shouldn't worry. The guy took his leave and thanked Wang Chun's son. The clan manager almost left, and the guy began to think that he still didn't plan to connect his life with this clan, so this news didn't upset him much. Having not finished his work, he began to go to his house, thinking that he just needed a place that would allow him to cultivate in peace. After all, what really matters is his chi accumulation technique. After all, a person who has mastered the demonic arts will never be able to become an elder of the Murim Alliance. Therefore, he needs to obtain the Orthodox faction's chi accumulation technique. It looks like this was the only solution. Moreover, this technique should be as destructive as the heavenly demon accumulation art that the head of the demonic sect had taught him. All this is necessary in order to fully use the sword techniques and fighting stances that the boy studied but he was tormented by the question of whether the Murim Alliance had a light chi accumulation technique of the same level. Raising his head, he looked out the window, from which a very bright light was emanating, and it was at that moment that a realization came to him, that the equipment he needed was owned by the person he had met earlier. But how can we learn from his experience and skills? But Yun Seo decided to start from the beginning, from the basics. There are ten great masters of righteousness and many call them the Ten Heavenly Emperors. Among them was a man who was capable of killing demonic sect masters with just his fists. This man was the legendary Fist King. His strength was incredible, and his very appearance instilled fear in all enemies. Some of those who had to fight with him in the first seconds immediately got scared and thought about how to retreat. And others, more courageous, were ready to die in this battle. This warrior's chi accumulation technique was assessed by the patriarch of the demonic sect himself. In its destructiveness, it could compete with the heavenly demon's accumulation technique. In the most difficult situations, this fighter used the body art of white lightning. Practically no one knew any counteraction to this technique. Yun Seo came to the conclusion that only the king fist white lightning body art can replace the heavenly demon accumulation technique. After all, only this warrior was able to eliminate dozens of enemies with the help of equipment alone. After all, lightning struck everyone with great speed, bringing death. Yun Seo went outside where it was still raining. He was haunted by the realization that there was no other choice, and he needed to become a student of the King of the Fist, and learn his art of the white lightning body in order to get back the power that we he mastered in his previous life. But the problem is that he knows very little about where to look for it. The only thing Yun So knew was that after five years this legendary warrior would make his presence known in Sichuan for the first time. While he was thinking about this, the rain became heavier and Yun Seo heard a strange sound behind him. It was lightning that now accompanied the heavy rain. This lightning reminded the boy of the King of the Fist, and he realized that before they met, he should complete all preparations except for the Chi accumulation technique. He really liked this idea and his eyes burned with the desire to finally achieve his goal. It seemed like they were destined to meet the King of the Fist in five years. The next event happened two years later, and this time everything happened in the dining room of the Manjong clan. One of the students looked towards Yun Seo and tried to count in his head the number of plates that Yun Seo Wung pushed towards him to eat. The boy was not going to stop, 
and constantly ate a lot. Especially in places like the canteen, where the amount of food was essentially unlimited, all the clan's followers looked at what was happening in horror and surprise. It was difficult for them to cram at least one portion of food into themselves, but this young man managed to eat for five, and it seems that with each new portion he ate, his appetite only became greater. This kind of picture never ceased to amaze the followers of the Manjong clan every time. But Yun Seo was cunning, because for the past two years, he had been accumulating qi every day using the most basic technique of the three foundations. However, the effectiveness of this technique leaves much to be desired, because the volume of qi that was managed to be collected during this time was not much more. Until Yun Seo masters the King Fist qi accumulation technique, he needs to focus on strengthening his body. When he was thinking about this, someone called him from the side. It was just these clan followers, and one of them asked Yun Seo if the rumors that he was possessed by the spirit of gluttony were true, after which everyone laughed, and one of the followers invited Yun Seo to take a walk with their group. But the boy, continuing to eat, with his mouth full, said that now he did not want to go for a walk, and that the company could go without him. For a personal reason this angered the follower, he leaned towards Yun Seo and said that he was a senior adept, so it was better for him to go with him while he asked in a good way. But Yun Seo, in turn, quietly replied that they should continue this dialogue when he finishes eating. This made the Manjong clan follower even more angry. Then he decided to anger the boy in response by dipping his fingers into his soup, and at the same time saying that it must be that Yun Seo behaves this way because of Mrs. Yun He and the manager. He then threatened Yun Seo with death if he did not go with them. At the same time, he licked his finger, which had just been in a bowl of soup. Yun Seo looked around, analyzing the expressions on the faces of this bully's friends. He concluded that they had probably left him alone all this time because he was somehow connected to Manager Wang. However, seeing that after two years he remained an ordinary adept, they began to consider him a non-entity. Considering that Yun Seo is paid a lot, and has his own room, it's normal that they are jealous. Understanding where this was going, Yun Seo stood up from the table and was ready to go with this group wherever they went. They left the dining room and walked for a long time in some direction, and after a few minutes they arrived at the corner created by the outer wall of the clan. The hero asked the company what they needed from him, knowing full well what exactly they wanted. After this question, the leader of the group began to approach Yun Seo. They say that he should have taught poor orphan some manners but it just so happened that he was too busy all this time. To, having come as close as possible, he leaned his elbows on the wall to which Yun Seo was pressed. He said the boy should join them, but he didn't have time to say where exactly. The hero coolly hit the leader in the stomach with his fist, and after that he swung the same right hand towards the enemy's chin. Having hit him from below, it became clear that the leader lost this battle without even entering it. The enemy was defeated and fell to the floor and the entire company looked at Yun Seo with fear on their faces. They did not know what to expect from him. But Yun Seo smiled ominously and said that since they allowed themselves to distract him from the meal, now they should entertain him. Standing near the defeated enemy, the hero thought that he might have said this phrase with a confident look, but a head-on confrontation against adult men is dangerous for a child's body. Well, then he thought that it was worth dealing with them one by one. So he looked towards one of these men, and thought that he should now attack him. At the same second, he pushed away from his place towards the next enemy. He was ready to deliver a similar blow to his enemy again. And so he did. Getting as close as possible to the enemy, he began to deliver multiple blows to his body in order to neutralize the adjusters. Having dealt with this, he immediately pushed off in a second to attack the next enemy, who was already waiting at the ready. He got into a pose in order to grab the boy at the same time shouting about what this brat was doing. But he failed to grab the enemy, as Yun Seo quickly jumped over his head, and in a second he was already behind him. Realizing that he was in an ideal position for an attack, the boy struck with his knee directly to the back of his opponent's head. But it was impossible to stop, since the enemy would have more time to predict the attack. Therefore, having dealt with the third, he immediately jumped back towards the fourth enemy, who had already swung. But this was not enough for an attack, so Yun Seo again quickly managed to dodge the blow and end up behind the enemy. Then he struck. With this, there were already four defeated enemies. 
He then heard someone from the group shouting to his fellow man that Yun Seo was right behind him. But the member of the company did not have time to turn around, because the hero had already managed to strike him in the neck, which immobilized him. The remaining brothers looked at everything that was happening and could not understand what this kid was. But the leader shouted to them to all gather, since there was no task that they could not overcome together. He did not hit one of his friends in the back too much, at the same time saying that they were just a disgrace if they could not defeat this runt. At this moment, the hero stood motionless, and thought that there were four people left who were standing on their feet. Three healthy foreheads and one boy who knows a lot about martial arts, but he also understood that there was very little chi left, and in such a situation he needed to choose only one target. Of course, it was necessary to choose a leader, since after his defeat everyone else must surrender. Yun Seo approached him, asking if he planned to continue hiding like a true senior adept. Of course, this made the leader of these bandits very angry. From his look one could understand that he was ready to strangle Yun Seo with his own hands. He got into a fighting stance and blue energy began to circulate around his legs. During this, he threatened the boy that he was about to show off. Then he sharply pushed away from the place where he stood, and in this very place only a small cloud of dust remained. No one even saw in which direction the leader moved. It turned out that he jumped straight towards Yun Seo, and within a few moments he tried to throw a right-hand hook right across his face. But despite the fact that the boy almost managed to dodge, the blow was still missed. And this fact made Yun Seo retreat a little. Still, the hero was not yet accustomed to the boy's body so it was a surprise to him that the enemy barely touched him, and blood was already coming from his nose. It looked like the hooligan team was already celebrating their victory. And the boy, looking at them, thought that if he had completely taken such a blow, he would no longer be able to stand on his feet. Yun Seo realized the fact that the battle with the leader would be quite difficult, since the enemy had already begun to study martial arts by that time. But this is not so important since the enemy is still inexperienced. Having scrolled this thought in his head, the hero moved towards the enemy. The hero began to approach him with great speed, and for a second it seemed to the leader that he was running past him. But in one second, Yun Seo managed to strike him several times in the stomach. Such a powerful blow caused a small stream of blood to flow from the leader of the hooligan's mouth. In addition, Yun Seo also managed to throw him a considerable distance from the battle site. All this happened so quickly that the company did not even have time to give up after rejoicing in honor of the leader's victory. But a second later they turned around and saw behind them that their leader, who was the strongest warrior among them, was lying on the ground. Then they turned their gaze to the hero, who stood motionless after this blow, also behind them. A very awkward pause was created, which the hero decided to destroy by asking the two remaining members of the company if they were planning to attack him. At that very moment, the two fell to their knees, bowed their heads, and began to ask for forgiveness from Yun Seo. But the hero just looked at the defeated leader and said that there was no need for an apology. The two remaining bullies fell silent, and because of this the hero had time to look back. He began to examine the leader's body in more detail. It seemed familiar to him. The hero also felt that he was being watched, but so far he could not understand who was looking and from what side. After this brawl he returned home where he began to meditate and think about how that battle could have happened. After all, his chi was almost completely depleted, so if those two decided to attack together, they could easily eliminate him. Thinking about the results and possible outcomes of the battle made him think that his biggest problem was the lack of chi. This problem could be solved very quickly if he had the elixir on hand. But while he was thinking about the desired elixir, he heard someone knocking on his door, which was quite strange considering the time. Opening the door, he saw guests in front of him, whose presence was very unexpected for him on such a late evening. He immediately began to think through his mind that perhaps they were the ones watching him during that altercation with the local hooligans. In front of him was Yuso Wa, Lady Cho Yun He's escort, and Cho Yun He herself, the heiress of the Manjang clan. The latter told him that she heard how he was making progress as an assistant manager, but the boy said that he was just helping manager Wang with paperwork and he would definitely not call this job outstanding. He immediately realized that these girls had not come here to chat about his successes at work. Therefore, he directly asked them what brought them here at such a time. The heiress of the Manjong clan, 
exchanging glances with her escort, asked the boy if he would like to become her close warrior ward. This question threw Yun Seo into a stupor, and the girls saw this and said that they had seen his fight against other adherents. Since the memory was fresh, footage of how the boy easily dealt with older and more experienced enemies flashed before their eyes. They were especially impressed by the moment when Yun Seo jumped over his opponent and immobilized him from behind with his knee. Young Seo only thought that he did not want to attract unnecessary attention to his person, so he then made sure that those who survived would keep their mouths shut. But still, his tactics did not work, due to a factor that he could not have foreseen. After all, it seems that there was another witness, and most likely it was Yuso Wa. The hero realized that he had been holding a pause for a very long time, so he said that he had just mastered a few basic techniques and did not understand why they were so interested in him. But the heiress of the clan told him that she needed capable people who could support her. After all, she wants to create a squad of faithful wards. Then she added that since the boy settled here thanks to her, she had the right to ask him for at least one favor. Yun Seo paused again for a short time, after which he said that he agreed to this proposal. The heiress of the clan was very happy to hear this, so at that very second she got up from her chair and said that the boy would not ask about his choice. She put her right hand on his shoulder and said that if she managed to get the next head of the clan, then she would satisfy any of his requests. That was all Cho Yun he wanted to say, so she said goodbye to the boy and said that it was time for them to go. She also decided at the very end to say very important information, which was based on the fact that no one should be told about this agreement. Yun Seo agreed to this. The next day, this boy was in a completely different place, and seemed ready to talk to someone. In front was a man who was writing something on paper, and at the same time listening to Yun Seo. It was the manager of the Manjong clan, and he raised his head looking at the hero, at the same time asking what he wanted to tell him. In response, the boy only showed him a barely noticeable grin, but it seemed that now he would tell the manager something very important. After a pause, creating a little intrigue, Yun Seo said that he had come to tell the manager important news. He told Wang Chong that young lady Cho Yun he wanted to compete for the position of head of the clan. At the first moment, no emotions were visible on the manager's face. He simply looked indifferently, as if through the hero. He then put a writing device in a special container and asked Yun Seo why he told him about this. After all, everyone knows that in this struggle, the manager of the Man Zhang clan takes a neutral position. This sentence caused an even more obvious smirk on the hero's face, and this emotion on his face made Wang Chong nervous. He, slightly mocking, said that since he had been an assistant for two whole years, he knew a little more than everyone else. The manager was so tense that sweat began to flow from his face in small streams. And in general, his face looked very tense. Yun Seo continued his remark by saying that he obviously guessed that Wang Chong was supporting the young master in this fight. The clan manager finally gave up and did not know what to answer the boys in this situation. It looked like he was stumped. After thinking a little, he asked the boy if he really planned to take on the role of a spy in this situation. Young Yun Seo Woon answered him that he was always ready for adventures from which he could gain personal benefit. Wang Chong admired the fact that such a young student could say such a dangerous statement out loud with such an innocent look. In response, the boy was simply silent because at that moment he was delving into his thoughts and recent memories. He was the one who saved these girls two years ago, but during all this time he did not hear a single word of gratitude, they never even came to visit him. And now that they need him again, they dared to ask for something. The hero thought that if he took their side, he would be used again and then thrown away like garbage. And with such prospects, he would prefer to use the clan heiress himself to get what he needs. Yun Seo told the manager that he was interested in adventures only as long as the possible reward outweighed the associated risk. Until this moment, Wan Chong had been waiting for the hero to start saying something about the reward. Therefore, having heard this phrase, he immediately asked the boy what he wanted. After all, it is obvious that Yun Seo is not the one who will work for free. The hero thought that he still had not learned a single technique for accumulating qi, so increasing its quantity was his top priority. Even from a past life, the hero remembered that qi can be increased with the help of an elixir, but some herbs are needed to produce it. This was his requirement. This request greatly surprised Wang Chong. Since herbs are not what young people mostly ask for, 
The managers asked the hero whether he really would only need herbs to complete this task. Yun Seo smiled sweetly and said that this would be quite enough for him. Wan Chong thought that such a polite smile did not suit the boy at all. But he still agreed to his terms. The next day, Yun Seo was already at a private reception with the heiress of the Manjing clan. And he listened to everything carefully. Such techniques occurred quite often, so the hero had a lot of information to convey to the manager. In turn, Wan Chong supplied Yun Seo with various herbs and the hero was able to create elixirs that restored qi from them. Such elixirs, according to memories from a past life, simply taste disgusting. It turned out that way, but that didn't stop the boy. The hero began to improve his powers. When he had a free minute, he spent all his time on physical training. He even had his own training sword. And having a space to practice in the evenings also helped a lot. During these physical trainings, he not only became stronger, but also his spirit was tempered. Over time, the techniques were honed, and Yun Seo became an increasingly professional warrior, and the hero had this way of life for three more years. During these three years, the main event was that in the end, Cho Yun he lost the fight for the position of the head of the clan and was forced out under the pretext of an arranged marriage. In turn, Yun Seo did not ignore the opportunity to talk with Yu Seo Wa. One day, sitting with her in a tea house, he asked if she was planning any actions in case the young lady lost to her brother, but the girl was confused. In response to the awkward pause, the hero said that they both needed to be prepared for such a situation, since they were working for her. But Yu So Wa still couldn't answer this question. She just moved the empty cup of tea from side to side. After a few moments, she admitted that she had never thought about it. Then Yun Seo invited her to join the Murim Alliance. Hearing this, the girl was slightly surprised that she had not heard this phrase for a long time. Watching the boy pour her an extra portion of tea, seeing that her cup was empty, she repeated this phrase over and over again. She then ended the dialogue by saying that the Murima alliance sounded like her unfulfilled dream. At that moment, the thought ran through the hero's heads that he had laid a foundation that might help him in the future. The hero always thought a few steps ahead, and assumed that when he joined the alliance, it would be nice to have a couple of acquaintances there. And now, five years have passed since the hero joined the clan. Just recently, Yu So Wa left the clan for unknown reasons. One sunny day, the hero realized that he had completed all the preparations he could. Once again leaving his house, the thought passed through his head that it was time for him to leave too. He got everything he planned from this place, so he went to the manager to notify him of his departure. Wang Chong was desperate and furious. But he did not show this, but simply said that from the very beginning he planned that Yong would become his successor. But emotion seemed to cover him like a wave, and he, closing the book he was reading on the way, screamed loudly. He began to appeal to the fact that all this time he was paying the hero and giving out all the necessary herbs. Due to stress and different emotions, the manager's mood was constantly changing. At this moment, he tearfully asked the hero why he wanted to leave. Yun Seo Woon, in turn, remained silent for a while, and then asked Wang Chong for forgiveness. But while he was saying this, he only thought that the manager of the clan was behaving like an old fox, because all this time the hero received only what he deserved with his own labor. Clan manager Manja continued his speech by saying that the young master, who became the head of the clan thanks to the hero, also wanted to express his gratitude. He raised his voice even more and asked the hero what he wanted, promising to help in any way he could. But Yun Seo replied that he needed absolutely nothing. Neither from the clan, nor from the manager. He expanded his answer by saying that he wanted to become a martial artist. This remark caused sincere and genuine misunderstanding on the face of the clan manager. Then he realized that he could dissuade the hero. And he said that it looks like Yun Seo is trying to jump in over his head only because he has mastered the basics of martial arts in five years. Then he added that with the skills that the hero now has, he cannot defeat even a petty hooligan. It was remarkable that Yun Seo did not react in any way to these words, which could easily offend anyone. He closed his eyes in order to restrain his rage, and thought that a few minutes ago he wanted to say goodbye in a good way, due to the fact that he had become attached to him all this time. But he decided to do otherwise and told Wang Chong that he was offering him a bet. Yang So said that the clan manager can bring any partner for sparring, and it doesn't matter who this warrior will be. And if the hero loses to this opponent, then Yun Seo Woon will do as Wang Chun tells him. Some time passed, 
and Yun Seo was already standing in the ring opposite some man, whose appearance was very menacing. For now, they just looked at each other, and the hero gathered his strength. He was 100% confident in his skills, but we must not forget that his body could let him down. Moreover, considering that this man is the one who is considered the strongest after the patriarch, this man was none other than the leader of the man on clan fighters. Looking at his enemy, the hero was disappointed that the clan manager pitted the best of the best against a 15-year-old boy. Then self-confidence began to play within him, and he thought that in the end it was not so important. The opponents stood opposite each other at a short distance, and each of them was thinking through tactics at that moment, trying to analyze the opponent. Han Sun asked the manager what the rules of the fight were. He told him that he would win if the enemy could not continue the fight or chose to surrender. Yun Seo Woon noticed that the manager believes that victory is already his. Then he advised him not to forget that he had promised to pay an annual salary for travel expenses. In response, Wang Chong only said that the hero should remember that in case of defeat, he will not be able to leave the clan for the next three years. After these remarks, the clan manager and the hero looked at each other, after which Wang Chong looked at Han Song and patted him on the shoulder, saying that he was counting on him. Then he began to move to the side, which only meant that the battle could begin at any second. The leader of the Manjang clan fighters drew his sword, saying that he would allow Yun Seo to attack first. The hero liked this start to the fight, and he thanked his opponent for his kindness. Unsheathing his sword, Yun Seo thought that even though he had used elixirs, his chi was not nearly enough for a long battle. Pushing off from the ground, he fleetingly thought that he needed to end the fight in an instant. Within a second he was in the air and trying to strike an opponent who was blocked. The realization that the initial attack had failed forced the hero to remove his sword from the enemy's blade and step back a little. While at this moment, he managed to think that Han's son had quite great strength, since he managed to block such a fast attack. At this moment, the leader of the fighter's squad stepped forward with his right foot in order to make a counter-attack. And it seems that she was pleased with her success, since he swung his sword, and the manager saw from the side that the blade was passing through the body of the hero. But after carrying out this attack, Han Song noticed some quick movement from the right side. It was his 15-year-old opponent who managed to dodge such a lightning strike due to his speed. A little fear was visible in his eyes since he did not at all expect such a development of events during the battle. But this fear suddenly turned into rage, and he again swung the ball, which this time grew in the air right next to Yun Seo's body. But this time the blade also failed to cause any damage since the hero was already behind Han Song, and was preparing to use the first phase of the Moon Shadow Sword. Using this technique, he created a very rapid and strong stream of energy that immediately met the back of the head of the leader of the squad of fighters. Energy of this magnitude caused him to fly a considerable distance from the place where he had stood before. Well, since he was a warrior, and was ready for such techniques from the enemy, he quickly got up from the ground and prepared to attack. After this, the battle turned into a real dance, as the enemies constantly blocked and counterattacked, but so far no one had been able to inflict any damage. Fate turned out that during one of the hero's attacks, which was an order of magnitude stronger than the others, Han Song also decided to attack. Because of this the duelists were thrown in different directions. Well, now they stood at a distance of several meters from each other and looked at each other, breathing heavily. The leader of the Manjong clan fighters said that he was impressed that such a young fighter managed to block such a blow. And since it came to that, and Han Song realized that the strongest enemy was in front, he said that he would no longer hold back due to the fact that the opponent was young. The manager who stood aside was very scared when he saw that the leader of the fighter squad was using such a powerful technique as the Chi Sword. The manager turned his gaze to the hero to assess his visual condition after a rather long battle. And it seems that Yun Seo felt quite normal. The manager even thought that this kid was already so strong that Han Sun had to use the Chi Sword. But the hero said in a rather confident voice that in this case he also did not intend to give in. This phrase made Han Song very angry, as he did not expect such strength and such self-confidence from the hero. Therefore, at the same moment, the leader of the squad of fighters used this technique, and harmful red energy began to spread from underground towards the hero. But then Han Song, like last time, noticed someone's body on the right side that approached him with unearthly speed. He only managed to identify that there was a human body in front of him, 
when Yun Seo had already struck with his sword. But since Han Sun had more than enough experience in combat, he managed to dodge this blow by lowering his body and head down. Realizing that he was in an advantageous position, the leader of the squad decided that now he needed to make a counterattack while the hero was confused. Well, Yun Seo was ready for this and jumped five meters away from the enemy. The hero did not stand here for long, as a moment later he pushed off the ground again, starting to move towards the enemy, who had not yet even let go of the sword after the previous attack. An instant, and the two strongest warriors crossed their swords again, as they decided to attack at the same time. Because of this confrontation between the blades, a huge amount of light and energy began to be released into the air. It was this light that blinded the manager. Opening one eye, he thought about how it could have come to this. He never expected such a fight from a fifteen-year-old youth. It seems that Han Sun has figured out exactly what tactics will be most effective to use against Yun Seo. Their swords crossed in battle, and a small initiative passed either into the hands of the boy or into the hands of the leader of the detachment of fighters of the Manchong clan. At that moment, Yun Seo realized that he had time to think and he made the assumption that his enemy was trying to reduce everything to opposition to Qi. And since this is very undesirable for the hero, the initiative of the fight had to be transferred into his hands. Therefore, using a cunning technique, he plunged the enemy's sword into the ground and began to retreat. Han Song first glanced at the sword, which was almost completely buried in the sand, and then lowered his head and saw some object rapidly approaching his face. It was the hero's leg. He decided to attack the enemy not predictably with a sword, but in a very unusual way, with a kick to the jaw. Such a missed blow caused the leader of the fighter's squad to lose his balance, and he was close to falling. The hero understood that he would not have another chance, and took up his sword. Using the second phase of the moon shadow sword, he quickly began to move forward while simultaneously holding the sword towards the enemy and a similar technique under similar circumstances created a shallow wound on Han Song's body, causing arterial hemorrhage. Realizing that this was not the first blow he had missed, the leader of the fighter's squad became very angry. Despite being seriously wounded, he was able to raise his sword and, shouting to his opponent, swung it in his direction. Yun Seo felt his advantage and had a rather confident smile on his face that would make anyone doubt their actions. Using the movement technique, he again headed towards the enemy, and this time it was even faster than usual. The opponents were in flight, and were ready to send their balls directly to each other's bodies. But unlike Han Sun, the hero decided to deliver not a piercing blow, but a cutting blow. And the leader of the fighter's squad was completely unprepared for the fact that at that very moment his opponent would change his attack technique. This impact created a small explosion that sent a cloud of dust into the sky. At the same time, Han Song's sword flew to the side and hit the ground. A Maisen scene was created in which Yun Seo looked down at his opponent, and Han Song looked back at the hero with a confused face. The 15-year-old warrior held his sword right next to Han Song's throat, and this only meant that the leader of the Manjong clan fighter squad had lost. A little more time passed. Han Song bowed and apologized to the hero for what happened earlier. But Yun Seo replied that there is no need to worry about it and he asked the leader of the fighter's squad to just forget about it. This wording surprised him. Young Seo smiled, and at the same time told the manager that he just needed the promised annual salary. Seeing a smile on Wang Chang's face, the hero said that if he did not keep his promise, the consequences would be dire. The manager of the Manjong clan panicked and said that he would fulfill his promise. At the same time a tear fell from his face, because he did not know what to say to his family now. As he wiped away that tear, he heard the hero say that he was grateful for the time he spent within these walls, with these people. The boy bowed to his friends, and this meant that very soon he himself would begin his journey of becoming a great warrior. But of course, before that he received an annual salary from the clan manager. And he said that Wang Chong could be sure that this money would be spent wisely. The clan manager did not have time to respond to this, because the hero had already collected his things which he picked up and said that it was time for him, because there was still a lot to do. After what was said, he began to move away, and this fact brought sadness to the manager of the Manjang clan, because after so much time he had become very accustomed to Yun Seo. Han Song said quietly that without noticing it, they had raised a real dragon. 
The manager still had a very annoying question that he decided to ask Han Song. Was it really possible for the leader of the fighter's squad to fight on the same level as a 15-year-old warrior? To which he replied that even the head of the clan would not have had a single chance in a fight against him. This prompted Wang Chong to think that perhaps the Mandong clan was too small for Yun Xiao's ambitions. After a few minutes, the manager and the leader of the fighter's squad went their separate ways. And Yun Xiao remained not far from one of the entrance gates to the clan. It looked like he was waiting for someone. Like, after a long time of waiting, he felt someone walking across a small bridge a few meters away from him. This someone was heading in his direction, and while passing by, the hero managed to trip this mysterious passerby. It was one of those hooligans who recently thwarted the hero. And because of such a trip, he fell face first into the ground. He quickly realized that someone had tripped him up on purpose. Therefore, as soon as he got up, he immediately shouted in a frantic voice about what kind of freak dared to do this. Slightly mocking, the hero asked an old acquaintance lying on the floor where he was running so roaringly. That clan disciple at that moment was already ready to start a fight, as he was very angry because of the ridicule and vile tripping. Yun Seo told him that he didn't know how to address him. Call him a senior adept, or better yet, a follower of the secret society of Hao. But the clan student who was still on the floor said that he had no idea about any secret society. Then the hero took out his sword and, not with a strong but sharp movement, swung it right next to the adept's body. This scared him seriously, and he closed his eyes in horror, because it was not clear what was on the hero's mind right now. A second later, he opened his eyes, as he realized that the blade did not cause him any harm, but passed right next to his right leg. Looking down at this very leg, he saw that because of this blow, the lower part of his trouser leg was cut off, which revealed a strange tattoo. The hero said that judging by this tattoo, the adept is at least a master of incense in this secret organization. Realizing that there was no point in denying it, the clan adept asked Yun Seo how he found out all this information, to which the hero replied that he learned this information a very long time ago, namely, the awareness of the information occurred three years ago after that same skirmish near the clan walls. After the battle, the hero looked at the ankle of the defeated enemy and even then learned his true nature, but still decided to wait with this information until a better moment. From his past life, he remembered what such tattoos can say about a person and his belonging to various sects. A plan was born in his head, which Yun Seo only today decided to put into reality. In a frightened and trembling voice, the clan adherent asked the hero what he wanted from him. Yun Seo replied that this time he only needed a little. After all, he would like to become a client of Hao society. Of course, the clan adept had no other choice but to help the hero. Therefore, he went to the market, where he was supposed to meet one of the representatives of the secret society. The Hao secret society itself consists of street vendors, courtesans, and servants. This is a kind of union of the weakest which chooses the most unethical ways to achieve its goals. An organization that trades information and works hand-in-hand -hand with a sect of beggars. Moreover, this organization is the largest group in Nirim, so one can only imagine the powerful influence it has. It is obvious that the most powerful members of this organization prefer to remain unnoticed. Their senior ranks are almost ghosts, so rarely are they seen by anyone. Yun Seo liked the fact that his whole plan went like clockwork because many factors that helped him were with him by the will of fate. Just think what a coincidence it is to meet an incense master in the clan into which the hero fell by fate. At this time, one of the adherents of the Man Zhang clan had almost reached his end point, and stopped briefly near the gate. He did this in order to check that the object that he had been carrying all this time in his hand had not disappeared, and was not damaged. It seems that this thing was quite important, and undesirable for prying eyes. Therefore, the adept hid it in his sleeve. He walked further through the market, and with every second he was getting closer and closer to his final goal. Let's move to the time when this adept was lying on the floor and practically said goodbye to his life, especially after the hero found out that he was connected with a secret organization. Yun Seo asked him what it takes to become a client of house society, but the clan member answered him that even if he really wanted to become a client, the senior adept could not help him in any way because such issues were not resolved alone. Yun Seo told him that the senior adept was probably already thinking about reporting to his superiors, due to the fact that the hero managed to reveal his affiliation with the Tattoo Society. 
after which he suggested that the managers would be interested in learning more about who was able to so professionally reveal such a secret. The senior adept thought for a moment, after which he asked the hero to introduce himself, appealing to the fact that society does not do business with those it cannot trust. But such a trick did not work at all on Yun Seo. He asked the clan member lying on the floor since when did the house society think about trust when it comes to clients. This phrase offended the senior adept a little, so he shouted to him that the hero should watch his words if he does not want to become an enemy of the entire house society. Such a surge of emotions made the hero think, so he calmed down for a while. After thinking a little, Yun Seo agreed that he had expressed himself a little incorrectly. The senior adept answered him that the hero would not be able to become a client of the house society at the first whim, because the society's information needs to be paid, and few people can afford this. But Yansa assured his friend that money is not the only way of payment in this society. Then the senior adept answered him that this option is only possible when the client has skills that can be used instead of money. Hearing this, the hero began to slowly move closer and closer to the senior adept and he did not know what he should expect from such actions. But Yun Seo simply passed by, at the same time saying that the adept should convey his words to the manager of the organization. And turning around, the hero also added that he had some information regarding the youngest student of the head of the society. How? Obviously, this cannot fail to interest. After some time, events moved to the house of the shining moon. It was evening, and there were many beautiful ladies inside. In one of the rooms, Yun Seo was sitting at the table. A servant approached him and said that the master would come to him soon. The hero realized that now she would tell information that was one of the main secrets of how society, which he learned about in a past life. This means that the elusive elite of society will have no choice but to come in person, because they definitely won't let anyone hear their secrets. The hero would happily not share this information for the rest of his days but he desperately needed information about the king of the fist. Therefore, in order to learn a chi accumulation technique that can replace the heavenly demon technique, he needs information from the house society. Someone started to enter the door. An elderly grandmother came into the room, next to whom stood a tall and young girl. A few seconds after entering, the elderly woman greeted Yun Seo. The hero already knew this woman, so he greeted him back and invited the older woman to sit down calling her the master of the shining moon house. She sat down in her place. The kind smile with which she looked straight into the hero's soul never left her face. At the same time, her assistant began pouring tea. Yun Seo realized that he needed to start a conversation, so he asked if he understood correctly that the front manager of the branch of Hao's society. Grandmother replied that he was absolutely right. In response, the hero simply remained silent since he needed to think a little about what to say after such a short and precise answer. After looking around, the hero turned to his assistant and asked her what her name was. The girl answered in a sweet voice that her name was So Wa. Grandma noticed that the hero seemed to like So Wa. But Yun Seo ignored her remark and asked the assistant how old she was. Samwa smiled and said that she turns 23 this year. Yun Seo noticed that the assistant to the master of the house of the sitting moon is quite young to which I received an answer from her that speaking of age, Gronia is much younger than her assistant. But then a grin became noticeable on the hero's face, which slightly tensed the assistant. He said that at her age, it is quite amazing to manage a branch of the house society. This made Sawa a little angry, as she thought she was perfect at hiding, and she really didn't like this kind of disclosure of her personality. But overcoming her anger, she asked the hero with an angry look how he guessed. Yun Seo told her that she revealed herself. The girl, without listening to his answer, said that since he already knew the secret mark of the sect, she assumed that there was no point in denying it further. But she repeated her question, because she was sincerely interested in finding out how the hero managed to solve this mystery. The hero decided that in his situation it would be a good idea to play a little in terms of dialogue. That's why he said he didn't want to answer this question. The girl replied that she was making a decision about whether to allow him to become a client of the society or not. This was an attempt at manipulation. The hero continued, saying that representatives of the top of society do not reveal their identity under any circumstances. And now, something completely different happened. Not only did the branch manager introduce herself personally, but she also brought a courtesan to meet her, which was pretty funny. 
Yun Seo suggested that as the manager, Seo Wan needed to attend the meeting in person. Therefore, she used a similar method to avoid revealing her identity. Then he fell silent abruptly. And so Wa had no choice but to sigh heavily after hearing all this. Without thinking, she bowed and said that she did not know that the hero was so familiar with the ways of the sect. She then started to say something about their deal, but was interrupted. It was Yun Seo. He asked why the girl continued to joke. So Wa asked him what he meant. The hero said in a confident voice that he would not have to make a deal with her. And with the one who is now hiding under the ceiling. As soon as the hero finished this phrase, someone fell straight from the ceiling through the wooden and frail floor into this room, creating a roar. The elderly grandmother at the same moment pushed away from her chair and began to run out of the room in panic, and Seo Wa followed suit. Yun Seo remained in his place, and with an embittered and indifferent look looked at the one who had fallen through the ceiling. Before him was a warrior who hid his face behind a special mask, and in both his hands he had cunning devices for fighting. Without having time to say anything, this mysterious warrior attacked the hero with a stream of red energy, but Yun Seo managed to reflect it. Grasping his sword, he thought that although the House Secret Society is great, their knowledge of martial arts is mediocre. However, we should not forget that the skills of their leader are not inferior to the great sects and clans, since the leader must be several levels higher than the rest of the sect members. While he was thinking about this, his opponent was trying to carry out a sharp attack so that the hero would have no chance to repel it. But Yun Seo managed to use the third phase of the Moon Shadow Sword, and it seemed that the hidden warrior was not prepared for such an attack. Suddenly, after a moment, he moved his hand near the direction of movement of the hero's blade, and his blade began to glow bright red. By hitting Yun Seo's sword, the hidden warrior managed to completely repulse the hero's blow. Yun Seo stepped back a little and thought that with such skills, his enemy most likely occupies a fairly high position, even among the top of the organization. The enemy also retreated slightly and took a more advantageous position, which was in the corner of the room. His agility was enough to hang on the wall, but the enemy was focused and ready for any attack from the hero. Yun Seo, in turn, only thought that the fish that bit turned out to be much larger than he expected. But such a surprise did not frighten Yun Seo at all, on the contrary. This made him grin and feel excited. At this time, the dust that fell from the hole from which the warrior jumped spread outside the room. The opponents looked at each other, and the hero thought that he was a man who had perfectly mastered the art of secrecy. And with his current cultivation level, he was quite a difficult enemy. This could only mean that this warrior was sent by the top of Hao society. The realization that the main comrades of the organization captured the bait much faster than the hero expected forced him to tell the warrior that he did not intend to cross blades with him. And hearing this, the hidden warrior jumped from the wall and ordered the hero to put the man aside and explain himself. But Yun Seo asked what specific explanations he was waiting for, about how he knows who really controls the branch, or why he hid his martial arts skills or about how he managed to find out about the secret of the sect. The hidden warrior was completely dissatisfied with this way of posing the question, so he gritted his teeth and told the hero to answer everything at once. Yun Seo replied that he wouldn't do that, and if the warrior was interested in information, the hero would offer something of equal value in return. The warrior became even angrier and replied that if he refused to talk, then he would kill him right now. Yun Seo laughed and asked the enemy if he had enough skills to kill him. The hidden warrior shouted at the hero to watch his tongue, and it seemed that his patience had run out. He pushed away from his seat with lightning speed and seemed to be preparing to strike, banking on surprise. Swinging his sword, he jumped towards the hero, and the blade of his sword was a few centimeters from Yun Seo's face. But at the very last moment the hero managed to block this sudden blow. If he had done this a moment later, then everything would have ended in tears. After this attack, the warrior retreated again. He realized that he needed to rethink the tactics of conducting attacks. After all, in front of him was not such a simple opponent. From a safe distance, he swung his sword, summoning a secret technique. At this moment, his hand along with his sword began to glow red. A strip of red energy flew out of the blade of his sword and flew towards the hero. It's good that the speed of spread of this attack was not high. The hero managed to repel it, but a second after that he noticed how the enemy ran up very close to him and prepared to launch another attack. 
He swiped the horizontal one with his sword, but something made him very surprised. He was surprised because there was no one in the place where he aimed his blow. Raising his head up, he saw Yun Seo jumping over him. He then turned around and witnessed the hero landing on the floor, and was a considerable distance away from him. The hero felt that a not deep cut had appeared on his cheek from which blood was oozing. At that moment he thought that if he had been even a little slower, his head would have flown off his shoulders. Yun Seo told the enemy who was standing a few meters away that he couldn't believe that the organization would treat guests like this, to which he received an answer from the warrior that if it were not for the hero's provocations, then the warrior would have had no reason to go so far. And now he sees no other choice but to end the guest. Having said this, the warrior at that very second pushed off from his place with incredible speed, so much so that even the dust that was under his feet accelerated greatly. He was in flight and tried to attack the hero, who at that moment stood motionless and seemed to analyze every movement of the enemy. Realizing that the enemy had opened up and rushed forward to finish him off, the hero realized that he had been waiting for this moment. Raising his sword, he used the 23-strike technique of the moon shadow, which was also called moon reflection. He concentrated very hard, since he would never have another chance to win. A moment later, he swung his sword roughly in the direction of the enemy, and because of this, many streams of energy began to move in that direction. The hidden warrior, who was in flight at that time, was puzzled, because he didn't understand why his sword was glowing so brightly. While he was thinking about this, the warrior did not notice that he was in the destruction zone of the equipment. When the energy touched his body, an incredible explosion occurred, which knocked out the frail doors near the entrance to the room. The warrior's face at that moment was covered with blood, he felt unreal weakness, and was no longer capable of fighting. Blood flowed freely through his open wounds, but it looked like he didn't want to stop the bleeding. His stance was uncertain after surviving this attack. He felt a loss, and waited for what the hero would say to him after this defeat. Yun Seo asked the mysterious warrior if he wanted to continue the competition, but he decided not to answer this question, but to ask his own in response. He was wondering why Yun Seo pulled his sword away at the end. The hero answered without hesitation that he had already said that he wanted to become a client of Hao's society. After all, from the very beginning he had no intention of taking his life. And the battle was needed only in order to gain an advantage during further negotiations. That's why the hero had to use that technique. But with the current volume of Qi, it was very risky. The mysterious warrior asked the hero what he could offer to Hao's society. Yun Seo replied that he was ready to exchange the organization's information for his own. Hearing this, the warrior became angry, since such wording insulted his organization. He started shouting at Yun Seo that offering information to the organization with the most extensive intelligence network in the Central Plains as payment was simply ridiculous. But the hero only answered indifferently that he was not joking when he said that. He added that he knew much more than the warrior could imagine from the fact that the demonic sect will soon make its move to the way to save the youngest disciple of the head of society, Hao. The warrior was horrified when he realized that the hero most likely knew that the youngest student of the head of Hao was dying from an unknown illness. He directly asked the hero how he knew this, to which he asked if he was still not interested in this deal. The warrior thought a little, and realizing that he was at a dead end, he asked whether the hero really knew how to save him or would it turn out that he was simply lying? Yun Seo, in turn, recommended that the warrior simply approach the master and say that this is a disease caused by a demonic sect. After all, before the student contracted an unknown illness, a book dedicated to martial art fell into his hands, which became the cause of the disease. The mysterious warrior asked the hero once again the same question. How does he know this? Yun Seo said something terrible. He told the warrior that this book was created by a heavenly demon. Hearing the phrase heavenly demon, the warrior was very frightened. Since all of Murim was intimidated by these creatures, the hero continued, saying that the youngest student of the head of the Kal Society was suffering from obsession, and not from some unknown disease. The reason for this very obsession is a book created by a heavenly demon in order to sow the seed of discord among the orthodox faction. In total, the heavenly demon created five such books, sending each of them to the heads of light organizations. Under the pretext of using the books as a way to cure his possession, 
he used them to split the righteous faction. But in fact, only the heavenly demon himself and his disciples are able to get rid of obsession. And it just so happened that the hero was one of these students. Yun Seo realized that if he could contribute to the cure of an unknown disease, then this would be a good basis for becoming an elder. The warrior, having thought everything through in advance, began to take something out of his inner pocket. Then he took out this object and threw it towards Yun Seo. The hero managed to quickly catch it. But due to the fact that the speed of the object was too high, he was unable to determine what it was. The mysterious warrior answered him that in his hands was the symbol of a client of the house society. The hero looked at his hand and saw a medallion there. Having carefully examined the medallion, the hero put it in his pocket and asked the warrior if he could ask for a favor. The warrior agreed. Yun Seo asked him to obtain information about the head of the Yellow Dragon Hall sect, Dugu Wu Jin, who was located in Sichuan. The mysterious warrior at first doubted, and then told the hero that he was ready to carry out this assignment. The warrior, on whose face the wounds were still visible, told the hero that after some time he would come to him with information of interest to him. But on this day you will have to immediately talk about the method of treatment. Yun Seo did not have time to respond to this, because the mysterious warrior very quickly began to move towards the exit and after some time evaporated. The hero was left in a destroyed room alone with his thoughts. I had to think about what to do next. They decided to go to Sichuan to the King of the Fist. After some time, Two men on horseback were moving near this very Sichuan. But while they were walking, they became very busy talking, and because of this they did not notice how some kind of barrier appeared in front of him and made terrible sounds. They looked forward and saw a young boy in his hands who had a sword. They also noticed that he was wearing a red robe. Having looked a little closer, they saw that this boy also had a very evil smile on his face. Overall, he looked quite menacing. Moreover, his eyes looked terrifying due to the fact that his pupils were as small as possible and also glowed red. As soon as they looked into his eyes, they noticed that this boy began to move towards them with incredible speed. This scared the horse very much. A man who was on a horse at a distance of several meters from the second man began to shout that everyone should immediately protect their valuables. Well, while he was shouting about it, something very terrible happened. He felt a strong splash of some liquid on his face. Then he felt that his horse was also very scared when he saw what was happening in front of them. The unknown killer was licking blood from the sword with which he had just killed one of the men. He then dealt several more blows to his enemy's lifeless body, causing blood to cover everything around him. Everything looked very terrible. Even the man who was lucky to survive was covered in blood. The killer still held the sword in his hands and looked at the horse, which was paralyzed from fright. He then turned his gaze to the other man who saw that this mysterious killer still had a smile on his face, despite the fact that he was covered in blood. But so far he hasn't done anything. He seemed to be enjoying the moment, but everything changed when he noticed with his side glance that his victim began to run away in an unknown direction. At first the killer thought about running straight after him, but then something stopped him. The grin was still on his face, but it seemed to be slightly forced and looked rather unnatural. When he was 100% sure that the surviving man had run away, the grin completely disappeared from his face. It was Yun Seo, and after what happened, he simply looked at the moon and said that pretending to be crazy, it turns out, is not so easy. After some time, the hero was already right in the middle of the road to Sichuan. Alongside the carriages was a rider on a horse, wearing a traditional hat that protected him from the sun. Yun Seo looked at the recordings and thought that it was good that he received so much information in such a short time. But overall, he expected such speed from the mysterious Hao Society. The notes said that even though he was nicknamed the Devil without blood and tears, in terms of training, his success in martial arts was impressive. Because he single-handedly eradicated the Yellow Cloud Dark Sect seven years ago, he is also called the Heavenly Fist. The hero has already heard this phrase somewhere. When he left the hidden devil cave and entered the world of martial arts, he was already called something else, the King of the Fist. All information about him, except that he settled in Sichuan ten years ago, was shrouded in secrecy. The House Society wrote that they are now mobilizing active members of society within the relevant region to conduct a more thorough investigation. If they manage to dig up something, they will inform the hero.
Yun Seo was only interested in why the king of the fist was pretending to be an ordinary martial arts teacher. After all, he was an unsurpassed master who took the place of one of the five kings among the strongest members of the Murima alliance. He wielded enormous weight within the orthodox faction, and all the facts pointed to the fact that he had not yet reached the level of the king of the fist. And considering that even the house society has difficulty finding information about him, everything points to the fact that someone is deliberately cleaning up their tracks. And this meant that I would have to find out more information about him on my own. The time spent will pay off for the hero if he can gain his trust and learn the art of the white lightning body. At this time, his thoughts were interrupted by the dialogue between two men that sounded from outside. Someone asked if his friend had heard the news about the appearance of a demon possessed. The man in the hat asked his friend if it was true that a demonic sect had taken over the area. And the second man answered him that if everything were like that, then they would have already turned their horses around. He added his answer, saying that the problem is that this bastard is incredibly strong, and besides, he can suddenly appear and disappear, which is why it is so difficult to catch him. A demon possessed is a person who cultivates demonic arts. Usually such arts have a number of side effects due to their nature. But due to the fact that it is extremely difficult to completely neutralize the demonic nature, many members of the sect find themselves unable to repress their desires and begin to go on a rampage. This gives rise to all the vices in them, from gluttony to lust. The worst thing is that something similar can happen even to members of a demonic sect. If an ordinary person tries to cultivate demonic art, he will most likely turn into a mad animal. But in the case of Sichuan, everything is different. There was once an incident where the elder of the hidden devil cave, a bloodthirsty ghostly in demon, was in Sichuan on assignment from a sect and returned with serious injuries. Remembering this incident, the hero came up with a very interesting thought. In the same place, at the same time, two possessed people appeared at once. It was hard to chalk this up to coincidence, but the hero decided that this had nothing to do with him. After all, the bloodthirsty ghost demon operates here secretly, and therefore Yun Seo is not going to cross paths with him. For us, on the other hand, if the crazy guy that showed up in Sichuan is truly possessed, then the hero will just need to beat him up and grab him. The hero had just arrived at the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall at this moment. Yun Seo said that according to rumors, he is very famous and is one of the three best educational institutions in Sichuan. This martial arts hall looked truly huge. There were many different buildings where training took place. The hero approached the guards who stood at the main gate and asked them if he could ask them a question. They nodded, and after that Yun Seo asked them what he needed to do to enter this martial arts hall. One of the guards who looked a little older than his brother, asked the hero if he had come alone. At the same moment, Yun Seo thought that the guard was behaving incorrectly when he looked from above, from the very beginning of the dialogue. Then he replied that he came alone. Then the guard said that if the hero wants to enter the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall, then he should prove his skills and pay a monthly fee. Yun Seo told him that he was ready for this. The guard continued, saying that the time for recruiting adepts had already passed so the hero would have to pay for the test. Moreover, the Supreme Master will test the newcomers personally, so the test will be incredibly difficult. After a short pause, he suggested that the hero wait for the next set. But Yun Seo immediately replied that this option did not suit him. The guard of the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall sighed heavily. The second guard invited his colleague to escort the newcomer to the reception area. He first looked at him with confusion, and then told the hero to follow him. Yun Seo began to walk, but at the same time he thought that there was no need for them to waste time on endless thinking. The hero decided to show them what he was capable of, and then come what may. The guard led him to one of the nearby houses. The hero was sitting at the table completely by himself, and seemed to be waiting for someone. But for now he was waiting for someone to meet him. The hero thought that if he passed the test, he would be able to meet with Dugu Wu Jin without any obstacles. Therefore, you need to decide what to do next. But no action plan came to mind, so he said out loud, regretting why he was abandoned here. When suddenly he heard someone address him, this seriously frightened the hero, and at the same moment he jumped out of his chair to see who had entered the room. It was a young man, and he entered the room so quickly that he was already a few centimeters away from Yun Seo. And going inside, he asked the hero why he was so surprised. But the hero did not answer anything, 
but only thought that it was strange that he was unable to sense the presence of this young man. It was necessary to break the pause, so the hero introduced himself, saying that his name was Yun Seo. The young man said that he was pleased to meet you. This young man also decided to introduce himself, and said that his name was Dugu Wu Jin. Yun Seo looked at him and realized that this man, one of the ten heavenly emperors, was equal to the strength of the demon overlord of the demonic sect. Grand Master, one of the five kings. Moreover, this is the future king of the fist, named Dugu Wu Jin. The hero began to realize that he had come all the way here just to meet him, but he could not even think that he would stumble upon him almost by accident. Dugu said that the supreme master was absent right now, so he, as a martial arts instructor, would conduct the test in his place. Yun Seo didn't answer anything, but thought that he was not against this idea. After all, he was going to meet him anyway. But suddenly the hero had a very strong idea in his head. He decided to go ahead. Yun Seo asked Dugu if he would accept him as a student. Dugu smiled and told him that the test had not even started yet. If the hero succeeds in passing it, he will become a student. But Yun Seo interrupted him, saying that he misunderstood him. He said that he was not asking to become a student of the martial arts master of this school. Dugu asked what the hero wants to say by this. Yun Seo directly told Doug Wu Jin that he would like to study the martial arts of the Heavenly Lightning School. After this, Dugu's eyes lit up blue, and quite strong energy began to radiate from his body, which moved towards the hero. The hero instantly realized that this was Chi, strengthened by pure will, which in itself was capable of crippling the enemy. Dugu said in a calmer and at the same time angry voice that Yun Seo dared to mention the school of heavenly lightning, and this is not good. He also added that if a hero values life, then it is better for him to tell the truth and nothing else. But the hero still needed time to think about what to say next. But it seemed that Dugu had no intention of giving him too much of this time. Yo Seo thought about how he thought that Dugu had not yet reached the king of fist level. But it seems that he was deeply mistaken. While he was thinking about this, he became increasingly worse and blood began to flow from his mouth. The hero caught himself thinking that just looking at Dugu took his breath away and he began to feel pain. And so he grabbed the table with his left hand. And I thought that he was not weak enough to run away in fear. If it were so, he would not have thought to come here. The hero replied that she learned this information from the house society. He managed to find out that Dugu is the successor of the school of heavenly lightning, the art of which is passed on to only one person in a generation. Hearing this, Dugu Wu Jin became even angrier, and at that very second the hero prepared that something was going to happen because of this. And something like this happened. An even greater amount of harmful energy was emitted from Dugu's body. The flow of this energy was so strong that even the cup containing the tea fell apart from the vibration. Some of the structures that held the table also began to separate from each other due to the release of this energy. Holding back the pain, the hero told Doug that he needed a successor anyway in order to pass on the legacy of the school. By this time, Dugu's eyes had already completely turned blue, and he calmly answered the hero that he did not need a successor. Yun Seo suggested that it is unlikely that Dugu wants the school's legacy to simply disappear. But Wu Jin told him that this legacy must come to an end. The hero could not believe his own ears. Such a turn of events clearly could not be predicted. Then Yun Seo shouted that he sincerely wanted to learn the martial art of the Heavenly Lightning School. Dugu Wu Jin said that he has nothing to teach the hero, despite the fact that his talent to withstand energy at such a young age is amazing. He then added that talent alone is not enough to master the heavenly lightning style. Then the young man abruptly stood up from the table and declared that their conversation was over. And he added that he should also teach the hero a lesson for delving into his past. But he will not do this because he does not want to make any fuss about this topic. He also said that if Yun Seo values his life, then he shouldn't tell anyone else about Dugu Wu Jin. After that, he began to leave but after some time he heard the hero shouting after him that he would never tell anyone about this, but Doug should listen to him. The young man interrupted him, ordering the hero to leave, and also saying that he would report to the highest master that the hero did not pass the test and decided to leave. At this moment, the hero only thought that it seemed that the martial art of the heavenly lightning school was fraught with an unknown secret. He must also be the reason why the king of the fists refuses to take the hero as his disciple. While he was thinking about this, 
Dugu Wu Jin had already gone outside, so the hero had to open the window to follow him. Watching him leave, Yun Seo thought that he would not stop. Obviously, for Dugu Wu Jin, the hero is the one who can reveal information about the Sky Lightning School. In the worst case scenario, Dugu Wu Jin will simply kill the hero. Therefore, Yun Seo must enter the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall and become his student. This is the only way out. Suddenly the hero felt quite confident. And at that very second I decided that it was worth trying to pull off such a scam. At this time, Dugu walked further and further, gradually moving away from Yun Seo An. He constantly thought that even though he warned the hero, all the secrets would one day become clear. Realizing this, he immediately pushed away from the place where he was standing and began to move forward. He jumped from roof to roof in order to quickly get to his destination. At the same time, he concluded that the matter was worth finishing. While flying between the next roofs, he hoped that he was not late. Having landed, he saw in front of him a very familiar man who asked Dugu where he was going in such a hurry. Dugu turned to the highest master and, pointing to the hero, said that he met this character on the way here. Opposite him stood the supreme master of the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall, who held Yun Seo by the shoulder. He said that the hero is polite and reserved and will make an excellent martial artist. Then the supreme master of the martial arts hall leaned over to Doug and said that it would be stupid to give him to another school, so he decided to ignore the necessary procedures and accept him right away. Moreover, it seems that the hero offered him liquor as a bribe. Next, the supreme master decided to introduce Doug to the hero. He said that Doug Jean will be his new teacher in the future, so he should be respected. Yun Seo bowed, introduced himself again and said that he would consider it an honor to study with such a great master. But after bowing, a grin was again visible on the hero's face, which once again proved to Doug that the hero was several steps ahead. Dugga looked at him and tried not to show his emotions on his face. At this moment, he was only thinking why this runt offered so much effort to achieve the goal. A few days later, at the square where training is usually held, one of the training sessions had just ended and the master asked Yun so Woon to stay and let everyone else go. It was very difficult for the hero as he practiced some of the most difficult exercises to train his physical capabilities and spirit. The master told him from time to time that since the hero joined the group late, he would have to make up for missed training. Doug was very surprised that the hero had enough fortitude to perform exercises that apparently even the students who came earlier had not completed. He said that if Yun Seo quietly evaporates right now, then Dugu will immediately forget about his existence. But the hero answered him that if it were so easy to break him, he would not have come here. Dugu smiled and said that the hero had yet to feel what it was like when bones break and muscles tear every single day. After which he once again asked the hero if he was ready for such tests. Yun Seo replied that he is a rather stubborn guy by nature. The smile on Dugu's face changed to a dissatisfied expression and he thought that now they will check how much the hero is enough. The day was already coming to an end and Yun Seo was still training even when the month was already in the sky. Dugu walked to his chambers and thought that the boy was so stubborn that he practiced until the training hall closed. It turned out that even Dugu Wu Jin had to stay late because of this. Going inside, he said that it doesn't really matter how resilient the hero is, since he won't be able to hold out for long. But as soon as he said this, he saw something that surprised him very much. In front of him was Yun Seo, who was standing near the table at which Dugu Sum, the son of Dugu Jin, was sitting. His wife was also sitting at the table and said that when she was returning from the market, the hero helped her carry food, so she invited him to dinner. The wife's name was Seo Moon Hai, and she also added that the hero told her that he was more used to being addressed by his name, and this trait showed her that the boy was quite well-mannered. Seeing the surprise on Dugu's face, Yun Seo said that the world is quite a small place, isn't it? The surprise on Dugu's face gave way to indignation and suppressed aggression. Everyone who was in the room sat down at the table and began to eat. While everyone was eating, Dugu and the hero began to talk to each other without opening their mouths so that the others could not hear them. Dugu asked the hero how he figured out where he lives and what he is up to. The hero answered him that it just so happened that his wife twisted her ankle and he accidentally met her and offered his help. Then he made a bold assumption, saying that maybe it was because of the hero that his wife twisted her ankle. But Yun Seo told him that nothing like that happened, although it is true that he knew about his family from the house society. 
Dubu's face became even more angry, and he told the hero that they would see each other again tomorrow in the training room. Yun Seo told him that of course they would see each other. At the same time, I told my wife in my usual voice that the food was very tasty. Meanwhile, it was already late at night, which was quite bright due to the full month. Several days passed and one morning the wife said that she was immensely grateful to Yun Seo for taking care of Suna every day. Moreover, the hero went shopping almost every day and helped the family in every possible way. But he answered her that it was not at all difficult for him to help them. Leading his son along, he thought that in order to get someone's recognition, first of all, it is necessary to ingratiate himself with the trust of those around him. And since Dubu Wu Jin adores his family, the hero decided to first gain their trust. The hero thought about this while walking with Dubu some through the local market. Suddenly he felt someone tugging at his student's outer clothing. He turned around to find out what happened. Dugu Sum told the hero that he wanted to try new sweets that he had not seen before in this market. Yun Seo told him that he would immediately buy them as soon as he finished with his errands, which he had done since the morning. Dugu Sum agreed with this. After walking a few more meters he asked why the hero was communicating with him so formally. Yun Seo replied that it was a habit. The hero supplemented his answer by saying that he had never had the opportunity to communicate with anyone informally before. After all, his speech was one of the ways to survive in the cave of the hidden devil. Having lived like this his entire past life, the hero developed a strong habit of talking to everyone formally. After these words, Dugu Sum doubted a little and asked the hero if he could call him brother. Yun Seo laughed and said that of course Dugu Wu Jin's son can call him that. This answer made Dugu Sum very happy. He shouted to the hero that they should hurry up with all the errands, because then all the sweets would be sold out and they would not have time. Then he began to run in some direction. The hero asked Dugasum to run carefully so as not to fall, and looked after him with a joyful face. Suddenly, Yun Seo felt something was wrong, and this made him very alarmed. Somewhere not far from him, he felt demonic chi, which was quite strange for such a place. Turning around and looking around, he saw on the roof of a low building an incomprehensible silhouette that was emitting red energy. Looking closer, he realized that it was some man who was looking at him intently. This slightly frightened the hero, since he was now not on his own, but with Dugu Sum. He stopped and looked in that direction for a few more seconds to understand what the intentions of this creature were. After a few seconds, he noticed an ominous grin on his face, and realized that this creature was here for a reason. Dugu Sum could not understand why the hero silently looked at the man who stood on the roof and looked at them. This stranger had a sinister grin on his face that instilled a little fear in Dugasum and the hero too. Yun Seal looked into his eyes and tried to figure out who it was. The hero made the assumption that this was the one who went from the conversation between the two men. But the hero decided that he was someone who was not so easy to deceive, since he was a member of a demonic sect in a past life for more than twenty years. Accordingly, he concluded that he was not some kind of tramp but most likely one of the elite fighters of the demonic sect. And judging by the time, he should be from the evil spirit squad led by the bloodthirsty ghost demon Ying. Dugu Sum asked Yun Seo what happened. But at that moment the hero was only thinking that there was no need to get involved with this demon now. Only then his brother would not be safe. But while he was thinking about this, he heard someone from the crowd shout that there was a man-man on the roof. Turning his head to the left, he saw someone pointing a finger at this demon and shouting for everyone to run away. Looking more closely at the one who was pointing his finger at the demon, he saw that on his robe there was a pattern of the Taoist monk King Chengshin. These screams turned the grin on the demon's face into a displeased grimace, and it looks like now he will either attack or run away. And this demonic entity still decided to run away. As soon as he heard the scream, he immediately pushed away from the spot and began to move along the roof in the opposite direction. The monks immediately began shouting that the enemy must be captured at any cost. And they started running in his direction. The hero concluded that it seems that the monks of the King Chengshin sect are hunting for a mad killer. But the question remained why a member of the evil spirit squad was pretending to be crazy. Moreover, by his actions he attracted so much attention, which is very undesirable for such individuals. Dugu Sum once again asked the hero what was wrong. Yun Seo told him that they should quickly finish their shopping and hurry home, since there is some confusion on the streets right now. The hero would like to grab that guy at that moment and hear the whole story, 
but the obvious facts prevented him. There is no need to take such risks now, especially when he is with Dugasum. After a short time, the demonic warrior was already in some cave. And getting down on one knee, he was telling something to his leader. He said that he was completely confident in the information provided because he used his skills, so there could be no mistakes. In front of him was the bloodthirsty ghost demon Een, the elder of the myriad demon palace. He praised his henchmen, saying that he did a good job. Then he turned to one of the men who were near him, saying that now he could leave this dull Sichuan and return to the sect. But the man's face was very sullen, which Ian didn't like very much. The man also asked for his life. The bloodthirsty ghostly demon looked at that man with contempt. At that moment he already knew what he would do to him. And it seems that the man also realized this, which is why his face became even more gloomy and frightened. The bloodthirsty ghost demon sent a small stream of harmful energy directly through the man's head, causing it to fly out in all directions. Having killed him, he leaned towards his female servants and asked them a rhetorical question, asking where the Ean's celestial body is now. At this time, a month has already passed, and Jean still does not give in to persuasion. The hero wondered what could have happened at the school of heavenly lightning since they guard their secrets so fiercely. Walking from another training session, he heard a very familiar figure running straight in his direction. It was the genie's wife, and she looked very scared and confused. She looked in different directions and suddenly, straightening her head, she saw a hero in front of her. Yun Seo noticed that there were tears in her eyes. When she ran up to the hero, she cried even more and put her hands on Yun Seo Woon's body. Taking a little breath, she told the hero that Sun had disappeared. Having said this, she felt even worse and because of the sobbing, she was completely unable to put together even a couple of words. But the hero still asked her to explain everything in more detail. She told him that when she returned from the market, Duggersum was no longer at home and the whole house seemed to be turned upside down. She also added that she had already checked all the places where he could be, but had never found a trace of him. Yun Seo concluded that the disorder in the house could mean that the child was kidnapped. This means that someone dared to kidnap a child from the estate of the master of a prestigious martial arts hall. Further, Dugu Wu Jin's wife added that Dugu Sum is weak in body, so it is dangerous for him to leave the house for a long time. Yun Seo gave in to the question of what does weak in body mean. He wondered what Dugu Wu Jin's wife meant this time, and his wife immediately answered him that the doctor once said that her son had a yin celestial body. Memories from her past life immediately appeared in Yun Seo's head. He realized that things were not working out as he would like. He asked the lady to go to the Yellow Dragon Martial Arts Hall and convey his words to Master Dugu, namely, that the demonic sect kidnapped Suma. A few moments later, the hero was already running through the forest. Jumping from branch to branch, he understood that he had to move as quickly as possible. As he moved around, he thought about various things and eventually came to a conclusion. He realized that it turned out that the demon was not interested in him but in Duga Sunday. So all this time he was wandering around Sichuan under the guise of a man-man in search of the celestial body of Ian. Since the demon was a member of the evil spirit squad, the bloodthirsty phantom demon Ian must be behind the kidnapping. And most likely, upon returning to the sect, he intends to present the celestial body of Ian to his colleague from the past, the first disciple of the celestial demon. To the heavenly king of evil, Wai Su A.K., he has mastered an art that includes a flame technique that uses huge amounts of yang energy. In order to neutralize life-threatening yang, he needs an elixir with equally concentrated yin energy. Or, for this purpose, it is simply enough for him to find the yin celestial body and absorb its vital forces. The hero realized that this meant that the reason why Dugu Wu Jin stopped his hermitage and joined the Mirima Alliance was revenge for the murder of his son. Finally, Yun Seo saw the whole picture. He finally understood why in his past life Dugu Wu Jin behaved the way he did. The sect leader sent the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon away as he was causing too much trouble. The hero was wondering how he managed to hush up this situation and return. It turns out that in the end it was this idiot who became the one who created the monster called the King of the Fist. For most of his past life, Yun Seo worked around Sichuan. He knew this area and the hiding places of the demonic sect here like the back of his hand. But nevertheless, the hero did not know which of them he went to. We'll have to check every shelter. 
all the hero needed now was just not to be late. Therefore, he decided not to waste time and start checking everything. At this time, a cart was driving along one of the roads in Sichuan, in which there were faces familiar to us. In this cart lay Dugasum, and one of the henchmen of the bloodthirsty phantom demon asked if he was okay. He warned Ian that hitting pressure points is dangerous for the child's body. If something goes wrong, he will suffer internal bleeding and become disabled. But the bloodthirsty phantom demon laughed and said that it didn't matter. He just had to get to the sect alive. He then told the assistant to forget about it. Or better yet, he said whether he received an answer from Y. Su A. K. The assistant said that no response had been received yet and asked if it was worth sending another letter. The bloodthirsty ghost demon told him that since the celestial body is in his hands, so he will definitely agree to the conditions. When suddenly everyone heard a sharp scream, the riders on horses that were riding near the cart stopped to see who was standing in their way. It was the monk who took out his sword and said that he knew that they were connected with the man and about whom there were rumors, adding that for the murder of innocents they will pay with death in the name of Qin Qingshan. The assistant reported to the bloodthirsty ghostly demon that the path was blocked by a monk. Yin was very angry when he learned that an ordinary monk dared to block his path. Then he ordered in an angry voice to kill this monk right now, so as not to waste a lot of time. Feeling the advantage, the demonic warriors began to draw their swords, realizing that now they would quickly eliminate this monk. The monk screamed that he realized that the enemies were using demonic arts which meant that these bastards were adepts of the demonic sect. As soon as he finished this sentence, he noticed how all three demonic warriors jumped from their horses in his direction. They instantly struck straight at him, but the monk managed to block it with his sword, since the blow was approximately at one point. The monk felt that he was losing, as three demonic warriors were pressing on him at once. One of them ominously asked whether this had really dawned on him just now. They then lowered their swords and took turns striking the monk with their fists. The first was a bald demonic warrior. In parallel with how they beat him, they also shouted various phrases in his direction. The third demon warrior, who was the most powerful of the three, struck the final blow with his sword. The monk could no longer move and the demonic wars looked down on him. They also said that the instinct of self-preservation seems to be not alien to the monk. They said this because he began to slowly crawl away in the opposite direction from them. And they beat him at the same time shouting humiliating phrases. The assistant of the bloodthirsty phantom demon concluded that the warriors were taking too long to deal with such a weak enemy. Realizing this, he immediately pushed away from his seat and headed towards the monk. He moved so quickly that none of the participants in the battle even noticed how he appeared here but the monk managed. After a few moments, he realized that a rather dangerous enemy was standing in front of him. He gathered all his strength because he realized that he needed to attack quickly. But as soon as he swung, he saw that a massive explosion had occurred behind this bloodthirsty phantom demon assistant. Everyone seemed to have forgotten what was in the battle and at the same second turned towards the cart to see what had happened. The explosion was not so powerful, but it was very loud and because of this the horses scattered in different directions. The bloodthirsty phantom demon's assistant also noticed that some boy was moving away from the explosion after it occurred. So he asked the hero who he was. Yunisio warned only once in response. He told him that if they want to live, then they should go away. In order to understand what happened, you need to go back to the moment when three demonic warriors attacked the monk. Because right when the bloodthirsty phantom demon's assistant was watching this battle, Something happened in the background. A short distance from him, behind a tree, was Yong So, who also watched everything that was happening and thought about what to do next. He spent a long time calculating different plans in order to choose the most effective one. After all, every member of the Evil Spirit Squad is, first of all, a first-class martial artist. If he enters the battle on the side of the monk, he will most likely be able to defeat them quite easily. But the main problem was not hidden in these three warriors. The main problem is the head of the squad of evil spirits, who sits in the place of the coachman, and the bloodthirsty phantom Yin who was inside the carriage. The hero will definitely not be able to defeat the latter with his current level of chi. Yun Seo was in such a hurry to get here. But if he enters the fight right now, then for him it will most likely only end in a dog's death. He constantly blamed himself for what was happening as he remembered a very memorable moment that happened then in the market. After all, all this could have been avoided if the hero had simply not taken him out for a walk then. 
but Yun Seo also realized that it was also worth thinking about the positive side of the current situation. If now the hero manages to save the sum arc, then in this case he will definitely be able to win the trust of the King of the Fist. Realizing this, he silently pushed off from his place behind the tree and began to move towards the carriage, which at that moment was standing still. He built a simple plan in his head which was that immediately after saving the boy he would simply run away. He understood that he could not refuse such an opportunity, so he needed to attack the bloodthirsty phantom demon, and stealthily. But while he was thinking about this, he noticed a small explosion occur inside the carriage. Pushing away from the place away from the carriage, he thought that it looked like the bloodthirsty phantom Yin demon had noticed him. Yin's hand tried to reach Yin Seo's body, so he pushed off the air even harder and while flying thought about what to do next. In response to the spell of the bloodthirsty phantom demon, the hero used soul capture. For a few seconds, a confrontation between two techniques was created in the air, which was unclear how it would end. But the Yin technique managed to displace the hero's technique which is why he was thrown several meters away. But on the other hand, if he had not done anything, the harmful energy would have quickly killed him. Instead, he was pushed into the wall, from which he also pushed off with his feet. While on this wall, he saw that Ian was holding an arc of a bag in his right hand. And it looked like he was fine. Yun Seo decided to launch a lightning attack. He pushed off the wall with a very strong effort. It was so fast that at the place where Yun Seo's foot was, the stones scattered in different directions. While on the move, he already had a clear plan. He understood that Duga some needed in unharmed. Therefore, when the hero moved close to the enemy, he at the same second made a very obvious attack with the sword horizontally. This obviousness made the bloodthirsty in phantom demon very angry, and he prepared to attack the enemy with all his might. And due to the fact that a wave of rage covered him, he even released Dugasum from his right hand in order to more conveniently fight the enemy. But it seems that young Seo was just waiting for this moment. And his entire attack was only to create such conditions. He dodged in at the same second, and in flight, he took the Ark of the Sum in his left hand, and pushed off from the enemy's back towards the trees. All of the demonic warriors simply looked after him, and could not fully understand what had just happened. It was at that moment that the assistant of the bloodthirsty phantom demon asked the leaving boy who he was. He Yun Seo stopped for a moment, and warned the enemies just once. He told them to go away if they wanted to stay alive. The assistant of the bloodthirsty phantom demon Yin told him that this would not work. Yun Seo in turn told him that he gave them a chance to survive. But they still strive for death, which looked pathetic. Yin shouted in an angry voice for the demonic wars to bring him this impudent kid alive. He explained this by saying that he did not deserve to die quickly. This will personally make him regret that the hero remained alive. The assistant said that he would carry out Yin's order, and a second later only a small cloud of dust remained in the place where he stood. And the hero, in turn, noticed a few centimeters away from himself, Yin's assistant, who was glowing with purple energy and was ready to strike with two swords at once. This is what he did but Yun Seo managed to dodge this rather quick and deadly blow at the very last moment. Everything happened so quickly that the assistant's head didn't even move towards the hero. But his pupils were watching Yun Seo. Realizing that now was a good time and place for a counterattack, the hero struck back with a horizontal strike. But the assistant managed to evade him, and at the same time, Yun Seo noticed that he began to lose his balance. His leg moved to the side in order to block the blow that the assistant was trying to deliver from the other side. And the hero managed to repel this attack, although he did not feel the ideal balance in his stance. It seemed to the assistant that from blocking this attack the hero flew to the side. But in fact, Yun Seo himself pushed away from the enemy's sword. But at that moment the assistant did not understand this yet and thought that with his skills he could easily cope with him. But after a moment I realized that this was not so. He saw that the hero was moving towards the three elite demonic warriors. At that moment, Yun Seo was thinking about using the twelfth blow. It was nothing more than the fluttering moon technique, because of which, multiple streams of energy were directed to the point where the three enemies were standing. But they were able to recognize and see this attack in advance, so at that very second they jumped back in different directions. At that same second, Yun Seo landed in their place and found himself at a short distance from the monk, who by that moment no longer understood anything at all. He handed the child to the monk, and he, not understanding anything, 
took him in his arms. Yun Seo told the monk to take the child and leave as quickly as possible, until he detains all opponents. Initially, the monk refused such an idea. But then the hero said that even if they fight together, it will not be possible to turn the battle in their favor. But you need to save the child and call for help. At this moment, the confused monk looked at the three angry elite demonic warriors and the bloodthirsty phantom demon. At that very second, he began to run in the opposite direction, having managed to say that he would bring the clan fighters, so the boy needed to hold out a little. Having picked up a little speed, he pushed off and gained a very high speed, leaving Yun So on alone with the enemies. Yun ordered three elite warriors to follow the monk while he dealt with the boy. The soldiers accepted the order. A second later they pushed away from their seats, but the hero didn't even look in their direction. He seemed to understand that the monk would be much faster. Standing in this place, he told him that he would regret what he had done. At the same time, thinking that now that the child is safe, it's time to make his move. Yin was not very angry with this wording of the boy and he became seriously angry. Immediately the hero told him that blinded by the celestial body, he kidnapped the boy without even asking whose son he was. But this phrase did not interest the bloodthirsty phantom demon at all and he said that the boy was bluffing because he was scared. The hero remained silent, thinking that from his past life he realized that people very often do not understand that they are putting their head in the mouth of a tiger until it is too late. While he was thinking about this, a confident smile appeared on his face, and the bloodthirsty phantom demon was very angry. Shouting that the hero had a lot of chutzpah, he jumped towards her, trying to attack. But the hero quite easily managed to jump away from the place where he hit and fly in the other direction. But the bloodthirsty phantom demon expected such an event, since in the previous battle he had already realized which style Yun Seo would inherit. While the hero was in flight, he managed to grab him by the leg. Taking a good hold of her, he threw Yun So on into the floor with all his strength. And because of this, the hero hit the ground very hard. When the dust settled, the hero recovered as he managed to land on one knee. Gathering his strength, he raised his head and saw the threat approaching him. Yun tried to throw a surprise attack right at the place where Yun Seo landed, and put the maximum amount of effort into this attack. But the hero was much more agile than his opponent. Therefore, at the very last moment, he managed to jump straight away from the enemy's fist. At that moment, the hero realized that he was revealing his weak point. And it seems that Yun also realized that now, while the hero is in the air, is a good time to attack. He swung his arm and prepared to strike Yun Seo's body. As soon as the boy tried to swing his sword at Yin's head, the bloodthirsty phantom demon immediately grabbed him right by the head. Holding him in this position, he said that after all this chatter, the boy could only run away from the attacks. But Yun Seo remained silent, thinking that fighting the bloodthirsty ghostly demon in his current state was very similar to suicide. However, he remembered that in past lives he had fought with his student and son Yu Song. He may be stronger than him, but their fighting style is exactly the same. This gave him the idea that the hero knows all his weaknesses and skills. At the same moment, with his left knee, he hit the elbow of the hand that was holding his head. The hero realized that he has an advantage in that he knows what his opponent is capable of, and he knows nothing about him. Although it will be difficult to defeat him, all the hero needs is to gain a little time. At the same time, thinking about this, he moved towards his opponent. The only doubt was that due to the wounds received during the rescue of Duga's son, Yun Seo did not even know how long he could hold out in such an unequal battle. He ran point-blank towards the bloodthirsty ghostly demon and used the third strike, which is also known as the full moon. But the full moon was just a deception. In fact, the hero decided to use the second technique so that it would be unexpected. After the hero's attack, Yin decided to carry out a counter-attack, but at the same moment, Yong So used the fatal moon technique. Having moved forward, the hero turned around to see what damage he managed to inflict on the enemy, and whether he was able to eliminate him. Turning his head, he looked at the back of Yin's head, and wondered if such an attack would work. But when the bloodthirsty phantom demon turned around, he said that he did not understand how a puppy who had just taken the path of martial arts could scratch him. The hero was very surprised that the enemy got by with just one scratch. At that moment, Yin began to glow with a red light and said that although he wanted to take Yun Seo alive, time was running out, so nothing could be done. 
He used the technique due to which harmful energy began to spread at great speed in all directions at once. And since it spread only along the floor, the hero was able to block it by pushing a small stone out from under the earth using technology. At the same moment, he moved to attack in the direction of his opponent, but he managed to strike him. Due to the fact that young Seo was in motion at that moment, Yin's left fist blow turned out to be very strong, so the hero flew several meters to the side. The bloodthirsty phantom demon realized that he had won and only looked at the cloud of dust that formed at the place where the hero landed. Yun Siowun leaned against the carriage that Yin had thrown him into. Trying to adjust his breathing, Yun Seo thought that if he had put up protection a little later, the enemy would definitely have destroyed him. The bloodthirsty phantom demon Yin, in turn, said that it seems the boy was not bluffing, since he managed to survive after a full-fledged attack. Yun Seo, in turn, said that he was gifted not only with intelligence, but also with vitality. He then asked Wu Yin if everything would be all right if he left the chase to his servants. Yin didn't understand what the boy meant at first, so no emotions were visible on his face. He then laughed, asking the hero if he really thought he could make him doubt something. The hero told him that if the monk escapes and reports to the Qing Qing Shan sect about what happened, then everything will not be in favor of Yin. But the bloodthirsty phantom demon said that this would not happen, for the simple reason that his guys are already waiting for him where he ran. The monk stopped in the forest at that time and realized that he was surrounded by a huge number of demonic warriors. At this time, in the forest in which the monk was now staying, the sun was shining very brightly, and even because of the dense forest, everything was very well lit. Demonic warriors surrounded the monk and he froze in fear because he did not know what to do in such a situation. Yong Seo, in turn, still could not gather his strength and still sat leaning against the carriage and Yin told him that his guys were already waiting for the monk where he ran. But the hero did not listen to him, and instead thought. He reflected on what he knew that the evil spirit's squad consisted of twenty-four people. However, the hero could not have expected that they had already taken up positions. This meant that the enemy had a reason to remain calm. Yun Seo quickly realized that he didn't have time to care about anyone else right now. He had to figure out how to deal with the bloodthirsty ghostly demon alone. And besides, the leader of the evil spirit squad was now inactive due to orders, which was annoying. But it is obvious that he can enter battle at any moment. This only confirms that Yin is in complete control of the situation and knows what he is doing. But the hero was tormented by the question of whether his intervention was a mistake. After all, Yun Seo suspected that it would be dangerous. As he stood up, he thought that knowing how everything turned out, the hero could only regret his decision. Yin simultaneously commented on the hero's rise, saying that it was surprising that he still had strength left. He took out the scabbard of his sword from his traveling belt, and thought that regrets would not change anything. The thought came to him that if he had avoided this, and that every time because of the fear of death, then his feet would not have been in near him, that's for sure. But all risks are justified, since danger also opens the way to new opportunities. The bloodthirsty phantom demon Yin was completely confident in his position, so he mockingly asked the boy what he was capable of. Yun Seo didn't answer, but thought that he needed to hold on a little longer, so the task seemed quite realistic. Gathering all his strength, he pushed off the ground and jumped at his opponent with great speed. It seemed to him that at that moment the world stopped. At this time, in the forest where the monk was, a small explosion occurred which raised sand, dust, and stones several meters higher than the trees that grew there. The monk managed to escape a short distance from a group of enemies for a short time. He stood behind one wide tree and thought that due to the fact that there were too many enemies, escaping would be quite a difficult task. But suddenly he felt someone's presence near him. And within a second, the demonic warrior cut the tree behind which the monk was hiding, but he managed to dodge. After the tree began to fall, the monk lunged, moving several meters away from the enemies. But after a moment, a small group of demonic warriors pulled up to their brother. The monk looked at everyone with an embittered face and did not know what to do next. But he still held the sword tightly in his hands. One of the elite warriors suggested that the monk surrender. All the armed warriors laughed when they heard this proposal from one of the demonic warriors. When everyone laughed, one of the warriors who was sitting on a tree branch suggested that it looked like the monk was going to lead them in with him until the others came here to help. 
one of the elite demonic warriors asked the monk if he really thought that they would dance to his tune. But the monk did not know what to answer. He stood a short distance from the chopped tree, and simply silently looked at all the enemies that stood in front of him. The understanding that if he did not take any action and did not tell them anything, they would kill him, made him quickly think about what to do next. Suddenly, he told the elite warrior that he had a valuable offer for them. He suggested that the soldiers change the situation so as not to drag the child into battle, arguing this by saying that this also benefits them, since they need the child alive. Everyone immediately drew attention to the Arch of the Sun, who at that time was sleeping on the monk's shoulder. But all the warriors were silent. It was not clear whether they were thinking about this proposal or had already decided everything a long time ago and would attack any second. The monk again examined all the enemies and asked the soldiers what they thought about this. At that moment sweat began to flow from his face. The elite demonic warrior who stood closest to the monk took several steps, at the same time saying that it seemed that he did not fully understand him. He then pushed away from his seat with such speed that the monk lost sight of him for a while. When a second later the monk raised his head, he saw that a huge number of enemies simultaneously decided to attack him from the air with great speed. At that moment, it seemed that everything had slowed down, and the monk even had time to think that this was really how it would all end for him. He was tormented by the thought that he had chased after them to capture the man-man, but he had not succeeded in this either. In the end, even his request to protect the child was not fulfilled. He closed his eyes and asked Buddha for forgiveness for the last time for the fact that now no one can protect the child. The monk finally said goodbye to life. I Suddenly he heard a very sharp sound, followed by an incredible flash that forced him to open one eye. Through this slightly open eye, he saw a man from whom blue lightning was emitted in different directions, and with one touch he was able to kill one of the warriors. Having fully opened his eyes, he witnessed how the body of this warrior dried up and fell dead onto the floor, and the mysterious figure still stood motionless. The unknown savior said that everything could have ended tragically if he had come even a little later. He looked at all the elite demonic warriors in front of him and said that he didn't know why the members of the demonic sect suddenly began to go on a rampage in Sichuan and not in Xinjiang. And all the warriors had already prepared to attack the enemy. But they were frightened by the fact that everything around was covered with blue lightning. A moment later, the eyes of the mysterious stranger also began to glow blue. And then lightning began to emanate from them and he said that no one would leave here alive. After these words, the monk asked his savior who he was. But he, in turn, said that he would soon finish with the demonic warriors, and then he would answer this question, and he, after which he pushed away from the place where he was standing, and an electric aura of blue color followed him. Less than half a second had passed, and this warrior had already killed one of the demonic elite warriors. Moreover, it happened at such a speed that everyone who stood near him didn't even notice it. One of them who stood closer to the monk, turned around to see what happened behind him. Well, at the same moment he received a very strong blow to his right cheek, which caused him to instantly lose consciousness. Within a moment he lost consciousness and instantly fell to the ground. The monk stood aside and thought about what amazing speed and power comes from this warrior. It was hard for him to even follow his movements. The warrior dealt with everyone left and right, without even using a sword but simply delivering endless blows with his fists. He was also incredibly fast, so he moved from one enemy to another with lightning speed, and also eliminated them. The monk thought that this battle looked not like a battle, but like a real hunt. During one of the stages of this hunt, the warrior struck his enemy with all his strength with his left hand, so much so that he slammed into the ground. At this moment, the elite demon warriors realized that this was their only chance to strike the warrior from behind so they started doing it at once. But instead of avoiding the attack, the unknown warrior used the technique, which is why he began to glow even brighter with a blue flame. And this glow went beyond the edge of his body. The enemies were already a few centimeters away from striking him, but while still in the air they sensed something wrong. While still in the air, they felt unbearable pain, followed by cold. The monk who watched from the side realized that they were eliminated instantly. A moment later, they all fell dead onto the floor and showed no signs of life. Only at this moment the unknown warrior removed his hand from the face of one of the defeated enemies. It looked like the fight was over. Many demonic warriors lay dead in this clearing in the forest. 
This warrior destroyed twenty cultists in the blink of an eye. No one could have thought that there would be a master of this level in Sichuan. When it was all over and all the raised dust fell again on the forest ground, the monk asked the stranger who he was. And he replied that he was the father of this child. But this did not mean anything to the monk, so he dared to ask him his name. But the father replied that they would get acquainted later, and now the monk should take his son to a safer place. He also added that he would definitely visit the Qingqing Shan sect and express his gratitude. Then the monk asked if the warrior was sure that he did not want to carry the child himself. Pushing off from the ground, he said that he would like this most of all now, but he still needs to save his student. At this time, Yun Xiao, bleeding, stood near the carriage. The situation looked hopeless. It was impossible to hope that Didu Wu Jin would make it in time. When the hero gathered his strength, he made a dash straight out of the cloud of dust that formed around his body. Jumping out of it, he tried to strike vertically with his sword sheath at the enemy. And it seemed that he succeeded, but did not cause any damage to the enemy. In response, the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon would occasionally deliver non-lethal blows with its hands. And sometimes he managed to dodge them. But the hero still had hope, because he understood that he had no other choice but to fight. Therefore, while retreating, from time to time he attacked the enemy again. Yun Seo tried to change the technique, but Yin could still adapt to each of the techniques that the hero used. The bloodthirsty phantom demon's attacks, in turn, were sometimes quite deadly and powerful, but because of this they were slow. Therefore, the hero was able to quickly dodge them. During one of the attacks, Yun Seo came up with a combination of techniques. Therefore, I decided to use the technique of the twelfth phase of the moon shadow sword. She was also called the dancing moon. When he used it, four streams of energy that were more transparent than those that were before were directed towards the enemy. Almost effortlessly, he managed to repel them. And he shouted to the hero, Did he really think that this illusion would work against the bloodthirsty phantom demon? But when the dust from the blocked attack was cleared, he saw in front of him something that made him doubt his superiority for a quarter of a second. In front of him was a hero who approached him, while simultaneously using the technique of the first phase of the moon shadow sword, namely the moon string. Yun Seo only used the illusion to distract Yin's attention. With the help of such simple tactics, he was able to hold back his attacks for some time. The hero did not expect that his opponent would die from such an attack. But it was also a surprise when he realized that the bloodthirsty phantom Deniman managed to block such a sudden attack. Blocking a blow of such force created a huge amount of energy due to which the hero had to retreat a long distance back. Yun Seo thought that he would be able to land a good blow, but it looks like he was wrong again. Moreover, while he was thinking about what to do next and thinking about mistakes, he missed the moment when Yin approached him from the side. At that same second, the bloodthirsty phantom demon struck directly at the place where the boy stood, but the hero dodged. Having jumped a short distance, Yin still managed to strike him with her elbow. This blow was very well placed and very strong, and because of this, a new fountain of blood began to flow from the hero's mouth at the same second. Moreover, this blow caused him to fly ten meters to the side and because of this he received additional damage. The bloodthirsty phantom demon stood still and looked in the direction in which his opponent flew away. There was a huge cloud of dust in that place. Realizing that he had won, he did not come closer to the boy. For a while, he simply enjoyed the victory and stood a short distance from Yun Seo. I just watched him silently. The hero at this time was thinking about how such an old warrior managed to be so nimble. After all, he could never have expected this. Moreover, the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon has honed his qi control to perfection, developed endurance and strength to the limit, and has real combat experience. This made the situation worse. Yun Seo once again concluded that he needed to avoid fighting him face to face until some help arrived. Yin, in turn, told the hero that he clings to life very tightly. This is quite rare. Well, then his face became even more embittered and he said that today this life would end. He swung with incredible force and hit the hero with even greater force, but at the last moment he managed to dodge to the right. After this, Fury finally covered the bloodthirsty phantom demon, and he began to inflict a huge number of blows on Yun Seo, but none of them touched his body. During these blows, he kept asking how long the hero was going to run away. After all, according to Yin, his death was only a matter of time. 
At one point, the hero managed to jump a few meters away from Ian, thereby buying himself some time. At this moment, the bloodthirsty phantom demon shouted for the hero to fight him in private battle. At that moment, Yun Seo, looking at him, realized that irreparable damage had been caused to the pride of the bloodthirsty phantom demon, all due to the fact that he has difficulty defeating a child, while his subordinate is watching the battle. The hero also realized that without a sword, only the techniques of the thousand hands of the Azuras were available to him. But the situation was changed by the fact that these techniques require a huge amount of chi, so now he is not able to use them normally. In the current situation, there is not a single technique left that the heroes could use to their full potential. Seeing one of the bloodthirsty phantom demon's techniques heading towards him, he realized that instead of defending, he needed to dodge the attacks. This is necessary in order not to waste such valuable energy unless absolutely necessary. His dodging became automatic, and even during the most terrible attacks, the hero still managed to dodge. Moreover, he understood that at this time the bloodthirsty phantom demon was spending an incredible amount of chi energy, unlike Yun So. Yun's attacks may look spectacular, but if he can't hit them, it means he's just wasting energy. All tasks now boiled down to the need to save as much energy as possible, and the hero also realized that he should not allow the enemy to deal even one direct blow. The assistant, who at that time stood aside and observed everything, tried to analyze the fight and the child's fighting style. Although it looks like Yun Seo is being pushed back with every attack, the hero has not yet missed a single significant attack. The assistant was inspired and delighted by the fact that a young man who was not even twenty years old was fighting very desperately against the elder of the Hidden Devil Cave. At the same time, the assistant also understood that the bloodthirsty phantom demon had almost completely lost his composure during the battle, which helped the hero. He realized that his task, as the leader of the evil spirit squad, was to bring the bloodthirsty phantom demon Ian to reason. He might be in trouble for disobeying the elder's order but the assistant could not continue to remain an observer. During one of the evasions, the hero felt that the assistant pushed off from the place where he had been standing for a very long time. Anything could be expected from this. A moment later, this assistant rushed past the boy with great speed and struck him with a sword. From this blow, Yun Seo started bleeding from his mouth again, and he began to feel very bad and his strength gradually left him. Yin turned to his assistant, calling him by name Il Ho and said that he had violated the order by interfering in the battle. The assistant told him that since they had spent too much time, they still needed to cover their tracks and move to the shelter. Ian was still furious and asked the assistant how much time they spent on this boy. But the subordinate did not answer this question, saying that Ian should also not be forgotten about the monk. After all, if one of them suddenly disappears, the rest will definitely begin an investigation. This answer certainly did not calm down the bloodthirsty phantom demon, but on the contrary, he became even more angry. Because of this, his body began to emit red energy. He could very little control it because fury completely enveloped him. A moment later he turned to his assistant and said that he would now tear this boy apart. He also told the assistant to prepare for punishment for not following the orders he gave. At that moment, the assistant noticed some kind of glow from the side. A moment after the assistant noticed this glow from the sky, Jean landed in an arc. Directly from the sky, he landed on the body of the bloodthirsty phantom demon's assistant, and the force of the impact of his legs was so strong that he could not get up after that. The hero, realizing that he was most likely saved, told Doug and Jean that he was a little late, calling him a master. The master stood with one foot on the assistant and very effectively radiated lightning from his body in different directions which were getting closer and closer to Yin. Then the lightning gradually disappeared from his eyes, and he told Yun Seo that he had held out well until his arrival. A smile appeared on the hero's face, however. He said that despite Jin's words, he feels that he will soon die. Then he asked Dugu to take care of the bloodthirsty ghostly demon and take him to the doctor. Dugu Jin did not answer anything, but everyone noticed that an aura of lightning began to appear around his body and gradually expanded. The bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon stood still, and in his head there were thoughts and questions about what kind of man was in front of him, because he felt that he could not move. He, being on the same level with the ascended, cannot move from his place out of fear. And he could not believe that in front of him was the one who possessed Qi, strengthened by pure will. 
Duga asked the enemy if it was true that he was the leader of this gang. But at that moment Ian was thinking that in front of him was an absolute entity, in a battle against which he would not have a single chance. He began to go through the options of who could still be in front of him. One of the options was that he would now fight the King of Poisons, but he immediately rejected this option, because White Lightning cannot be controlled by the King of Poisons. At that moment, Dugujin asked Wu Yin for what purpose they kidnapped his son. At this moment, the bloodthirsty phantom demon shouted in a voice that was not his own that he did not know whose son he was talking about, and moreover, he did not even know who was standing in front of him. At this moment, Yun Seo joined the conversation, who said that he warned that the bloodthirsty phantom demon Yin would eventually regret it. The realization that this boy was not bluffing all this time made Yin even angrier. Because of this, he completely lost his composure. Because of this, he shouted to Doug Jean that if he wanted to get his son back unharmed, then he better not do anything stupid. To which the master answered him that all the sectarians who were chasing the monk were already dead. Yin finally lost the confidence on his face. And at that moment, Jean once again asked him why he kidnapped his son. Yun Seo didn't let him answer and said that he already knew about everything and therefore Doug Jean didn't have to ask him questions. At that very second, the master said that he no longer had any reason to leave the bloodthirsty phantom demon alive. Then the hero said that if his limbs were broken and his concentration of chi was destroyed, then Yin would be an excellent gift for Qin Qin Shan. Yun Seo suggested that one old man would be enough as a gift. By this moment, the assistant who had been lying under Master Dugu's foot all this time, Jean had almost lost consciousness. But at that moment I felt incredible pressure on my back. The master managed to eliminate this assistant with just one foot. At the same time, he said that he agreed with the hero's assumption. After that, he took a few steps towards the bloodthirsty phantom demon. These steps were quite slow and Dugu deliberately took them at such a speed that Ian would panic. But the phantom demon at that time was thinking that he must escape at any cost. But at this moment, he did not see any opportunity that would allow him to escape from Master Dugu Wu Jin. He began to look around and suddenly turned his attention to Yun Asio, who was sitting exhausted on the floor at that moment. At that moment, an idea appeared in his head along with a smirk on his face. He pushed away from his seat with all his strength and turned around to face the boy. Approaching closer and closer to the hero, he thought that everything could work out in his favor if he managed to take Yun Seo hostage. But at the moment when he was almost touching the hero's body, he heard Yun Seo tell him that exposing his back to a martial arts master is a fatal mistake. At that moment, the old man felt the movement of lightning behind his back, and most likely already realized that it was all over. At that same second, he momentarily felt Dugu Wu Jin touching his head with his right hand. And after a moment he no longer felt anything at all, but he still heard. And the last thing he heard in this life was the ridicule of Yun Asio, who said that Yin seemed to have senile insanity. The bloodthirsty illusory demon's face scrunched up and his eyes were frozen in fear. The hero, in turn, only smiled, realizing that everything ended well in the end. A huge stream of heavenly lightning instantly eliminated the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon, and its story was over. After a while, he woke up on a bed in some room. After a long time, Opening his eyes, he tried to understand where exactly he was, and settled on the assumption that this was an infirmary. Although the pain greatly prevented him from thinking, being in such a state, he had no choice. After that incident, the hero became convinced that through his actions he could influence the events that happened in a past life. In his previous life, Dugu fell into a rage after losing his son, and joined the Murima Alliance several years later. The kidnapping was also supposed to happen a few years later, which didn't add up. After some thought, Yong realized that perhaps it was he who caused the discrepancy in timelines, taking Duga's son with him to the market, where he was noticed by an adept of the demonic sect. He concluded that he should not rely too much on his past life memory, because he should always keep in mind all the variables that could affect it. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed that Jean's wife came into his room, she was carrying something in her hands. Having placed the tray of food on a small table near his bed, she leaned towards him because she saw that the hero had woken up after a long time. The lady immediately thanked Yun So for everything he did for them, because she knew how much the hero suffered after the battle. The hero, in turn, said that he was fine, 
and in general he only did what he had to do. At that moment, someone else entered the room, simultaneously asking if Yun So had woken up. The lady and Yun Seo Woon himself drew attention to this man. This person was Du Eugene. Genuine joy was visible on the hero's face. He was very happy about this meeting. After hearing the information from Dugu Wujin, Yeo Seo was very surprised to learn that he had been in this infirmary for ten days. The hero could not believe that he had lain here for so long. But when he realized that Jean was not joking, he asked him where exactly he was now. The master answered him that he was in one of the infirmaries under the control of the Sichuan Tang clan. This was the second information that greatly surprised the hero. After all, the Tang clan is one of the five great clans. Many famous doctors came from this clan, because it is famous for its exceptional healing and poisoning techniques. Yun Seo was worried because he knew that hiring a doctor from the Tang clan was quite expensive. But Dugu Wujin said that the hero should not worry about money. Then the hero fell silent for a while, after which he sincerely thanked the master. After that, he asked Dugu Jin how his son Dugu Sum was feeling. The master told him that he was unharmed because he was lucky that the blows to the pressure points did not cause any complications for him. This information was a real relief for the hero. He was again glad to hear good news. Dugu Wu Jin thanked Yun Seo in return, saying that now he is in his debt. The hero answered him that he was not just in debt, but in huge debt. Dugu Wu Jin said that Yun Seo can ask for anything except training in the art of the Heavenly Lightning School. The hero said that he would like to study the martial arts of the Heavenly Lightning School. At that moment, the master asked Yun Seo if he even listened to him when he explained the conditions, to which the boy replied that he needed absolutely nothing else at the moment. The master and the hero looked at each other. Dugu Jin's gaze was slightly angry and very tense. In turn, Yun Seo looked at him relaxed, as if showing his confidence in his choice. After pausing, Jin said that, as he had said earlier, the hero would not be able to learn these martial arts. Then Yun Soon asked the master to explain at least the reason for the refusal, so that he could abandon this idea with peace of mind. The master thought a lot before making a decision about whether to tell the hero about this. After this, a chi barrier began to appear around his body. And in parallel with this, Duga said that if the hero refuses this idea after hearing a clear explanation, then he agrees. The barrier became larger and larger, and the hero realized that the master surrounded the room with a chi barrier so that not a single sound would leak out. Dugu Wu Jin said that the hero will not be able to master these techniques because the problem is that only people with damaged veins can master them. At the same moment, Yun Seo asked whether the master meant that disease that kills those affected by it before they turn 20. The one that, according to stories, is less common than the celestial body in the the master replied that the hero was right. Damaged veins are a rare abnormality in which the veins are narrow and stiff, causing qi to not circulate normally through them. Due to difficulties with the circulation of qi and learning the basic techniques of its accumulation, sooner or later this leads to death due to the fact that the circulation of qi throughout the body is blocked. The hero became interested, so he asked how the damaged veins were related to the martial arts of the Heavenly Lightning School. Dugu Wu Jin explained by saying that the art of the white lightning body involves containing highly concentrated and extremely dense qi in the body. That's why it's so destructive. He began to demonstrate this by lifting various objects and showing the flow of lightning through the body. Dugu Wu Jin also said that for the same reason, if an ordinary person begins to study the white lightning body art technique, then his veins will simply not be able to withstand it, and he will be torn from the inside and he demonstrated this by passing a small lightning bolt through a piece of wood, which instantly tore it into small pieces. He expanded his answer by saying that the hard and elastic damaged veins are able to withstand the flow of qi energy initiated by the white lightning body art. This means that without such a deviation, the hero will not be able to master the technique of interest. Yong So knew that there was some secret hidden in the arts of the school of heavenly lightning, but he could not even think that it was in the veins. Dugu Wu Jin said that his veins were also damaged. The destructive power of the white lightning body art was able to break through the qi blockade. One could say that deflection and technique complement each other in his body. Because of this, finding a successor is quite difficult. The school had never met a master who had more than two students. 
He said that the hero was mistaken in believing that the Heavenly Lightning School is a sect that transmits martial arts to only one person per generation. One Yun Seo then said that the difficulty in finding a successor does not explain Dugu's desire to end the school's legacy. Dugu Wu Jin told him that the hero was right, because theoretically there is a way to convey the art of the white lightning body even to someone who does not have damaged veins. After this, the hero practically jumped out of bed to ask the master if he was joking. Dugu Wu Jin said that this is true, but for this the master must personally intervene in the flow of qi of his student and help him with the accumulation of qi. Yun Seo said that then it turns out that he just needs Dugu to help him a little with this. But the master replied that it would not be easy for the hero's body to withstand such energy. The hero, realizing that he still had a chance to have the necessary skills, cried out that the master did not even know for sure, because they had not tried to do this. After hearing Dugu, Wu Jin fell silent, as he needed to think and delve a little into the memories of the past. After all, he once despaired of finding a student with damaged veins. He gathered orphans and taught them. But during the learning process, everything did not go according to plan. None of these orphans could endure the training and he only sacrificed innocent children. This dealt a very strong blow to Dugu Wu Jin's psyche and he could no longer continue making senseless sacrifices just to pass on the school's legacy. So he set out on a journey across the central plains to find a student with damaged veins. But as expected, this was not an easy task, and if he gathered the orphans back together to educate them, despite the possible losses, it would end badly. After all, the master was seriously tempted by the hope that one of them might survive and take on the legacy of the school. But Dugu Jin felt uneasy every time he was overcome by such thoughts. He hated himself because he forgot about the mistakes he made when he fell into the trap of his own greed in his time. Therefore, even though the legacy of the Heavenly Lightning School was destined to meet its end, the master said that he could not continue to repeat the same mistake over and over again. At this moment, the hero felt regret for his interlocutor. The master cried out that even if he succeeds— the next generation will encounter the same problem on their way. Therefore, he considers ending this cycle the right decision. A pause was created, and during it the hero thought that the master's entry into the Murima alliance was conditioned by his readiness to die, but victims among the innocent are a completely different problem. At that second, Yun Seo realized that the master had been carrying a much heavier cross all his life than the hero could have imagined. After some time, the hero and the master were already standing in the center of another room, which seemed to be intended for duels or training. Dugu Wu Jin shouted to the hero that he was ready to fulfill any other request, asking why not just drop the idea of studying the arc of the white lightning body. But the hero, leaving his grin on his face, told the master that he would not hold a grudge against him even if he died. The master became even more angry and asked the hero if he really didn't understand that this was practically impossible even with his help. Yun Seo asked the master why he thinks that he must die. Dugu answered him that although his talent is exceptional, the perfect control of Qi is a matter of experience. The hero laughed slightly when he heard this, because in his opinion he had enough experience. Mainly because the Qi accumulation technique he learned in his previous life is the strongest heavenly demon accumulation art in all of Miram. So Yun Seo told the master that if he was worried about the experience, then he shouldn't worry about it. After which he asked Dugu from Jin to start immediately. He also added to his remark by saying that Yun Seo Wun takes upon himself the responsibility to lighten the master's burden. He then sat in the lotus position in the middle of the room and told Doug Jin that he was absolutely ready. Dugu Wu Jin began to slowly approach him, at the same time thinking that the art of the white lightning body is a martial art, the only mistake in the use of which can be fatal. And the realization of this also prompted him to other thoughts, one of which was the understanding that if something happens to this guy because of him, then he will not be able to get rid of the feeling of guilt until his grave. But the master was haunted by the memory of how talented this boy was. Therefore, Jean still had hope in her head. Thinking about this, Jean took out an object from his pocket. He thought that if the guy managed to master the art of the white lightning body, then everyone would benefit from it. He sat in the lotus position a short distance away from Yun Seo, and before starting, he sincerely prayed that the worst would not happen this time. There was no one else in this room and because of this there was deathly silence in the room. 
After such a time of silence, the master offered his hand to the student's back and said that the art of the body of white lightning strengthens the body of the wearer. Having reached a certain level, the hero's regenerative abilities will increase. But he understood everything perfectly, since he had already seen the power of the king of the fist personally, with his own eyes. Dubu Wu Jin said that now he will begin to pour his chi into the hero's veins. And when his chi paved the way for the white lightning body art, Yun Seo will need to follow the flow of chi and learn to control it. Well, as the master said before, it will be extremely difficult. He will gradually increase the amount of transmitted energy. Dense and heavy energy will slowly spread through the hero's veins. And if Yong Seo cannot contain this chi, then it will simply tear him apart from the inside. At this moment, the genie once again wanted to remember all the unsuccessful attempts before. But the hero asked the master not to worry at this moment, since there was no reason for this. He said that none of the things Jean regrets would happen again. Because of this, the master was confused for a short time and did not know what to say. While he was silent, Yun Seo asked him to start faster with this process. Because at this rate, the transfer of Chi will take several days. A smile appeared on the master's face. Finally, at least a grain of confidence was visible on him. He sat back in the lotus position and his body began to emit blue energy after which he told the hero that he was starting. He also asked Young to concentrate as much as he could on the flow of chi inside him and not think about anything else. When the hero opened his eyes, he was already in a completely different place. While here, he heard the master ask if he was focused on the chi in his veins. Yun Seo, looking around and realizing where he ended up, replied that it was so. Dugu then told him that he would now begin to transfer his chi into Yun Seo's body. When the hero looked around again, he realized what was inside his own body, and on the left side he noticed the teacher's chi. He came to the understanding that the master wrapped the hero's chi with his chi, and that was the idea. When the master began to move and transfer chi from one point to another, the hero quickly jumped into it to direct it in the right direction. While he was inside it, he thought that this chi was not as tough as the heavenly demon's accumulation technique, but the density of chi was simply off the charts he realized that he would most likely be able to follow the flow of the master's chi. But the task was complicated by the fact that concentrating on one's own chi was very difficult due to the enormous pressure on the hero's body. He decided to focus harder. He could not get rid of the negative thoughts that as soon as he lost concentration and left the flow of the teacher's chi, he would immediately go astray and go into a state of uncontrollable chi distortion. In the hero's previous life, his body had reached the pinnacle of martial arts. And this means that in this life he will definitely cope with such a task. He just needs to focus and not be distracted by anything. Well, all the same, his head was pierced from time to time by various thoughts that brought him pain and, accordingly, destroyed his concentration. The flow of chi began to slowly expand and the hero gradually lost control. Suddenly he heard the master shouting to him that Yun Seo must concentrate harder if he does not want to die. The hero became worse and worse, and blood began to flow from his mouth in a small stream. The master, in turn, tried for his part to correct the situation. The hero felt that his veins seemed to be about to explode due to the fact that you, the teacher, were becoming denser. It is becoming more and more difficult to withstand the pressure due to the ever-increasing concentration of chi, and although the hero at that moment had not yet completely lost consciousness, he was close to such a state. Consciousness gradually eluded him, and even the understanding that he needed to concentrate at any cost did not help him. In the outside world, at this time, in the training room, lightning was flying in all directions. The master thought that he was too hasty, as he was overwhelmed with enthusiasm, due to the fact that the hero followed the stream so confidently. But Dugu Wu Jin also understood that if he stopped now, the hero would go into a state of uncontrolled chi distortion. He started shouting to Yun Seo that he couldn't faint. After all, they almost succeeded, and the procedure was almost finished. He shouted even louder that everything would end as soon as Yun Seo survived this stage. After all, there is still quite a bit left. A moment later, the hero screamed loudly and lightning began to ooze from his eyes. At that moment he experienced unearthly pain. Then there was a very large explosion that completely covered the entire room and filled it with lightning. But just as quickly as this explosion spread, it disappeared. 
A few seconds later, the master looked at the student's back and tried to understand whether the procedure was successful. The entire room was covered in dust after the explosion, so visibility was slightly difficult. But when he looked at the student from the front, he saw that he was dead, as blood was flowing from his mouth. The master concluded that it seems that the chi distortion has consumed him. Dugu Wu Jin decided that it was all his fault, because he should have stopped and dissuaded the hero from this idea at any cost. The master was in despair and screamed at the dead student's back, asking him to finally wake up. But he didn't answer at all, and even his skin turned white. When he once again shouted out Yun Seo's name with tears in his eyes, the hero immediately opened his eyes from which lightning began to emit. The master came even closer to the student and saw that he began to move slowly, still emitting lightning which spread in small streams throughout the room. Then his body began to glow with a blue color that came from the area where the heart is located. And inside his body at that moment his heart was contracting at an incredible speed. It was beating very quickly and emitting lightning. This beating was stopped during the procedure. But now, because it started, the hero was able to move his hand. After a few seconds, he already had enough strength to put this hand on his knee. He still felt unbearable pain at this moment, especially when trying to move. The master looked at his student and could not believe his eyes. Once again gathering his strength, Yun Seo managed to twist his head, and it didn't take much effort on his part. The hero felt much better, and after a few seconds he was able to stand on his own feet, and it seemed that he was conscious. He turned towards Dugu from Jean and said that such a scream that he had just heard from the master was very unlike him. The tears on the master's face had already dried, but Jean still looked admiringly at his student. Dugu Wu Jean immediately began to thank the Lord for helping him with this task. Once again, he said under his breath that if he failed again and lost his student, he would not be able to look his son in the face. But suddenly he heard the hero tell him that the master shouldn't talk about himself like that. After all, in the end everything worked out which means we can only be happy about it. Seeing the smile on his master's face, Yun Seo said that he was looking forward to his subsequent instructions. Duke Eugene looked at his student with hope, and now he was sincerely glad that everything worked out. The training room was still empty, and in the center of it was Yong So and the master. When they stood up, the hero told Doug Jean that he had one question that didn't give him peace of mind. After all, the chi in his body is distributed unevenly and it feels as if it was divided in two. Moreover, the hero said that his balance of mind is getting worse. The master answered him that it should be so. After all, the hero's inner space will inevitably decrease with an increase in the density of chi in this very body. Yun Seo assumed that this meant that he would need to devote more time to the chi accumulation technique. But the master said that this would not be enough. The master said that because the white lightning body art is a chi accumulation technique, the priority is quality over quantity. Therefore, compared to other chi accumulation techniques, this one is less effective at first. However, the efficiency of accumulation will increase after Yun Seo's initiation. The CM accumulated by the art of the white lightning body attracts the surrounding energy. When the total amount of chi reaches a certain level, the efficiency of accumulation also increases. The hero asked the master how much chi he needed to accumulate in order to increase the effectiveness of the technique to the limit. The master was silent for some time, and then decided to voice the disappointing news for the hero. He said it would take a full sixty-year cycle. Yun Seo, of course, initially couldn't believe it. This prompted the hero to think that he would already be a decrepit old man when he accumulated such an amount of chi. The master said that by that time, Yun Seo will already be on par with the strongest fighters of the nine great sects and five great clans. At that moment, Yun Seo was trying to find at least some kind of snag so that he could catch hold of it and ask a good question to the master. He asked his teacher how he managed to accumulate his chi. Hearing the question that the teacher had been waiting for a long time, he took out an object from his inner pocket. Taking it into his hands, Jean threw it straight into the hero's hands. When the hero grabbed it, he immediately asked what it was, since holding it in his hands, Yun So still didn't understand what it was. This item turned out to be a small box containing an elixir. Realizing this, Yun Seo laughed, telling the master that now was not the place to joke. He then said that these days the secret elixirs of Shaolin can hardly be purchased on the market for the price of a plantain. But the teacher told him that in his youth he received this elixir from the great master Yunan. 
After that, the hero was no longer so funny, and he realized that Dugu Wu Jin was talking to him completely seriously. But then he began to rummage through his memories and remembered which of them the name Yun Lun is associated with. It seems that the teacher meant the abbot of the Shaolin Monastery, or, as he was also called Buddha, who ascended to the throne in Izong. Dugu Wu Jin confirmed that this is exactly the case, and Yun Seo is absolutely right. Yun Seo came to the realization that in his hands was the real lesser elixir of the cycle from Abbot Yun and himself. From his past life, he remembered that it was enough to just eat it to get as much chi as a hero could accumulate in half a sixty-year cycle. True, in his case the effectiveness is halved. But what surprised the hero most of all was not how interesting and effective the artifact he was holding in his hands, but what the teacher did in his youth that he was able to get it. Since there was an awkward silent pause, after a short time Dugu Wu Jin told the student that if he did not like the gift, he could give it back. The hero quickly approached the master, kicked him in a friendly manner with his elbow, and said that he didn't even know that Dugu was so impatient. Then he bowed and said that he would never forget about this deed of the master. After he made this bow, Doug Jean noticed that a smile appeared on his face. It seemed that he was very pleased with the gift. But the master also thought that this smile was forced, and most likely did not convey gratitude, but happiness for being able to receive such an important thing for free. While the hero was examining this elixir, the master told him that although he had helped with mastering the art of the white lightning body, there was still one more question. Dugu Wu Jin said that his intention to end the school's legacy did not change after this. And as soon as he finished the sentence, the hero immediately said that the master should not worry about it. After all, all he cares about is becoming stronger using this technique. This meant that the hero did not intend to transfer these techniques to anyone. At first the master's face was confused, but then he was satisfied with the student's answer, and he realized that they had agreed. Dugu Wu Jin thanked Yun Seo for understanding him and is ready to make concessions with the teacher. After a very short time, the hero was already training with his teacher in the yard. At the beginning, they practiced different techniques to understand which one would be the easiest for the hero. The Thunder Fist allowed Yun Seo to materialize lightning with one blow, and over time, Yun Seo began to succeed. He noticed that when repeating after the teacher, lightning began to ooze from his fist. When they consolidated the progress, they moved on to the wandering cloud technique, which allows them to be absolutely silent and leave no traces behind. To demonstrate that this technique is very useful and often helpful, the teacher walked through a long pile of leaves. When he walked over it, he didn't make a single sound. Then he ordered the student to repeat the same thing after him. Yun Seo used this technique and also proceeded to take a few steps across the pile of leaves. But as soon as he took the first step, both the hero himself and the teacher heard how many sounds there were because of this step. Hearing a rather loud sound, Dugu Wu Jin shouted very loudly, signaling to the student that he needed to repeat it again. Also, during one of the training sessions, Yun Seo was required to lie on the floor in the middle of the forest for a long time, and always at night. The hero understood that these were the very basics of martial arts, but as practice showed, they should never be neglected. He thought that the Thunder Fist would become a technique with which he could replace 1,000 azure arms. Plus, the Wandering Cloud and the Phantom Step have quite similar properties. And for him, this meant that the Wandering Cloud technique would help him strengthen the Ghost Step. He thought about all this while lying on the cold floor. But after some time, the master told him that the training was over for today and they needed to return. Since it was very boring to lie down, the student pushed off the ground and straightened up, standing with his feet on the ground. Walking home from this forest, every time they talked about something. Mostly these were everyday topics, like what the lady will cook for dinner today. This is how day after day passed. The student lived practically in the same building with Dugu Jin's entire family. Thanks to this, he never thought about food, since there was always plenty of it here and it was of excellent quality, since Jean's wife did the cooking. Due to the nature of the white lightning body art, it was difficult for the hero to use Chi before he had strengthened his foundation. All this time, Yun Seo simply trained his body and developed his endurance. He always had dinner in the house, but ordinary daily meals took place in the dining room, and one day he saw a note that interested him on the edge of the table, and there someone wrote that in two days they should meet in the northern slums in the capital. It was also written there that the information is absolutely classified and no one can be brought in. 
Since the hero read this after he had eaten, he put the spoon on the table and thought that finally, after three months, they made an appointment with him. It is obvious that this message was sent to him from the house society. Coming out of the dining room, he walked and thought that perhaps they wrote to him only now because an internal conflict had flared up between them. After all, there is a possibility that house society wishes him harm. A method for curing obsession a powerful trump card that Yong Nesio can use for negotiations. Well, it's also worth considering that this may not be enough to ensure the personal safety of the hero. If they force him to cure possession and then decide that he needs to be killed, then the hero will have no way to defend himself. After the incident with the bloodthirsty ghostly in demon, he realized that his knowledge from his previous life was not a panacea for his problems. And he must always be prepared for sudden changes. Since he could not use his chi until the foundation of the white lightning body art had solidified, the hero was now almost completely helpless. This only meant that caution would definitely not be superfluous at this stage of his life. Arriving at this place and taking a good look around, he thought that he had been invited to a rather secluded place, which prompted him to ask what house society had in mind. While he was here and looking around, he suddenly heard someone on the left side calling him by name. They were three men two of whom were dressed in a black robe, and one in a blue robe. They said that they were ordered to escort Yun Seo. The hero did not look scared. Rather, his look could be described as indifferent and calm. These men took him to a building that was nearby, and after going inside they led the hero to the farthest room of this building. Then the man who was dressed in blue asked the hero to go into this room. Sniffing, the hero felt that the room he was walking into emitted a very bright smell. It looked like a strange incense smell was tickling his nose. But when he opened the door, he saw a lot of people in front of him. The entire room was filled with warriors who were dressed in black robes and hid their faces under masks. Having looked closely and analyzed each of them, he noticed that almost all of them had serious and non-serious wounds from swords. Yun Seo Woon concluded that most likely they were recently ambushed. But what was much more important was that on the bed in the corner of this room lay some kind of body that very much resembled something human. This was the junior disciple of the head of the house society, and in this lifeless body it was difficult to recognize a fifteen-year-old girl. Seeing her, the hero immediately took a few steps forward and said that he would now begin treatment. But at that same second, one of the warriors whom he had not even seen initially sent a stream of energy in his direction, which Yun Seo managed to dodge. This energy flew past and hit the wall right behind the hero. Yun So asked the soldiers what they were doing. The one who sent this energy directly to Yun So ordered him not to move. He said that they were ambushed on the way to this house. The hero answered the warrior that they look appropriate, but he has no idea what he has to do with this. The warrior told the hero that those who ambushed and attacked them knew their identities. Yun Seo said that it's just stupid if the warriors think that he set some bandits against a group of warriors, to which he was told that only Yun Seo had information about where and when the warriors would move and what their goal was. At the same second, the heroes cried out that this was simply an absurd assumption, since he did not know when and where they would be heading from. The warriors were silent for a few seconds, and then said that all the same, Yun Seo needs an eye and an eye only because he knows the secrets of their society. The boy told one of the warriors that they themselves called him here to conclude a deal despite this fact, which meant that the hero had no reason to ambush them. Then one of the warriors asked the hero not to take them for idiots, because according to Yong So, the book that causes possession was written by the current leader of the demonic sect. And accordingly, they all concluded that the hero is somehow connected with the patriarch of the demonic sect. The hero silently looked into his eyes and he himself thought that someone had set up an ambush, and also pointed out to the soldiers the connection with the sect. The situation is set up in such a way that anyone would suspect him of everything. The one who caused the junior disciple of the head of house society to fall victim to the curse, the heavenly demon. He must have set up the ambush when he realized his plan had gone awry. House society also rarely shares information with outsiders. If the heavenly demon became aware of today's meeting, then there is a traitor in house society. Who would have thought that a professional spy for a demonic sect was hiding among the members of house society? The hero realized that almost certainly the obsession of a 15-year-old girl was also the work of this spy. The warrior with whom the hero had spoken before said that judging by Yun Seo's silence, he hit the nail on the head. 
but the hero replied that he had nothing to do with the demonic sect. Then one of the warriors took out his sword and said that his words proved absolutely nothing to him. Yun Seo did not take out his sword, but offered to talk after he healed the student. After all, she already had one foot in the grave. The warrior first thought, and then said that they could not trust her life in his hand, so they would take the boy hostage and make a deal with the heavenly demon. Such absurdity made Yun Seo very angry, and because of this he did not know what to say. He shouted that he was saving the student's life in exchange for information that Hao's society could provide him. So the warriors should drop all baseless accusations and move forward. After all, the hero's patience is great, but by no means unlimited. Then the warrior who stood closest to him ordered not to touch the lady. He also added to his remark, saying that he had already seen the level of the hero's skills, but as a group they would still cope with him. They began to come closer and closer to the hero, when suddenly he suddenly said that he did not want to bring the situation to this decision. The warrior began to wake up in the ceiling right on top, and something began to fly out from there. This something or someone was very huge in size, which created a huge flow of air and dust. Every single warrior was in shock, because they did not understand what would happen next, and who was under the ceiling all this time. Through the flow of wind they saw that someone's legs were sticking out of a hole in the ceiling. A few seconds later, Jean's bow dropped from this hole. And all the warriors realized that this character mastered the air approach technique, an art that allows him to glide in the air. And at that very moment they realized that this warrior was a great master. Dugu Eugene stood next to the boy and decided to ask him what he should do next. Since they didn't discuss it before, he said that he is a client of the house society so there is no need to kill anyone, but simply to pacify their ardor. Then he pointed to the bed on which the girl was lying, and the hero said that this is their goal, so they need to make sure that she doesn't get hit. Dugu Wu Jin listened to all these wishes and told the hero that he understood everything. All the warriors were ready for battle. Although they were surprised by the capabilities of their enemy, they were definitely not going to give up. The hero asked, if possible, to neutralize all the soldiers but not to kill anyone. And he also repeated once again that the patient should also not be touched, or even hurt in any way. Dugu Wu Jin said that he would try, and immediately after this phrase, all the warriors drew their swords and were ready to attack. They rushed towards the master, and everyone shouted in unison about the need to protect the mistress. But Wu Jin only stood still, and a few seconds later he moved his index finger, which created a vortex in the room, which confused the warriors. Then the flow of this air became more curved, and the hero realized that the master had pressed on their pressure points with just one flow of air, rendering them harmless. It all looked very professional. At one point in the video, almost all the warriors stopped at that moment, as they could no longer move. Due to the fact that they did not even have the strength to stand, after a few seconds they all fell to the floor, and Wu Jin, in turn, began to approach the rest of the enemies. I was close enough and all the remaining warriors decided to almost simultaneously jump in his direction in order to carry out the expected but strong attack. This situation made the master tense a little, but in general he already knew how it would end and what needed to be done. It was as if he had teleported from the point where he was standing, and while in the air, he struck several blows to each of the warriors. Having dealt with those who were in the air, he moved to the last warrior who was standing by the bed. It happened so quickly that the warrior didn't even have time to do anything. Touching the forehead of the last enemy, the warrior quietly said that he could not move. And Dugu Jin, in turn, said that he had neutralized all opponents. The hero noticed that this all happened very quickly and professionally, as always with a master. The warrior who was paralyzed and frozen in one position said that he would not be able to get away with it. After all, if the head of society becomes aware of everything, the executioners will remove his head from his shoulders. The heroes approached him point blank and said that his friends simply knocked everyone out in order to provide the promised help, madam. He then ordered all the soldiers to stand and watch. And it sounded quite comical, considering that this was all they had to do at that moment. Yong So came as close as possible to the bed on which this girl was lying. On the small table next to her, he saw one of the five martial arts books written by the leader of the demonic sect. Specifically, it was a book about the art of great divine unity. Taking it in his hands and opening it, 
the hero realized that he had in his hands the culprit of an outbreak of an unknown disease among the most prominent persons of the Murima Alliance. And she looked exactly the same as he remembered her. After running his eyes over several pages, after a few seconds he closed it very loudly. Then he slowly turned his gaze towards the girl and decided to begin the healing procedure. Fortunately for everyone, the tissue on her hands has not yet undergone necrosis. Because if everything had been different, the hero would have achieved little. Looking into her dead eyes, the hero thought that if he forcibly brought her into creation, it could cause side effects. But there was no other choice. There, touching this girl's wrist with his two fingers, blue energy began to appear around his palm and arm. After that, a moment later, something began to glow in the girl's eyes, and her veins also began to shine through her gray skin. Paralyzed wars screamed towards the hero, asking what Yun Seo was going to do to her. But the hero knew well that obsession cannot be overcome unless there is the will of the patient himself. This meant that Yun Seo had no other option. Therefore, he began to lift the girl's body with his own hands slowly. He told the girl that he would now help her sit down. From the outside it looked like the boy was pulling a corpse in different directions. Having placed his body in a sitting position, he asked the lady if she could hear him. Seeing the pupils in her eyes, he said that they didn't have much time, so the girl should listen to him more carefully. He then ordered the circulation of Chi to begin along the path he would indicate. Placing his palm on an area of her back, he said that she was strictly forbidden to stop the process or lose consciousness. After he placed this palm... It became clear to him that the chi concentration had dried up, and the acupuncture points were narrowed and filled with cloudy chi. Yun Seo also understood that if there was a problem during circulation, he would be branded a spy of the demonic sect and how society would haunt him until the end of his days. Duga Eugene asked the boy if he could help him with anything. The hero replied that it is still difficult for him to explain everything, but now only he can help this girl. Then the master noticed that a small smile appeared on the hero's face, after which he said that the genie's arc should not be worried, because he does not overwork himself. The master was satisfied with this answer, and he continued to observe the process. The reason why the girl is struck by obsession is the chi accumulation technique described in the book. The head of the demonic sect put a fatal flaw into it. Even experienced craftsmen are unable to notice this defect. Unbeknownst to the victim, when this technique is used, dark energy is also accumulated along with chi. It is this dark energy that ultimately leads the victim to obsession. The method of healing this obsession itself is extremely simple. It consists of replacing an inferior technique for accumulating chi with a technique devoid of defects, known only to the heavenly demon and his disciples. The victim will also need to completely remove all dark energy that remains from the body. This time the girl managed to overcome the obsession due to her unshakable will. After all the manipulations done, Jean approached the hero and said that the work was done perfectly. Yun Seo, in turn, replied that this was all only due to the fact that the master neutralized the members of house society. Both the master and the hero had already managed to enjoy the victory, when suddenly he felt a strange smell. This strange and disgusting smell came from the girl, due to the dark energy that was leaving her body. Moving aside some of the clothing that was on his body, the hero decided that it was necessary to cleanse it of dark energy before this energy penetrates the body again. Such actions on the part of the hero slightly confused Master Dugu Wujin. The paralyzed warrior tried to shout to Yun Seo what he was trying to do to the lady. Even the master had doubts, so he asked if he could cleanse it of dark energy in this way. But the hero shouted to them a little angrily that now was not the place or time for such disputes. He was haunted by the fact that if dark energy penetrated the girl's body again, the effectiveness of all treatment would be reduced by half. I remove the dark energy and drive it away. He noticed a mole on this girl's collarbone. It seemed familiar to him. Why did he lower his gaze and see a rather deep scar on the side of the body or something lying on the bed? The master could no longer see anything as he stood with his back to the bed. But after a few minutes Jean heard the hero say that he had ended with healing. Yun Seo began to go somewhere with Dugu, and told the warriors that obsession could not be completely cured in one approach. So, for a complete recovery, the girl needs to be brought to the appointed place which he will inform. The warrior still had a lot of questions, but while the hero was leaving, he decided to ask just one. He was wondering how Yun Seo was connected to the demonic sect, 
and he answered him that he was definitely not a member of a demonic sect. But realizing that such an answer would definitely not reassure the warriors, and especially the heads of house society, he decided to add an explanation of how he managed to cure possession. The hero said that being a person who knows the value of information better than most, a warrior should not try to extract it from a client for free. By this time, Yun Seo had almost completely left the room, and it looked quite strange that all the paralyzed warriors were looking after him. He said that if the head returns, then the warriors are obliged to tell him that he is in his debt for the misunderstanding that happened in this room. The master and Yun Seo left this building and began to walk together towards the house. The hero thanked Jean for his help, saying that if it weren't for him, he would have had a very hard time. But the master said that it was not difficult for him. For Yun Seo, the current situation was very unusual and strange, and because of this, he lowered his head from the throne and behaved. The problem was that he didn't even know where to start the explanation, because during this meeting the master learned a lot about the hero, and obviously he had a lot of questions. The hero's head was haunted by the thought that he might well consider him a spy of a demonic sect. Or even more, to think that the incident with the kidnapping of his son by the bloodthirsty transparent Yin demon was set up by Yun Seo from the very beginning. While the hero was thinking about this, the master turned to him and asked why he was shifting from foot to foot. The student felt uncomfortable and looked away to the side, asking the master if he was going to ask him a few questions. Dugu Wu Jin did not understand what questions were being discussed, so the hero clarified, saying that these questions could be regarding his relationship with the heavenly demon. And after the boy voiced this, the master suddenly stopped, and this even scared Yanaseo a little. Then he turned very quickly and glared at the hero with a piercing gaze. The emotion on his face became embittered, and he directly asked the disciple if he was a member of the demonic sect. The hero replied that this was not true. He then asked if he was trying to gain his trust by deception. The answer was the same. Jin's face became simpler and more indifferent, and in a completely calm voice he asked the hero what the problem was then. Then he completely sincerely told him that he absolutely believed his student, and believed everything that he himself saw, heard, felt. To say that Yun Seo was stunned and surprised at that moment would be an understatement. The master ordered the student to stop staring and follow him, since he was already hungry. Yun Seo was stupefied since the master was radically different from everyone he had ever known. Maybe he would believe him even if the hero told him the story of his return in time. He wondered whether it would be better to tell him everything as it is, instead of trying to stitch together fictitious stories with white threads. Continuing to walk, the hero decided that one day he would tell about everything. About his past since birth, and how he sees his future. And you will look forward to this moment. A very large amount of time had already passed and in general, the situation in the city was quite quiet. The building in which the training took place was still replenished with its functions and every day Yong visited it. One day, while in one of these buildings, the hero stood with his master Dugu Eugene. He told Yun Seo that since he had already finished strengthening his chi concentration, he would no longer need the master's help in using the accumulation technique. Although the hero was a little upset that now there would be much less teaching from the master, he was glad that he had progressed so quickly. Having made a bow, he began to take something out of his inner pocket. This greatly interested Jean. He took out and showed the master a box containing the very elixir that Duga had given him a long time ago. The master asked the student if he was going to eat all the elixir right away. After all, in order to fully absorb the energy of the elixir, you need to do it differently. Of course, he advised the hero to better prepare himself before he consumed this elixir. But when he opened his eyes after blinking, he saw that Yun Seo already had that same elixir in his mouth, and he was slowly chewing it. The master asked his student if he felt anything after eating the elixir. At this very moment, blue energy began to circulate around Yun's body. Just as the hero expected from the lesser cycle elixir, he received exceptionally powerful energy at that moment. Young Seo realized that he needed to concentrate better in order for the elixir to be better absorbed, so he sat in the lotus position. In his previous life, he had taken elixirs countless times, and remembered that in general this process is quite simple if no one interferes, and the teacher took better care of ensuring that the hero was not distracted than anyone else. Fully concentrated, the energy that was extracted from the hero's body became increasingly stronger. 
Yun Seo promised himself not to miss a single gram of energy from the elixir. He could not think about anything other than the energy he received from this elixir. This flow of qi made his heart beat much faster. It seemed that at this moment, under the influence of the elixir, the hero felt the effect of the white lightning body art. The realization has come that his veins are able to withstand the energy of the small elixir of the cycle. Then Yun Seo thought for a while, and then decided to take a rather risky step. He specially directed all his concentration towards causing himself physical suffering. Because of this, the energy around him became darker and more purple in color. Dugu Wu Jin looked at him and realized that his student wanted to use a process also called conducting energy through the middle meridians. The hero did not suffer for long, because after a few minutes he exhaled all the air from his lungs very loudly. It seemed that this air even had a blackish color. All this time, Dugu Wu Jin stood at a short distance and made sure that he did not suddenly feel ill. Then he took in new air inside himself, and the energy in the circle of his body again became a light blue color. Power filled his young body. After a few more moments he stood up from the lotus position, and the energy gradually absorbed into his skin. When he completely shook off all the dust and straightened his legs, he decided to demonstrate the strength that he had gained. At that moment, Jung thought that it would be best to demonstrate all this by using the technique that the master had shown him not so long ago. While using this technique, he felt how much stronger he had become, and at that moment he realized that the elixir had indeed worked. He sent a powerful fist of thunder straight into the concrete wall that was a short distance from them. Even Doug Wu Jin himself was very surprised when he saw the result of his student's blow on the wall. Such a powerful attack created a huge hole in the wall. The master said that something like this couldn't help but impress. Bend his arm at the elbow. Yun Seo thought that now he will not get injured even when using advanced techniques. He again bowed to his master and once again thanked him for introducing him all this time and teaching him everything he knows. Dugu Wu Jin listened to him, after which he invited the hero to go with him to the Tam clan as soon as he finished absorbing the energy of the elixir. It's not to say that Yun Seo was unhappy with this. It was not clear to him why they should go there. Especially the two of us. But the master decided not to reveal all the cards at once. So, leaving to the side, he told the student that he would tell about all the details later. Now, when the teacher did not want to share the details about the visit to the Tang clan, the hero was already a little nervous and worried because of this. While they were practicing the effects of the elixir, it was already late at night, and Yun Seo headed to his home. Moving along the dark street, he thought that half of the sixty-year cycle was already behind which meant that there was only half of the 60th cycle left to accumulate qi. Well, while the hero was thinking about plans for the future, he very suddenly felt someone's presence behind him. Considering the late hour, it became obvious to him that someone was following him. But it scared him that he didn't even notice how he came so close. Taking hold of the handle of your ball, he thought that the skills of the one who was watching were so good that he would not have noticed his presence if not for the enhanced perception of qi. It was decided to use one of the techniques in order to move his body in the direction desired by the hero. The one who was watching him all the time from around the corner noticed that the target had disappeared, and it seemed that it had moved somewhere. And within seconds the hero's sword was near the throat of the girl who was watching him. Immediately he asked the mysterious spy who he was and who he worked for. The girl told him that she tried to hide her presence, because she didn't think that he would notice her so quickly. But Yong So was indifferent to this remark, so he moved the blade of his sword even closer to the girl's throat, and said that until she introduced herself, he intended to consider her an enemy. The young girl said that she was offended because the hero did not recognize her right away. After which Yun Seo asked if they knew each other. The spy replied that before they had only seen each other in an official setting. With the index finger of her left hand, she began to pull the mask off her face saying that she believed that she and the hero were quite close. Having completely removed and thrown the mask at the hero, she said that he even saw her naked once. At this moment, almost everything came together in Yun Seo's head, but he was still not entirely sure. But when I looked at the girl's collarbone and saw a familiar mole, I immediately understood everything. He began to sheathe his sword, and at the same time the girl said that they had not seen Yun So on for a long time. Despite the unexpected meeting, the hero's face was still stern. He said that it seems that the girl is already much better. 
after which he asked why she came here. Taking a few steps towards the hero, she said that first of all she wanted to express her gratitude to him for saving him. Passing by, she picked up the mask that had been lying on Yanesio's shoulder all this time, and added that if it weren't for him, she would not have been alive a long time ago, and how society would have had a hard time. But to Yanesio it sounded suspicious, if only because it took a whole year to say thank you to the girl. But upon hearing this, the girl immediately apologized, saying that she could not do this earlier since she needed to devote all her time to recovery. He also didn't like the fact that how society just sent her here to say thank you. Therefore, he once again asked her what the purpose of his arrival was. The girl's face became more serious, and she answered the hero that she had come with a very lucrative offer. She supplemented her remark by saying that she promised that he would not regret it if he agreed to devote a little time to her. The hero's face was much more serious, and he asked the girl to move closer to the essence of the conversation. Looking away to the side, she said that it seems that Hao's company did not make the best impression on Yun Seo Wun. Yun Seo's voice became a little more angry, and he said that Hao's society suddenly attacks him, leaves the day as soon as he loses his advantage, and only contacts him when they need him, and therefore he does not see a single reason why he should trust this society. The girl began to apologize again this time for an incident that happened two years ago, arguing that for some reason she could not come earlier. But the hero interrupted her, saying that she didn't have to come in person then. After all, people like him know well that members of house society are everywhere, and in almost every clan and sect there is at least one of their representatives. At that moment, Young So remembered that even when he was in the dining room, there was a person who put a note from house society on the edge of his table. While he was remembering this, the girl said that she had sent people to contact him. But it happened so Dugu Wu Jin's teacher stopped the person she sent to him. To express the gratitude of the house society, apologize and give compensation, they sent a person who was intercepted by the teacher. The girl also said that the teacher told her not to look for the hero until he gave his permission, since then Young So was going through an important stage of training. That's why she waited. The hero realized that most likely the teacher was trying to protect his student from the slightest danger until he finished assimilating the lesser elixir of the cycle. Also realizing that it would be nice if the teacher told the hero about this, Yanisio said that it seems that there was a misunderstanding between him and the house society. The girl said that she was glad that this misunderstanding was resolved. And now she would like to convey a message from the entire society to Hao. They want to establish friendly relations with Yun Seo. Then she suggested discussing some details in the house of the heavenly world two days later, in the evening. And the hero could not but agree. After the hero agreed, the girl smiled and said that they had a famous courtesan working for them, who was called the Heavenly Maiden. The girl offered her to the hero as an escort. But without hesitation for a second, Yun Seo refused this offer, saying that he was not interested in her at all. The smile disappeared from the girl's face. She turned her back to the hero and said that he was very boring for his age. A moment later, her body began to evaporate until it disappeared completely. But during this state, she managed to tell Yun Seo that they would meet in two days. When she disappeared, the hero realized that now he could not even feel her chi. She seems to have such skills at a young age, even despite the inevitable academic lag due to her obsession. It became clear why the elite of Hao's society valued and protected her so much. Two days later, the hero moved to the place that he and the girl had discussed for a meeting. There were a lot of wonderful and beautiful women here. There were special tables on the streets that were placed by the owners of tea houses so that the especially rich could sit here on the street and drink tea while enjoying the city. Yun Seo walked along this street and was wondering what Hao's society had in store for him. After walking through several blocks of tea houses and brothels, he came to the house of the heavenly world. Before going inside, Yun Seo stood near the door to this establishment, and once again thought about what interesting house society had prepared for him this time. After a few seconds of hesitation, he walked inside and the first thing he saw was countless women sitting with men and drinking sake. There were a lot of people here and the hero even initially thought that he was either in the wrong building or in the wrong time. He stood not far from the entrance, and, looking around, thought that this was a large enough establishment even for Hao's society. While he was looking around, he felt and heard that someone approached him and welcomed him into the establishment. 
This was an unearthly beauty girl who introduced herself with the name Bekhayan, and said that she would see Yanisio. Due to the fact that the hero was silent, he was easily able to hear that everyone who was in this room noticed that the heavenly maiden herself had descended to the first floor in person. All the men were wondering who this guy is since she is meeting him. But Jung thought only that he had directly told that girl that he was not interested in this courtesan. Seeing that the guest had a tense face, the heavenly virgin asked him if he felt uncomfortable being with her. Yun So replied that it was so. He explained his position with the theme that he doesn't want to attract unnecessary attention, so the heavenly maiden should call someone else. An inconspicuous man came down from the stairs and showed the way. The hero at this time was thinking about what should be. Society thus expresses its gratitude. But Yun Seo didn't want to draw attention to his person unless absolutely necessary since the teacher may have problems if his identity becomes known. Moreover, Yun Seo caught himself thinking that if he had known in advance that something like this would happen, he would have put on a mask from the very beginning. The man stopped and pointed with his hand at the door to one of the rooms. The hero opened it and took a few steps inside. In front of him was a girl who was dressed in a festive attire and a translucent mask. She greeted the guests and invited him to sit down at the table. Without thinking for a long time, he moved away and sat down on the first chair he came across. Due to the fact that no one spoke in the room, the hero had time to think. He still couldn't get out of his head the thought that literally two days ago he told the girl that he didn't need courtesans. But suddenly the girl who was in front of him took off her mask and said that this time, before starting a conversation, she would introduce herself in a proper way. Her name was Zhang Jie Riyong, and she apologized again and said that on behalf of the house society, she apologizes for the incident that happened in the past. Moreover, she took off the transparent mask completely and thanked the hero, calling him her savior. Yun Seo asked her if she should have taken off the veil, given the specifics of the work of house society. But Chung Jie said that openness towards the interlocutor is the basic rules of decency, adding that especially Yun Seo has already videoed her face many times, so focusing on this is inappropriate. The hero was silent for a while, after which he said that Yung Jie Ryung shouldn't be so polite since it doesn't suit her. The youngest student of society leader Hao laughed and said that she thought so too. Returning to the topic, Yun Seo said that it is not typical for the top of society for Hao to reveal his identity to anyone. And it was strange that the youngest student of the head did not care about this rule. And even during their meeting two days ago, she still showed her face just like that. Chung Jie stood up from the table and said that the hero was right. Without permission from the head of the company, she is not allowed to disclose her personal information, except for those cases when in this way you can gain Yen SEO's trust. Adding that, in fact, her face is still hidden behind a mask of makeup. The emotion on the hero's face did not change, and he said that Yung Jie Ryong needs to stop talking nonsense. The girl said it sounded very rude. Sitting down on the chair again, she leaned her elbows on its back and said that it was obvious that she had permission from the head. Because he wants to make amends for a small incident. The hero immediately asked what the house society wanted to offer him. The youngest student of the leader of the society, Hao, in turn, noticed that Young So is very impatient. Having created a bunch of pathos around the following phrase, the girl said that from that moment on she was Yun Seo's messenger. Expecting a violent reaction, the younger student fell silent and looked into Yen Seo's eyes. But the hero did not react at all. After a few seconds of silence, he asked if this was all I wanted to say. The girl immediately screamed that this reaction was unacceptable. She said that the heroes have no idea how rare it is that society provides not a large company, but an ordinary person with a personal messenger. She also added that now he will be able to receive the necessary information without the need to visit the company in person each time. In addition, his messenger is also a high-ranking member of society, but this did not surprise the hero at all. After some time, the girl, having given all the reasons, gave up and lowered her head. Then she said that the head decided to treat the hero specially, despite the fact that many did not like this idea. So Yun Seo should at least pretend to be flattered. In response, the hero simply remained silent and said absolutely nothing to the girl, looking into her eyes. Looking at the cup of poured tea that was standing on the table, he said that with the information, now everything will be simpler. 
But obviously there is a reason why Yung Jie came here in person. The younger students said that they already knew each other a little. And if the society had sent someone else, then this person would have had to get up to speed much longer. She also said that the most important thing is that she and the hero are already so close, even though they met only a couple of days ago. Yun Seo replied that apart from the first day, he didn't even touch her during the treatment. After thinking a little, Chung Jie Ryong said that be that as it may, the hero has the right to refuse if he is not satisfied with the younger student, and it seems to him that he is being watched. Yong Seo, without thinking twice, said that he was satisfied with the terms of this deal. Looking at the girl, he only thought that he had no reason to refuse. Since information from the house society is very expensive, from them he will be able to learn about what has changed since his previous life. In addition, the hero will be able to control information. The girl ran up to the hero and tapped him on the shoulder, saying that he had made the right choice. But at that time Yun Seo was thinking that he was not sure whether the head of the society introduced his student to him only as a thank you to him. After all, one should not reject the possibility that the head of the society had some kind of ulterior motive. Coming closer to Yong So, the girl asked if this was enough to repay him for his help. The hero answered positively. After answering, Yung Jie Ryung extended her hand to him and said that she would be glad to work with Yun Seo An. They shook hands and the hero told her that he would also be happy to work with her. Some time passed and the hero returned to his training at school. To be more precise, twenty days have passed since the meeting with Jie Ryung. Since then, he hasn't heard anything about her at all. When he was walking after another training session, the thought came to his mind that perhaps the head of the society had changed his mind. Suddenly, a group of students stood on his way, standing very close to each other and loudly offering something. The boys asked some girl if she was free on the weekend and if she wanted to have lunch with him. Another suggested having lunch at a place he knows. Coming closer to this company, he heard that all the boys were looking at some girl and admiring her beauty. A girl who had been studying at this school for a long time noticed that the new girl had become the master's second student, although she came to this place only five days ago. Young Seo was very surprised when he heard this. After all, it was very rare for someone to actually achieve the status of a master's student. He did not understand for what purpose and who came to their school. But while he was thinking about it, he noticed that this new girl was running towards him. She picked up quite an impressive speed and ran towards the group of teenagers, shouting in a joyful voice. When she got close enough, she called Young So by name, addressing him as brother. At that moment, he turned his head in her direction to understand who she was and how she knew him. In front of him was Young Jie Ryung. The hero still couldn't understand what she forgot here. After all the other students ran away, Yun Seo decided to talk to her face to face. The girl told him all the details but he still decided to ask again. Is it true that the master allowed her to settle after she told him that she had become the hero's liaison? The youngest student of society leader house said that the hero was absolutely right, and Dugu Jin really did that. Yun Seo then asked the girl to stop calling him brother since Zhang Jie didn't actually study here. The student was upset but agreed. After that, they both became silent so Yun Seo decided to approach the stand with a weapon and ask the girl to leave because he needed to practice. While waiting for this remark, Chung Jie suggested that they spar with him. After all, a duel with an expert like her would be much better than regular training. The heroes thought. He almost instantly realized that most likely the girl was trying to understand what he was capable of, and he was not at all against this arrangement. On the contrary, the idea seemed good to him. After all, Yun Seo didn't have to fight against strong warriors after that fight with the bloodthirsty ghost Dean demon. The girl picked up her sword, and at that moment the hero thought that it would be interesting to find out how much stronger he had become, and how strong the student of the head of the house society was. Pointing the sword in her direction, Yun Seo told the girl that she could start the fight, to which Yun Jie Ryung only smiled and advised the hero not to yawn, and this phrase made sense. Since Yun Seo didn't even notice how the girl pushed off from the ground and in half a second was already in the air behind his shoulders. But this was not surprising for the hero. He should have expected his opponent to be quite fast, so he took action. Using the movement technique, he moved in the air directly behind the girl's back and was ready to strike her with a sword. But at the very last second she managed to parry this blow, 
after which she bounced several meters away from her opponent. They both decided to take a break, so they just looked at each other in silence for a while. Yun Seo expressed his admiration for the fact that the girl managed to dodge in a split second. Yung Jie, in turn, simply silently looked at the hero and thought that most likely none of her peers were a match for her. Having motivated herself with this, she immediately pushed off the ground and attacked the hero, but he managed to parry the blow with his sword using his blade. After this, the girl again struck a horizontal blow, but Yong very quickly ducked to dodge it. Inflicting more and more blows, Chong Jie could not understand why she could not even scratch the hero. The hero stepped a few meters and asked the girl if she was still tired of inflicting so many attacks. In response, the junior disciple of the Ha Society leader decided to give it her all in this case. And as soon as she made this decision, she began to glow bright red. This energy allowed her to strike with even greater speed, but it did not leave so that the hero could use the Moon Shadow Sword of the Third Phase. As soon as the girl got as close as possible to Yenisio, he struck the full moon directly at her opponent's sword. The girl felt that her blade broke in the place where the hero hit. I understand that now she has no weapon. Chong Jie jumped to the side in order to think about further tactics. But it seems that it was already too late to think about something, since the weapon was destroyed and she had nothing to fight with. And Yun Seo, in turn, straightened his sword to the side. Chung Jie looked at the hero with admiration and asked him out loud whether it was true that he was the same age as her. Realizing the interest of this question, the hero simply looked at the girl in silence. She never received an answer. Having fallen to the floor, Chung Jie said that it seemed to her that among her peers she had no equal in battle. And this fight was a blow to her pride. Yun Seo told her that this arrogance is quite dangerous and could lead to her death in a real fight. The girl noticed that the hero might not have talked about it, asking who, in his opinion, of their age could show a decent result in a fight with Yun Seo. But the hero, without thinking twice, answered her that no one could compare with him, especially since this opponent was the same age as him. He also added that although the outcome of a real fight is difficult to predict, he simply cannot lose to his enemy. Then the hero was silent for some time. At that moment he remembered his past life. After all, even then, none of his peers could defeat him. Yun Seo lived in a world where the only rule was kill or die. Therefore, he cannot lose to those who grew up and studied in greenhouse conditions. Chung Jie, hearing how self-confident the hero was, asked why he didn't want to participate in the Fiery Phoenix Tournament. This tournament was a large-scale competition of the Orthodox faction, in which the most prominent representatives of the righteous clans and sects measured their strength. And such a proposal was very interesting to Yenisio, because before he had not thought about such options at all. But it seems that the girl was much more interested in this than the hero himself. Since she was very active visually in showing it, she ran around Yenisio all the time and asked every few seconds if he was really going to participate. But after a few seconds of thought, Yun Seo just raised his head and thanked the girl for such an interesting offer. Without notifying her of his decision, he soon turned around and said that he needed to go train further. Yung Jie Ryung was very angry when the hero did this, because she thought that the duel with her could not be called training. She decided that running after him would be unnecessary, but still shouted after him, trying to get either answers or force the hero to stay here. A few days later, Yun Seo Woon walked alone through the forest. He did it slowly because he had plenty of time. But while walking, he suddenly felt someone's presence in the bushes nearby. So he said in a loud voice that he just wanted to have lunch with the master. Chung Jie, who at that very second jumped out of the bushes, said that she was also invited to this dinner. The girl also added that this was a great opportunity to learn more about the teacher, since she was very interested in this. Increasing her speed, she soon overtook the hero and said that since he did not answer her questions about the master, she would have to find out on her own. Young Seo realized that for a member of Hao's society such a line of thought was quite expected. After walking a few more meters, the girl decided to ask Yen Seo another question. She asked why he didn't just tell her everything. And specifically, she was interested in why a warrior of this level should work with a teacher of an ordinary martial arts hall. But Yun Seo Woon calmly replied that it was none of her business. In response, Chung Jie just waved her hands and noted that both the teacher and the student were a complete mystery. After that they were silent the whole way. 
This gave the hero the opportunity to think and remember that Duga moved to Jean after the kidnapping of his son. Because the heavenly king of evil will not stop searching for Duga Song, who possesses the Yin heavenly body. The master decided that the only safe place was Mount Qingqing, where the monastic order of the same name was located. And when the hero and Chong Jie got to this place, a few minutes later they already sat down at the table and had dinner with their family. The girl constantly praised the lady because the food was very tasty. And Dugu Wu Jin's wife noticed that Jie Ryan just showers him with compliments. But in general, the atmosphere at the table was quite friendly, as everyone was eating and talking about something. The exceptions were Doug Wu Jin and Yun Seo, and when the master realized that something was wrong, he immediately got up from the table. Everyone noticed this, and the wife asked her husband where he was going. Dugu Wu Jin said that it was a good day today, so he decided to serve liquor. The hero, seeing an opportunity, offered to walk with him. At first, Jean didn't answer at all, but simply looked silently with his peripheral vision in the direction of the hero. He then nodded and told young Seo Woon that he could do whatever he wanted. When he arched, Jean opened the doors to the building he was about to enter. The hero asked why he suddenly wanted to drink liquor if he had never drunk. The master replied that it was not that he never drank. I just opened the bottle only on rare occasions. Hearing this, Yun Seo decided to make a very bold assumption. He said that perhaps the master feels guilty before his family. Hearing this, the teacher thought and was surprised. For a few more seconds he didn't know what to say to this. Lost in thought, he squeezed the door handle very tightly. The hero was even a little scared when he saw that his master was caught in a stupor. After thinking a little, Jean said that his wife had to sacrifice a lot for him. He wanted his wife to always live in luxury. But unfortunately life doesn't care at all about the master's wishes. At that moment, Young understood everything. He can ensure the safety of his wife and son from the demonic sect only if he does not leave them one step at a time. Although it was for their own good, he actually locked his family on an almost uninhabited mountain. And he trains his son with all seriousness, so his soul is not easy. Yun Seo thought that until the heavenly king of evil was killed, or until Duga's son was cured of the Yin heavenly body, the master would not be able to breathe a peaceful sigh. Having scrolled this thought several times in his head, the hero was able to understand a very important detail. He remembered that there is a very interesting method for this. While he was thinking about this, the master left the building holding two bottles of Jujang liquor in his hands. As soon as he completely left, Yong So said that he had not yet given the master a housewarming gift. Ark, Jean said that they moved a long time ago, so it's obvious that the hero is up to something. By this point, Yun Seo already had a plan thought out to the last detail in his head, and he was ready to bring it into reality, which is why a grin appeared on his face. That same night, the hero met the girl and said that he wanted her to convey a message to the head of the Kfoyan trading group. Yun Jie said that although that group was founded recently, it is quickly gaining influence. Yun Seo assured that he would pay her for the work with information. When the girl listened to the hero's instructions, she thought that she would do it out of old friendship. But now she was wondering what kind of information he wanted to repay. Young Seo said with a completely indifferent face that the only son of the head of this group fell victim to possession while studying martial arts. At that moment, the girl realized that this obsession was a much more common phenomenon than she thought, since it became obvious that a demonic sect was also behind this obsession. Having an excellent understanding of this sect, the hero suggested that the girl tell the head of this trading group to find the hero if he wants to save his son. The girl got a little angry and then asked the hero how he knew about this. Obviously, she began to suspect something. Young Jie Ryung, realizing that the hero would not tell her anything, simply said that she didn't care and was not interested in hearing anything about it. Instead, she informed Young that his request would take some time, because the Waiyan group was located in Zhujiang province. But the hero decided that it was worth the wait, given that in the near future the Yen trading group would become the most influential in the central plains. From his previous life, he remembered that the heavenly demon had crushed this group under himself, in return curing his son and its leader from obsession. And the insidious plan was that this time, the person who would cure his son would be Yun Seo himself. Then the Yen trading group will be in his hands, and in addition, the martial art that caused the possession— namely the divine art of the scarlet flame. This flame technique is based on yang energy. 
it can be used to balance the concentrated flow of yin energy in the body of Dooku Sun, who is suffering from the yin celestial body. Everything began to improve for the hero, but one day he heard someone calling him when he was meditating in the evening looking at the city. It was Chong Jie, who quickly jumped onto the platform on which the hero was sitting and asked for help. After she climbed up here, she began to walk towards the hero while saying that the heavenly maiden had been kidnapped. The hero asked Chong Jie if she meant that heavenly maiden from the house of the heavenly world. Since the girl was in a hurry, she asked in a slightly raised voice if the hero knew any other celestial maiden besides that one. But the hero was in no hurry, so he asked why how society cared about her. To which the girl, lowering her eyes, replied that the heavenly maiden is a member of society. Yun Seo suspected this, so he was not surprised and said that it was better for the girl to report this to society and not ask him for help. Chung Jie raised her voice even higher and said that she did not have time to wait for help from society, to which the hero replied that it should not be difficult for a fighter of her level to deal with this situation on his own. But Chung Jie lowered her tone and replied that she would be only too happy to handle everything on her own if that were the case. But she was absolutely not sure that she could win. Yun Seo silently looked into her eyes for several seconds and thought that if Zhang Jie was asking him for help in such a hurry, then obviously the heavenly maiden was highly valued in society. But even these couple of seconds were a lot to think about everything, since the youngest student of the leader of the society loudly asked the hero if he would help. Yun Seo did not think and agreed to help the girl at that very second. She called him to follow her, and a few moments later they were running through the forest pushing off branches to increase their speed. The girl told him that the kidnapper's name was the Sword of the Poisonous Snake, and he was a famous master from the Orthodox faction. She also notified the hero that he had already tried many times to hit on the Heavenly Maiden. Yun Seo was very surprised that one of the Light Ones openly decided to kidnap him. But Chong Jie replied that he is far from the only one, and often those who behave like righteous people in public do evil behind their backs. This prompted the hero to think that even members of a demonic sect are not so two-faced. Then he asked the girl how strong the enemy was in battle. Chong Jie warned that he once managed to win against the Sword of the Plum Blossom from Mount Hua. This is a warrior with the highest level of skills. She added to the description by saying that his style is sharp attacks with a sword, similar to a snake bite. After this description... Young Seo realized that his strength could be compared to a bloodthirsty ghostly demon. The skills of the fighters of the house society, not counting their elite, leave much to be desired. Therefore, they would have a hard time fighting against a master of this level. Running closer to the hero, the girl said that their priority is to return the hostages to safety, so they need to join forces. While she was saying this, she took out a flare from the inside pocket of her clothes and handed it to Yun Seo. The hero took her in his hand, and at that moment Chong Jie said that the one who finds the maiden first must give a signal, after which they will unite and enter into battle. Stopping near the cliff, the hero asked the girl if she expected him to help her for free. Chong Jie told him that she would definitely repay him for his help. After that, the hero asked her if she had a mask with her, since he didn't want to show his face too much in public. Chong Jie asked if the used one would be suitable. Passing her mask into the hands of the hero, the girl said that it would be an indirect kiss. But while putting it on, Young Seo said that he shouldn't worry, since he would put it on the other side and throw it away immediately after use. After that, he pushed away from the place where he was standing and warned the girl that it was starting to take effect. The youngest student of the leader of the society, Hao, followed his example and shouted that the hero every time does whatever comes into his head. At this time, the heavenly maiden was in some dark room and did not feel anything below her neck. She came to the realization that the one who stole her pressed on her paralyzing points. The one who was sitting a short distance from her noticed the movement of the virgin's body and asked if she had woken up. This was precisely the sword of the poisonous snake, the elder of the four poison sect. Although the girl felt weak, she still told the kidnapper that he would really regret what he did. After all, they will soon come for her and release her. But the sword of the poisonous snake said that he did not care, because he would not dare to kidnap without preparing for everything in advance. He boasted to the captive that he was being helped by a master who knew a lot about escapes. Shelter and escape routes had already been prepared for them. Having finished this boast, he bent down to the heavenly maiden, inviting her to surrender. 
Running the back of his hand over her smooth cheek, he invited the captive to accept her fate and become his wife. He stuck out his tongue and licked his upper lip, also inviting her to open her heart to him. The girl, of course, didn't like it, so realizing that the situation was very deplorable, she closed her eyes. Suddenly, a very powerful explosion occurred near the doors to this room, which blew out the doors and created a very huge wave that threw the sword of the poisonous snake a short distance. He jumped back a little and saw someone's silhouette in the hole that was created as a result of the explosion. What he saw next from the poisonous snake's sword surprised him greatly. He witnessed how an unknown masked warrior freed the maiden from paralysis not even with his hands, but with the sheath of his sword. It was at this moment that the realization came to him that this impudent man was quite difficult. The unknown warrior began to draw his sword, at the same time saying that an old man like him not only wanted a young maiden as his wife, but also thought of kidnapping her after he was rejected, and Yun Seo found it very disgusting. After he finished saying this, he drew his sword. At this moment, the elder of the four poison sect was very confident in his abilities, so he asked the hero if he had a last wish. But Yun So told him that he shouldn't be so confident in himself, since he wouldn't be able to kill him. Poisonous Snake Sword took out her sword and began to swing it using one of the techniques. He said that the hero reminds him of a certain monk, who at first defied him, and then begged him on his knees for mercy. The opponent then jumped away from his position and attempted to deliver a pinpoint attack directly to the opponent's head. The blow was so fast that the Virgo, who was on the side at that moment, did not even notice how the sword of the poisonous snake disappeared from the place where it stood. But the hero managed to dodge this blow at the very last moment. Even for Yun Seo it was a very fast attack. But in addition to the fact that the hero managed to dodge this attack, he also pulled out his sword but struck back at the enemy's energy. The sword of the poisonous snake looked at this, and could not understand how such a young warrior managed to block such a blow. Such blocking on the part of the hero forced him to jump back a few meters in order to think about what to do next. But after he saw Yun Seo running towards him with his sword at the ready, he also pushed away from his place, preparing to strike back with his sword. As they ran up to each other, their swords crossed and they struck several times in succession. Everything was blocked. When Yun Seo fought off his attacks, he remembered the girl's words that the enemy would have harsh and sharp attacks, and this prompted him to think that this is not an art that would be taught in some prestigious sect. This style was more like an assassin's skills, honed to perfection through countless battles. Fighting further and further, the hero tried to make the sword of the poisonous snake think that Yun Seo was open to attack. After a few blows, such an opportunity just turned up for the hero. And at that moment the hero decided that he had a great chance to try the art of the white lightning body in a real battle. When he saw that the elder of the four poison sects swung his hand to strike the hero, he responded by jumping back and striking the dancing moon. Using this technique, he decided to mislead the enemy with illusory swords, and then strike a real blow to vital points. Yun Seo, after using this technique, immediately reduced the distance to the enemy, and used the second phase also known as Fatal Moon. But suddenly he felt that his attack was stopped by the enemy's sword, and this confused the hero for a long time. The elder of the four poison sect leaned towards the hero and said that compared to the Plum Blossom sword, he was an ordinary brat. He pushed Yun Seo away, forcing him to retreat. It seems that now no one had an advantage in the battle and everyone was on an equal footing, but the hero already had a backup plan. As it became obvious that his enemy's fighting arts were clearly designed to counter illusory techniques, Yun Seo Wung raised his sword up to move to the eighth phase. This technique is known to ordinary people as Flaming Moon. Thanks to this technique, the hero was able to almost imperceptibly deliver a blow that flew dangerously close to the enemy's throat. And it looks like the blade went straight to the throat, and within a few seconds the head will fly right off the shoulders of the poisonous snake's sword. It was heard that the sword managed to reach his throat, and at that moment Yun So assumed that the battle was over with his victory. But instead, the sword hit the elder of the four poisons sect on the shoulder, as he managed to get out of the weapon's affected area at the last moment. The sword of the poisonous snake concluded that in front of him was an enemy who uses high-speed techniques. If he had been a fraction of a second late, his head would have easily flown off his shoulders. Yun Seo Woon lowered his sword down so quickly that the blood that remained on the blade gushed onto the floor at great speed. 
He told the elder that it seemed that after achieving such heights and swordsmanship, he did nothing but laze around. Also adding that he couldn't even repel the brat's attack, Poison Snake's sword became very angry and used his most powerful technique this time. But since he was furious, he could not control his powers at all. The hero stood at a distance. Therefore, he still had time to think. Plus, everything went according to his plan and the elder had already succumbed to the provocation. Having repelled this attack, Yong So immediately began to move towards the enemy, preparing to finish with him. But for some reason a grin appeared on the elder's face. When he saw that Yunisio had approached him at a distance of one meter, he used a hidden technique, and a second later several short daggers flew towards Yunisio. This sneak attack was truly a surprise for the hero, and he could not have expected this period in the opinion of the elder of the Four Poison sect. The sword of the poisonous snake said that he did not expect anything else from the dropout. But at the very last second, he noticed that the hero had disappeared somewhere away from the flight path of the daggers. All due to the fact that young Seo was at that moment on the left side of the elder. The enemy didn't even manage to turn his head towards young Seo in time, but only his pupils were able to look to the left and identify the oncoming fist. When this fist around which the lightning circulated without stopping came into contact with the enemy's cheek, an explosion was created, which was even more powerful than the one that opened the gate. The hero, in turn, stood still and said that it was very unusual for the master of the bright path to use vile tricks. Why did Yun Seo Woon head towards the poisonous snake's sword until he came within a short distance of it? He made the assumption that these tricks worked on the plum blossom sword. Young Seo Woon could not even think that the enemy would use such a dirty trick. In fact, the hero was dangerously close to death, although he did not want to admit it. Then he began to examine his opponent, who was sitting motionless on the floor, leaning against a rock on which a crack had appeared from the impact on his body. Young Seo noticed an object that was thrown out of his outerwear by the impact. He came even closer and crouched down to take it in his hands, as this piece of wood seemed very familiar to him. Taking this object in his right hand, he began to examine it closely, but when he read the inscription on it, everything immediately became clearer. Everything became even more unclear and the hero could not figure out on his own how it happened that he carries this emblem with him. By pressing on the enemy's painful point, he instantly forced him to regain consciousness and begin to answer the hero's questions. Yonasio showed this emblem to him and asked if he knew what this emblem meant. And where did he get it? In response, the elder of the four and poison sect laughed and said that it seems that Yun Seo is very stupid and naive. The hero replied that he would force him to speak. After that, Yun Seo placed his right hand on the enemy's head, after which he began to feel unbearable pain. Within a second, the sword of the poisonous snake began to scream furiously in pain, but it seems that the hero didn't care and he told him not to be upset if the hero suddenly does not calculate his strength. The elder of the four poison sect realized that this pain did not bring him any harm, so there was no point in enduring it. Because of this, he began to shout that this tablet was given to him by the head of the Souk clan. Hearing the answer that the hero had been waiting for a long time, Yun So let go of his hand, and the enemy said that the Souk clan is a light clan that is spreading its influence over Sichuan. The hero realized that this clan also belongs to the righteous faction, fighting for influence and rubbing shoulders with the detachment of the evil spirit. This created a thousand questions in Yun Seo's head, and the main one was how the head of this clan is connected with the evil spirit squad. The enemy replied that he did not know the details and was simply carrying out orders for them, and I understand that the sword of the poisonous snake most likely does not know the details. Yun Seo decided to ask a simpler question. Is the Souk clan a puppet of a demonic sect that has infiltrated the righteous faction? The poisonous snake sword replied that this was not so. He then added that in his opinion, the head of the Souk clan highly values the demon, and they both use each other to benefit themselves. The elder, defending himself, said that he did not know what exactly they were doing. But the deals are rumored to involve huge sums of money. Then Yun Seo wondered what the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon was doing in Sichuan without the knowledge of the demonic sect. And more and more questions appeared, but it seemed that the hero had no one to ask them. When suddenly he heard that Chong Jie was addressing him, she was already standing with help in the form of two ninjas, and said that the hero should have given a signal as soon as he found the target. 
but Young So replied that he didn't have time for that. But Chung Jie Ryong didn't know the hero so well anymore, so she realized that he didn't give a signal on purpose. She also understood that the hero would never say why he didn't do it. At the same time, she sent two ninjas to take care of the poisonous snake's sword. By this time, the heavenly maiden had already gone outside, and the girl followed her. And the hero said that since they freed the captive, he leaves. The heavenly maiden took the opportunity to thank the hero for saving her. Young said that there was no need for thanks, since he acted because of an agreement with Chung Jie, after which he pushed off from the ground, saying that it was time for him. The youngest student of the leader of the society, Hao, looked at the hero and could not understand how he single-handedly dealt with the ball of the poisonous snake. Every day she admired his skill more and more, and could not understand the source from which he draws his skills. Yun Seo and having run to the final destination, I caught myself thinking that nothing was known about the deal between the Soup clan and the detachment of the evil spirit. He had not heard anything about this in his past life, but he understood that he would have to learn about the details of the deal in this one. The only way to achieve this is to put pressure on the head of the Soup clan. Yun Seo was dangerously close to the main gate to the Soup clan. There was a guard here. While on the rock, he thought that the leader of the Soup clan and the bloodthirsty phantom demon Yin had made a deal with each other. However, it was annulled soon after the Yin demon fell into the hands of the monks, and this could mean that the money he paid towards the deal should most likely be with the Soup clan. The guards standing at the gate were talking about something among themselves. One of them said that the time for the next shift has already come, and they are not starting because they are stoned. A comrade who was standing nearby said that he shouldn't express himself like that, even considering the fact that after the alarm was announced, these drug addicts still did nothing. But the first guard replied that there was no point in worrying about dangerous expressions since he could quit at any time. At that moment, Yenisio jumped up behind them. He instantly pressed on the pressure points of these two guards, causing them to fall to the floor and could not move or say anything at all. Bending down, the hero concluded that it looks like the guards of the Souk clan are dabbling in opium. Yun Seo was not experienced in covert penetrations, but it was worth trying to sneak up to them immediately after the alarm was sounded, even considering the fact that it is quite possible that he will have to fight the entire Souk clan in this case. And although secrecy was definitely not the hero's strong point, he still decided to do what he planned, but in disguise. He needed to find the head of the Souk clan before the bodies of the guards were discovered since there was no time to remove them away. When he walked through the clan's territory, he noticed that it seemed that after the alarm was raised there was still some commotion here, and the guards were walking from side to side in small groups. And they definitely wouldn't bother so much just because the sword of a poisonous serpent kidnapped the celestial maiden. The hero was afraid to even imagine how many insidious plans the head of the clan was carrying out. Having passed through the second gate, he looked around to find out where the head of the clan was or at least in which direction to look for him. Seeing a small group of guards who looked more professional, he disappeared behind one of the ends of the building structure. On the belt of one of them hung the emblem of bodyguards. This was usually the case with almost all bodyguards of various clans. It was obvious that they were guarding this room, and it seemed that the leader was in it. Exhaling, Yun Seo decided that it was worth checking whether the head was really there. He came out of hiding and quickly began to move towards the bodyguards shouting that they were in big trouble. The bodyguards stopped him in order to understand what the guard's purpose was and why he wanted to go inside. The hero stopped and pretended that it was very difficult for him to breathe. Breathlessly, he said that he urgently needed to report the news to the head of the clan. Then Yun Seo added confusion to his voice and said that the poisonous snake's sword was grabbed. The bodyguards immediately said that the head must be immediately notified about this. The hero was pleased to realize that everything happened even simpler than he thought. But suddenly he heard someone's numerous steps. It looked like it was some kind of boss, because there were a huge number of guards around him. After looking a little closer, Yung realized that this man was the leader of the swordsman squad of the Souk clan. And when he came closer to the hero, he asked whether it was true that the sword of the poisonous snake had been captured. And if so, by whom? Yung So replied that this was so and he was captured by Hao's company. Seeing that the leader of the swordsman squad was getting closer, the hero lowered his head to bow. The leader of the squad of swordsmen said that it turns out that in Hao's society there has appeared someone who comes from the strength of the sword of a poisonous snake. 
The hero replied that according to rumors, there was a student of the head of the society nearby. To which the leader of the detachment replied that if a student of their leader is involved in the case, then this is probable in the plan. And after that, Yun Seo came a little closer to the leader of the swordsman squad and said that he had some more information. But the leader interrupted him, saying that the sword of the poisonous snake is in his squad, which means that something does not add up. As confusion was noticeable on the hero's face, and Yun Seo understood this very well. Then the leader of the Su clan swordsman squad asked the hero how he knew about this information. At that same second, the hero put his hand on the hilt of his sword and thought that it was vain to hope that everything would go according to plan. This happens extremely rarely, and this case was absolutely no exception. Yun Seo decided to launch a surprise attack with a small force directly on the leader of the swordsman squad, but he easily managed to block it, and he even managed to say that this impostor must be looking for death. Having removed the block from the attack, the leader of the swordsman squad threw the hero back several meters, so Yunisio had to retreat. But when he jumped away, he used one of the techniques, at the same time thinking that his enemy was strong. He expected nothing less from the leader of the Souk clan swordsman squad. The leader of the swordsman squad, in turn, looked at the enemy and was surprised that this spy was using a chi sword which was not the simplest technique. The leader of the swordsman squad pointed his weapon towards the enemy and ordered the bodyguards to take the leader to a safe place, and the squad to surround the enemy from six sides. The warriors of the detachment attacked in formation, despite everything they adhered to the tactics of the light faction. Half of these warriors at one moment simultaneously struck at the place where Yonasio was, but at the last moment he managed to jump up. Being at the top and having the upper hand, Yun Seo used the technique and sent an energy wave towards several warriors. This drove them away a short distance, but when the hero landed, he felt that behind him another portion of warriors were approaching him. Turning around, he sent another stream of energy in their direction, which again was able to neutralize them for a short time. But while this was happening, the group that he thought he had managed to eliminate again tried to strike at his back. So he turned around and repelled this attack with incredible speed. The realization came to him that he could not continue to simply block their blows, and while blocking one of the attacks, he felt that something was moving towards him with great speed. It was the leader of the Su clan swordsman squad who rushed past him with incredible speed, and at the same time struck his body with his sword. It's good that the hero managed to dodge this blow at the last moment, but there was still a cut on his body. He also noticed that all the warriors simultaneously decided to attack him. A feeling of hopelessness made him understand that if the battle dragged on, then all the guards of the Souk clan would come running here. And this for the hero only meant that even though this would take up most of his chi, he needed to finish the battle with one blow. There are no other options. The warriors already thought that such a number of blows should destroy the hero, but they felt that he had moved to the top of the Kama and saw that he also began to glow blue. Being above all his enemies, he used the twelfth phase of the lunar scattering. The energy that headed straight towards them was very strong and everyone who was below realized that there was no point in blocking it since it was omnipresent and strong. At this moment, the head of the community clan, along with his two bodyguards, hurried to run away in order to leave the walls of the clan. They heard an explosion behind them, and at that moment the head asked his subordinates if they knew what kind of stranger had broken into the clan's territory. Sok Pagong, the head of the Souk clan, was disappointed that no one knew anything about him. And he was very angry because the sword of the poisonous snake dared to steal the heavenly maiden. He constantly hurried his bodyguards and complained that the Yin demon most likely told everyone about their deal, and this was driving him into complete trouble. Then an idea came to mind in the chapter, and it was so interesting that he decided to stop and think. He assumed that everyone else thought that he ordered the kidnapping of the maiden. He thought very loudly and said that everything was not his fault, and the bodyguards simultaneously suggested that he run faster while the squad of swordsmen was gaining time, and the head answered one of them that if they were caught now with the accounting book, it would end badly for them. The hero who stood nearby asked what was in this book. The bodyguards began to draw their swords and prepare for a life-and-death battle, and the head at that moment was very frightened by the sudden appearance of the hero. Yun Seo jumped from the hill on which he was standing. At that moment the bodyguards turned to their leader and said that they would handle everything. But it seems that Suk Pagun knew something, 
so he asked the soldiers to stop the attack. But it was already too late as these two men rushed towards the hero. The head of the Souk clan closed his eyes in horror, but still, out of the corner of his eye, he saw how the hero easily dealt with the bodyguards, and heard frantic screams. When he opened his eye wider, he was even more scared. He saw that the hero easily eliminated his two best bodyguards, and looked straight into his eyes. Yun Seo moved away from the lifeless bodies of the bodyguards and began to walk towards the head, who was scared and constantly making excuses. He fell at the hero's feet and said that he was not at all involved in the abduction of the heavenly maiden, since it was all planned by the sword of the poisonous serpent. But the hero said that he had a lot of questions about the evil spirit squad and the bloodthirsty Yin phantom demon. Suk Pagong tensed even more. Then he reached out with his right hand to the head and said that since they were alone, they should chat frankly with each other. Yun Siowun began to pull out an object from his pocket and said that he borrowed it from the sword of the poisonous snake, who in turn said that this tablet belongs to none other than the head of the Suk clan. The wooden plank fell to the floor right in front of the elderly Sok Pagong's eyes, and for the first few seconds, he couldn't believe his eyes. He was very frightened by what he saw and because of this he jumped a short distance away from her. He was then overcome with an emotion of rage and seemed to become much more confident. After all, he did not understand how the hero managed to take away the emblem of the evil spirit squad from him. He slowly began to reach into his inner pocket in order to try to deal with the enemy. But the hero opened his eyes wide and looked into the eyes of the head of the Souk clan with a terrible look. In a whisper he said that he should refrain from a group of antics. At this moment, the elderly Sok Pogun realized that he was in a hopeless situation, and he should not rock the boat. He slowly took out his sword and with all the strength he had then threw it to the floor. And then he, in a kind and soft voice, told the hero that he just wanted to get rid of this little thing so that they could peacefully continue the dialogue, after which he looked at his last hope to get out and laughed. After all, laughter is the most common defensive reaction. The hero once again asked a question. He was interested in what connects the head of the Souk clan with the bloodthirsty ghostly demon Yin. Sok Pagong thought about how to answer this question without revealing the whole truth. But thinking about the best way to do all this angered Yun Seo. He slowly began to draw his sword and said that it looked like he needed to draw the sword in order for it to finally speak. The head of the clan immediately said that he had made a deal with Yin. He began to say that the Yin demon wanted to get rich. He asked if the head of the clan would be interested in doing business with him if he would pay all the costs. The hero realized and realized that this old man had the audacity to waste the money that the demonic sect allocated to supply the troops. The hero asked whether it was necessary to explain to the head of the Souk clan what the deal with the demonic sect meant for him. But Sok Pagong said that he had no choice, because it was an offer he couldn't refuse. Yun Seo agreed with this in his head. In the end... This is called a deal in personal words, because in reality the Souk clan would have been slaughtered entirely if the head had refused. Turning to the head of the Souk clan, the hero asked what he thought the monks would say to this excuse when they heard it. Yun Seo continued, saying that sitting on bags of gold from the sale of opium, there would be no point in making excuses for him. It was clear from the head's face that the hero was right. At that very moment, Yun realized that he seemed to have hit the bull's eye despite the fact that he mentioned opium only in passing, based on the information from the guards. Realizing his superiority, he knelt down and told the head that his future was predetermined, just like the future of his clan if his dirty deeds became known in Qingqing. In response, Sakun again began to make excuses, saying that he could not prevent you from doing this in any way, since the demon threatened him. Yun Seo stood on both legs, rising from his knees, and asked the head if he wanted to live. Sok Pagong immediately responded positively. Turning around, the hero said that he does not work for the house of the heavenly world, and in general he did not come here to judge the Souk clan. The head of the clan became thoughtful and assumed that the hero belonged to the demonic clan. But he replied that this was not so. After all, in the end it was he who captured the bloodthirsty phantom demon, and although he presented it as a gift to the monks, it seems that many minions of the Yin demon remain free. He went up to one of the bodyguards and took out from the bag notes on the deal with the squad of the evil spirit. By this point, he already had a clear plan, which was incredibly beneficial for him. He promised the head to keep information about the deal's secret. 
In exchange, the hero will take for himself all the profits that the Yin demon should have received. Yun Seo knew very well that even members of the demonic sect knew nothing about this money. If the head of the soup clan keeps his mouth shut, then the earnings of these freaks will become his starting capital. Rising from his knees, Sok asked the hero whether he really managed to defeat the bloodthirsty phantom demon. But Yun Seo didn't have time to answer. All because the head of the clan bowed and said that he swears allegiance to the noble lord. Yong So noticed that it was very sudden after he wanted to meanly strike the hero a few seconds ago. The head of the Souk clan interrupted him again, saying that all his life his dream was to create a clan equal in strength to the five great clans. But since Sok Pagun could not win against the evil spirit's detachment, he was forced to discredit his good name. Therefore, now he wants to atone for his guilt and follow the hero, whom he called the fairest master of the orthodox faction. Yun Seo, in turn, did not understand what he was talking about and why he called him the fairest master. Sokpa began to run around and shower the hero with compliments, saying that the hero has a heart that can understand and forgive him and the clan for their disgusting actions. Then the head of the clan told the hero that he was ready to stop the activities of the minions of the Yin demon, without expecting anything in return. And so he, as the head, swears to him to follow him along the path of justice. Moreover, he said that he would grant the hero the position of supreme elder of the Souk clan. By this moment, Yong Seo understood absolutely nothing, how and what all this text was about. But Sukpa continued, saying that he was ready to offer the hero a monthly payment and send clan fighters to help at the first request. He replied that if such is gratitude then he accepts it with respect. However, he will not remain in the Suk clan, that's for sure. Then the hero said in a calm voice that today's conversation should remain between them. And throwing the book into the hands of the head, he ordered to get rid of all echoes of the deal with the detachment of the evil spirit. After that, he pushed off from the place where he was standing and ran in an unknown direction. All that the head of the soup clan managed to do was wave his hand after the hero and wish him to take care of himself. The hero left and left the head of the clan with a lot of tasks. And after a few days, he still returned to training. During one of these trainings, he simultaneously thought that thanks to a misunderstanding on the part of the head of the soup clan, he received even more money than he expected. While he was practicing, Yung Jie came up to him and said that the hero does not waste time in vain. Coming closer, she told Yun Seo that she had brought a book that had interested him for a long time. Moreover, Zhang Jie Ryong also notified the hero that the leader of the Waiyang trading group was waiting for him in the living room. Having opened the book, Yun Seo quickly realized that the divine art of the scarlet flame fortunately looked exactly as he remembered it in his previous life. This flame technique is based on yang energy. With its help, one can balance the concentrated flow of yin energy in the body of the Song Sun suffering from the yin celestial body. The girl saw that the hero was carefully reading the book and asked if he found errors in the techniques that were written there. Yun Seo said that of course he noticed this and called Yung Jie to follow him into the living room. After that, he pushed off and quickly began to move towards the living room, and the girl remained there and remembered that no matter how much she read, she could not find anything. Realizing that she was late, the youngest student of society leader Hao pushed away from the place where she was standing and ran after the hero. The leader of the Yen trading group sat in the living room and asked the hero if he was a doctor who could cure his son. Yun So silently looked into his eyes for a while, as she understood that in front of him was the leader of the Yen trading group, which in the future would become the most influential in the central plains. Realizing the activity of the pause, the hero said that he was not a doctor, and this greatly surprised the leader of the trading group. Soon the hero said that he was quite capable of curing the son of the leader of the trading group. He replied that then information about whether the hero is a doctor is not important and he suggested that Young So try to cure his son right now. His son was in the next room and, in general, his condition was not yet as neglected as the condition of Chong Jie at one time. Young moved to that room and stayed there for a very long time. This made the leader of the trading group worry. One day he said that he should go and see for himself what was happening there, but the hero who left the room said that this was not necessary. At this moment, the leader of the Yen trading group immediately began to bombard the hero with questions about how the treatment went. But Yung Seo replied that everything went well and his son would recover in 15 days. This man was stressed for a very long time. 
especially while he was waiting for the hero to treat his son. Therefore, his gratitude knew no bounds. He immediately told Yun Seo that his gratitude was not empty words, and he could be sure that the leader would repay him in full for his help. Then everyone sat down to have lunch, and while they were eating, the hero spoke to the leader about the demonic sect, and told the whole story. The leader of the trading group was wondering why the heavenly demon targeted the son of an ordinary merchant. But the hero replied that such threats would not work against ten great trading groups. And then they came across a newly formed group, also a rapidly growing one, a leader who values his son very much. And therefore, there could not be a better goal for the head of the demonic sect. The leaders of the Waiyang trading group could not leave the thought that if it were not for Yun Seo, his son would have already died. But the hero was now very modest, and said that he did what he had to do. Considering the knowledge he has acquired throughout his life, the leader of the trading group said that he would like to once again express his gratitude by asking the hero what exactly he wants as gratitude. Taking something out of his pocket, the hero said that if the leader of the trading group insists so much, then so be it, he will ask for something. And even the leader himself was very surprised that the hero took it out of his inner pocket. What can we say about Yung Jie Ryung, who by this moment did not know at all what position the hero was in? Yun Seo threw a thick wad of money on the table, saying that he had more than enough money, so he wanted to ask to buy incense for him. To put it mildly, the leader of the Yen trading group was surprised by such a request, so he asked the hero why he needed them. Yun Seo smiled and said that in this way he was investing in his cloudless future. The hero planned everything because from his past life he remembered that in the fall of next year, the ships that sailed on the sea near the province of Jianjian would encounter problems, and they will consist in the fact that ships will begin to be attacked by Japanese pirates, which will lead to a decline in trade. As a result, the price of incense goes through the roof, and these incense will be the first step of the weigh-ins on the path to becoming one of the ten great trading groups. The leader of the trading group said in confusion that it was not difficult for them, but he was sure that the hero would choose a monetary reward. The hero said that by saving his son, he did not expect to receive anything in return. In fact, Yun Seo simply understood very well that putting the chicken that laid the golden egg into the soup was a bad idea. Everything turned out very well, both for the leader of the Yen trading group and for the hero. Therefore, the man stood up and asked the hero to take some object. Yun Seo reached out to take it and at the same time asked what it was. The leader of the trading group replied that this is the emblem they give out to their highest ranking clients. He also added that the hero just needs to present it at any of their branches when he wants to make some kind of deal. In turn, he asked if the leader really wanted to give him such a valuable artifact. The man said that for him this is the least he can do for the savior of his son. But then he said that for him this is also a kind of investment. Noticing that Yun Seo and Yung Jie Ryung did not understand anything, he said that this is an investment in the hero himself, since he believes in him. The conversation was over and the leader of the Yen trading group returned to the province of Jedzian, inviting the hero to visit him one day as a farewell. Yun Seo returned to his normal life and went about his daily activities very often training and walking in the wild forest. He thought about the staggering wealth he would gain when the price of incense soared, which would become a vital asset in his fight to become an elder. He will need the help of the Wayans in order to become an elder of one of the sections. And he will certainly receive it thanks to this emblem. In a previous life, the head of the demonic sect from the Yen trading group survived all the juice. And now he must be beside himself with rage. One day, once again standing on the ledge, Young So thought that he had stolen House Society and the Yen trading group right from under the nose of his main enemy. And most likely he paid attention to the hero. Suddenly the hero felt that there was some kind of sharp surge of energy behind him. When he turned around, for a split second he saw that a wide and powerful stream of energy was moving in his direction at incredible speed. To block it, the hero had to draw his sword with the same lightning speed, which was already glowing blue and shimmering with lightning. He performed a horizontal strike, causing the energy wave to disintegrate. This created a rather impressive explosion that was visible even from the forest at the foot of the cliff. Yong asked the guest why he was attacking if he himself called him to meet here, hinting that the hero might not have time to repel the attack. But the guest, coming closer, said that if he had attacked seriously, the hero would not have gotten off so easily. This guest was Jin's Dugu, and he said that, as he expected, 
The hero is already able to fill his sword with the energy of white lightning. Yun Seo informed the teacher that he had not yet perfected this technique, and he has not yet managed to maintain energy in the sword constantly. Then the master suggested that the hero use the qi breathing technique, which should help him understand the current level. The hero was very surprised to hear this. He exhaled all the air from his lungs and said that if the master insists so, then so be it, he will use this technique. When Yun Seo sat in the lotus position and began to use this technique, within a few seconds he felt completely new sensations. He couldn't understand why the sensations were so different, because he just used the breath of qi. This time he felt the energy cleanse his body, burning out all the cloudy qi. Looking at the hero, the master asked if he was surprised by the result. Due to the fact that the teacher never received an answer, he continued by saying that white lightning is a powerful weapon in itself. However, at the same time, it is also an armor that protects the body and mind. And the stage when white lightning allows the owner to feel this armor is called the God of Lightning. Yong was surprised when he heard this. The master added that this is the stage of cultivating the white lightning technique. And only after fully mastering it will the hero feel the benefits that it gives him. Then Yun Seo stood up completely and told the master that he didn't even think that normal qi circulation could be enough to cleanse the body. Dugu Wu Jin answered him that not everyone can do this. And in his memory, there are enough masters who in the end were unable to reach the lightning god stage. The hero realized that a body enhanced by the arc of the white lightning body cannot be compared with masters who modified themselves. It was hard to argue with this thought, remembering the strength that the king of the fist had shown in the past. At this rate, the hero will soon be able to reach the level at which his past life was interrupted. The teacher continued his speech by saying that it seems that Yun has managed to fully master the elixir of the small cycle, after which he told the hero that it was time for them to go. The master reminded his student that he had said that after the hero had fully absorbed the energy of the elixir, they would go somewhere. And when the two of them approached the gates of one of the clans, the hero immediately remembered what kind of place this was. This place was none other than the Tang clan. And for such a long time, young Seo had almost forgotten about this teacher's request. But standing here, he very quickly remembered the moment when the master spoke about this in the past. The Tang clan was the great Nirima clan that ranked first in the hierarchy. Young Seo believed that this was the lair of crazy madmen, whom all martial arts masters, without exception, are afraid to meet. The clan used poisons, hidden weapons, and various devices. Therefore, if you quarrel with them, you can't count on a quick death. However, there were also those recluses who constantly avoided others. Yun Seo was a little scared when she and the teacher walked through the territory of this clan. It seemed to him that everyone around them was looking at them very hostily. Seeing this arc, Jean assured the student that he should not pay attention to it, since the Tang clan is conservative and at times overly emotional. Be that as it may, this clan is more than worthy of respect. This was slightly different from the idea of the clan that the hero had in his past life. Then he believed that this clan was a bunch of narrow-minded cowards. But suddenly he stopped thinking about anything when he saw that they had approached the central entrance to the building, from which someone had come out. This someone was heading straight towards them, and it looked like Dugu Wu Jin had arranged a meeting. And when the teacher and the student came close enough to this stranger, it turned out that it was a girl. And she greeted Dugu Wu Jin. The master, in turn, greeted the girl and said that his student was standing on his right side. The hero bowed and introduced himself, saying that his name was Yun Seo Woon. When he looked at master, he saw that there was a strange emotion on his face. The girl also bowed and said that she was very pleased to meet Yun Seo. She also introduced herself in response, saying that his name was Tan So Yun. Such similarity greatly alarmed the hero. But the girl interrupted his thoughts by saying that she had long wanted to see Yun Seo. After that, after the entire conversation, she raised her gaze and, looking into his eyes, called the hero Brother Yung. According to the information about the Jin Dugu that was provided to the hero of the society by Hao, his social circle was limited to his family. But Tan So Yun, this is the heiress of the Sichuan Tang clan, and it was interesting that she was the only one who constantly maintained contact with him. Yun Seo knew that she was the daughter of the head of the Tang clan and regularly communicates with the teacher. After analyzing everything, the hero realized that since she said that she wanted to see him, it means she has known about Yun Seo for a long time. That must be why one is friendlier to him. 
There was an awkward pause, so the girl said that the patriarch was waiting and invited the newly arrived guests inside the building. A few minutes later, Jean and Young So were already sitting in the reception hall, and the hero was thinking that he still shouldn't relax next to members of the Tang clan. To the left of Tan So Yun sat an elderly man who asked the teacher how he was doing. He seemed very familiar to Yun Seo. This was Tang Bek Gong, who was the head of the Tang clan. But the hero knew that in the future he would become the king of poison. From his past life, Yun Seo remembered that on the battlefield he was a devil in the flesh. But looking only at his appearance, the hero would calmly believe that this man is a priest. Yun Seo felt very strange being in this room and there was a very good reason for that. He was now in the vicinity of the future king of fist and king of poison, and such circumstances would greatly frighten him from the past. The hero did not think that he would sit like this in the presence of two monsters from his previous life. The sensations were quite unusual. Dubu Wujin at that moment said that he came here to ask Tak Bek Gun for one servant. The master said that he knows that he is asking a lot but now it is extremely important for the development of his student. Moving closer to the topic, Jean said that he would like to ask the head of the Tang clan to give him a pill of heavenly poison. Yun Seo was very surprised to hear this. This pill was the secret elixir of the Tang clan. So the hero decided that in his life he would never give them anything so valuable so easily. So Beck Gun laughed a little and said that it seemed that Doug had become very attached to his student during the time they had not seen each other. After he stopped laughing, he said to Doug that he would give as many of these pills as he wanted. Even the master was not as surprised as the hero was. The teacher bowed and said that he would not remain in debt for such a service. The head of the Tang clan, in turn, said that there was no question of any debts, adding that it was the least he could do for the benefactor who saved his daughter's life. Yun Seo didn't know what happened, but now he understood the favor of the head of the Tang clan since the teacher saved his daughter. Thus, Beck also advised that in order to benefit from the heavenly poison pill, one must at least be at the zenith stage. Then he asked Young how old he was. The hero, modestly sitting on a chair, replied that he was now fully seventeen years old. Beck Gun said that he and Tan So Yun are only two years apart in age, after which the head of the clan said that it was simply incredible that at that age the hero had such a high level of martial arts. Then Young Seo noticed that Beck Gun had directed some kind of technique in his direction. It looked like snakes and the energy was purple. But the hero quickly realized that there was no need to show any signs of fear, because this was nothing more than pressure from the energy of the poison. And when Young So turned his gaze to the head of the Tang clan, to saw that he was looking at him intently and increasing the influence of the technique, the realization came that he most likely wanted to test it, so the hero concentrated and cleared himself of all the muddy chi. After a few more seconds, Yun Seo bowed, and the energy that was released destroyed the clan head's technique. So Bak Gun was sincerely surprised and noticed that this student also had great strength of spirit. Laughing quietly again, he asked his daughter to take the guests to the medical department. The girl asked the guests to investigate behind her, and within a few minutes they were near the building which was the medical department. Standing near the entrance to this establishment, she notified the hero that only clan members are allowed here, so guests need to wait until she brings everything they need. After that, she turned around and began to enter the building, and young Seo realized that this was the perfect moment to finally talk to the master. He turned to him and asked why he asked for the heavenly poison pill from the head of the Tang clan. Dugu Wu Jin said that he had been talking about this for a long time, and it was necessary for the development of the hero. But Young Seo said that the heavenly poison pill is far from an elixir, but rather a poison, and a deadly one at that. And since the hero is not a master of the poison technique, he will most likely simply die from this pill. At first, Jin held back his laughter, but after a couple of seconds, gritting his teeth, he laughed very loudly, after which Young said that he shouldn't worry so much. After all, the hero has already reached the stage of the lightning god, this means that he will be able to burn out the poison in the body with a flow of chi. The hero was very happy to hear this, because it meant that in such an easy and painless way he would be able to gain a huge amount of experience and energy. But then Jean broke his arc a little, saying that he would still have to endure the pain and side effects. At the same moment, Tan So Young came out of the building. She was holding a small box in her hands and said that she had brought a heavenly poison pill. 
she immediately handed it over to the hero and said that she would give him one such pill every fifteen days for two years. Yanisio thanked her, and when he turned around, the girl said that she had a request to her benefactor. Dugu asked Jean what kind of request this was, and the hero at that moment already thought that he would have to give this pill, but the girl simply told the master that she would like to ask for a training match with his student. At that moment, Jung felt a very strong energy around her, which radiated from her body and went beyond its boundaries. She looked at the master and asked if he would grant her request. At that moment, the hero realized that she was a master of poisonous techniques. Poison martial arts, a secret of the Tang clan passed down from generation to generation. To strengthen their body, they will fill it with poison on their own. But what's interesting is that you rarely see female masters in their clan, because due to the poisons in their body, they lose the ability to give birth to children. Without thinking twice, Yun Seo said that he did not want this fight. This surprised Tan So Yun very much, due to the fact that the girl became confused, and after a short time, she asked if the hero could tell her the reason for the refusal. Yun Seo immediately responded that he had absolutely no benefit from winning or losing this fight. The girl was confused and it seemed that at that second she was thinking what to answer to the hero so that he would suddenly change his mind. Yun Seo remembered that all the masters of poisonous techniques with whom he had dealt had left. First of all, the very idea of filling one's own body with poisons to increase the amount of chi no longer seemed normal to the hero. Although Yun Seo didn't know why the girl decided to become a martial arts master, he was sure that she was not at peace with her head. In addition, nothing good can be expected from a duel with the daughter of the clan head in the clan residence. The hero was about to leave but the girl said that she was ready to make a bet. Smiling, Tan So Yun said that she had something that might interest the hero. He replied that the heavenly poison pill was enough for him. The girl, in turn, said that she assures that Yun Seo will like it, because she will give it up if he wins in a fair fight with her. The hero fell silent and without saying a word, just looked into Tan So Yun's eyes. After thinking a little, he decided that it wouldn't hurt him to at least take a look at what she wanted to offer him. Initially, the hero planned to refuse, regardless of what the girl would bet. However, something made him change his mind. Tan So Yun took out some kind of sword from the Red Velayer packaging. The realization of what kind of weapon this was threw the hero into a stupor. In front of him was one of the famous five swords that were forged by Yaja in the last years of his life. The girl showed this sword to the hero and said that she was holding a sword called John Lu. At this moment, the hero realized that it was impossible to refuse such an offer. A historical figure, the man who is said to have created the best sword that ever existed. This legendary man was the greatest blacksmith of the Central Plains, named Yijia. Before his death, he embodied his spirit in five famous swords, which have been in the hands of a wide variety of people in our time. And one of these legendary weapons was Zhang Lu, which Tan So Yun held in her thin hands. Young Seo realized that for a martial artist, the opportunity to take possession of Yaja's sword is worth putting his life on the line. The hero asked the girl if she could use such a valuable sword as a bet. But she replied that if she had offered something less worthy, then Yun Seo would have refused. It was strange that the girl was ready to sacrifice the famous sword so easily. Therefore, the hero asked her why she was so eager to measure her strength with Yun Seo. Without thinking at all, Tan So Yun said that she wants this because the hero's teacher is her benefactor. Neither the hero nor the teacher understood what this meant. The hero was the first to dare to ask how this relates to their battle. Then the girl said that since the benefactor accepted him as a student, then the hero must be very strong. It's strange that she only wants a fight because she wants to find out who is stronger. But it seems that the girl will not tell the truth to the hero even if he asks a thousand more questions. Yun Seo realized and immediately told the girl that he had nothing that he could oppose to this sword as a bet. Tan So Yun told him that it doesn't have to be an object. Approaching Doug Wu Jin, the girl asked if he could fulfill her request if she won a duel against the student. Then she whispered something to the teacher after which he agreed. The hero only had time to think about why the lady was dragging the teacher here. It was unpleasant that Yun So didn't even know what Tan So Yun's request would be. Returning to the hero, the girl asked if the hero needed more time to think. Young Seo replied that if the teacher agrees, then he accepts this challenge. He then Dugi Jin said in a loud voice that he was declaring the fight between Young Seo and Tan Seo open. Drawing his sword, 
the hero thought that he still doesn't know what the girl is trying to achieve, but since she decided to put up the legendary sword, it is obvious that she is confident in her victory. But this did not change the fact that the hero was also very motivated, deciding for himself that if events took such a turn, then Jean Lu would be his. Yun Xiao's opponent is a master of poisonous techniques. So he decided that he should be extremely careful so as not to accidentally get poisoned. Tan So Yun prepared to attack, and at that very time Yun Xiao pushed away from his place to rush towards the enemy. The hero decided to quickly start the duel with the first phase of the String of the Moon and the girl quite successfully managed to return from the attack. Moreover, during this attack, the girl managed to run right under the hero's attacking hand, and having reached the weak point, she immediately delivered a poisonous blow directly to his bare arm. This forced the hero to retreat with incredible speed. A few moments later he was already at a distance of several meters from the girl. Looking at the wound, he realized that it was a poisonous touch. Understanding this did not calm him down at all. As the hero thought, if he does not cleanse the body with the art of white lightning, then sooner or later he will lose to the poison quite quickly. Then he turned his gaze to his rival and noticed that she had drawn her weapon and then quickly began to move from place to place. The girl was spinning in the air around his head with incredible speed. Yun Seo, in turn, raised his sword and stood on guard in order to repel all the girl's attacks. Having blocked everything, he jerked to the side in order to take a more advantageous position and forced the girl to change her position in the room. She sank to the ground and young Seo realized that this battle would definitely not be easy. Considering that the girl had asked for a fight just to test his skills, she was showing too much bloodlust. Therefore, the hero also decided to fight seriously and had already come up with a plan for a combined attack. Tan So Yun used a technique that caused butterfly shaped energy daggers to spread into a circle around his body. In turn, I used the 21st phase of the waning moon. Two energies of incredible strength grappled in the air in an incredible battle. This created a very bright flash. Opening her eyes, the girl noticed that the hero was very incredibly close to her body and was about to strike with his fist. Then she put out her hand, which was instantly enveloped in purple energy. Jumping back, she looked straight into the eyes of her opponent and waited for a good moment to attack. Yun Seo was surprised that the girl reacted very quickly and repelled his attack. Straightening up to his full height, he began to walk towards her and asked why she wanted to win so desperately. He wanted to continue this sentence, but he felt something emitting very strong energy behind him. This object was approaching at very high speed, and when Yun finally felt its presence a few centimeters away from the back of his head, he sharply moved to the side. This object flew right next to his face, creating a comma press, and then landed right in the girl's hand. It was a rather sneaky move that Yun Seo never expected. Very soon the hero realized that it was a hairpin worn by Tan So Yun. Taking it in her hands, the girl pinned her hair with it. This slightly hit the hero's confidence. Yun Seo lightly ran his fingers over the cut that remained on his face after this attack and suddenly a very unpleasant realization came to him. The hero realized that he was on the verge of death. He realized that upon contact with blood, the hairpin released a very deadly poison into his body. Through half-open eyes, he saw that the girl had taken out a small blade and was ready to attack. Yun Seo realized that under no circumstances should you lose concentration. He concentrated a huge amount of white lightning in his left hand and prepared to cleanse his body of poison. Then he put this hand to his chest, creating a small explosion and streams of lightning scattered in different directions. He raised his head towards the girl and she was scared when she saw that all the poison was coming out through his mouth. This confused her a little, but overall she understood that she needed to complete the duel before the hero was cleansed of the poison. So she pushed herself away from where she was standing and tried to launch a surprise attack right at Yun Seo. But at the moment when the girl approached him as close as possible, Yun Seo used the twenty-third phase of the lunar flow. Since the girl was not ready and thought that the hero was completely immobilized, she was unable to block it. And all the energy that Yun Seo released towards her went through her bones. Dugu Wu Jin, who watched the fight from the side, concluded in his head that the fight was over. When the dust settled, he saw that Tak So Yun was leaning against the wall, and small streams of white lightning were coursing around her body. The silent scene turned out to be very beautiful on the part of the master. After all, his student stood with his sword at the ready and looked towards the defeated enemy. 
the hero expected nothing less from the master of poisonous techniques. If he didn't know how to purify his body with the white lightning art, it would be impossible to win. Dubu Wu Jin announced that the winner was Yun Seo Woom, and after that the hero began to approach the girl who seemed to have lost consciousness. Coming very close, he said that at first he really believed that she was asking for a fight purely out of excitement. But during the battle, he was already sure that there was something more behind her request. Yun Seo directly asked the girl what she was hiding, but she didn't answer him. Instead, Dugu Wu Jin, who had been approaching the hero from behind all this time, said that he most likely knew the reason. Approaching, Dugu said that he was almost sure that it was all because of him. Only one question was spinning in the hero's head. What happened between these two then? And the answer to it changed the hero's entire understanding of the teacher. Miss Tang said that as a child she was kidnapped by the minions of a demonic sect called the Yellow Cloud Gang. But that day, her benefactor destroyed the entire gang and thereby saved the little girl from the death that could overtake her. And she saw his amazing strength. She wanted to become his very much, even if it meant giving up inheritance of the secret family techniques. But the answer was categorical, because the man did not accept her, saying that she would not be able to master the martial arts of the Heavenly Lightning School. And when she now saw that Yun Seo had become his student, her mind was clouded by envy, and that's why she made such a ridiculous request. Miss bowed and asked the guy for forgiveness, because after all, she only caused him inconvenience with her childish behavior. Moreover, she wanted to apologize to Dugu Jin, because it seemed that he was also not happy with this request. When Yun Seo listened to this, he simultaneously looked at his teacher in order to understand what his reaction was to everything that happened. And it seems that he was not particularly happy. And this girl was indeed right in her words and formulations. Then the guy thought about it. And for some time he simply looked at the teacher in silence. Realizing that they definitely needed to talk. The girl said that she wanted to apologize again. After which she notified the guy that she needed to leave. Yun Seo also bowed. As she walked away, she also thanked him for agreeing to the duel. After the girl left the room. The student approached his teacher to ask why he stopped him. He answered him that this child wanted to demonstrate his strength to him by defeating Yong in a duel. Then the guy assumed that he did not accept her because she did not have damaged veins. The teacher said that this was so, and he refused her not because she was a girl, or because she lacked talent. After a moment of silence, Jean also said that Yun Seo's veins were also not actually damaged. This girl cast aside her femininity and chose the path of a master of poisonous techniques. Even telling her the truth now would only hurt her more. Listening to all this, and realizing how interesting the situation was, Yun Seo concluded that sometimes you are not seeing happiness. A few days later, the guy decided to meet his teacher in one place, and Jean did not yet know what the reason was. But already inside, Yun Seo said that he once said that he wanted to give his teacher a housewarming gift. He took out an object from his inner pocket, and put it on the table. Jean still did not understand what it was. But when the guy said that this is the divine art of scarlet flame, incredible surprise appeared on his face. After all this, Jung clarified that this technique is based on Yang energy, and she will help the song overcome the Yin celestial body. It was a very valuable gift, and Jean jokingly decided to ask who gives a manual on the technique of storing qi for a housewarming. Smiling, Yun So said that even if he is the only one who does this, it doesn't mean anything. The teacher looked at his student with a smile and thanked him for such a valuable and expensive gift. The guy, while pouring sake, said that this was a mere trifle compared to what Jean did for him. It was at this moment that Jean realized that he had found himself an excellent student who harbored all the necessary skills. But it also made him think, because this kid really looked like someone perfect. What kind of guy is this? who was able to achieve such great heights at such an early age. A lot of time had already passed since they met in this establishment. A lot of training took place, and even winter had already passed, which that year turned out to be much warmer than usual. Winter was replaced by spring, and two years have already passed since the hero's fight with Miss Tan. One day he came to her, and she informed him that today was the last day he should take pills. Today he really had to take the last heavenly poison pill and end the long course. Over the past two years, with the help of these pills, the hero managed to reach quite unprecedented heights. His chi increased and he crossed the zenith stage in such a short time compared to the other warriors. 
Now he had perfect control over the white lightning. Additionally, he is immune to most poisons due to being exposed to the celestial poison. When leaving, he thanked Miss for these two years, because for such a long time she helped him by providing periods. After that, he turned around and said goodbye. But suddenly Miss said one phrase that made the warrior think. She told him that they would see each other again. And then Yong turned his head to see the expression on the girl's face. But she just smiled sweetly, although it became obvious that she knew a little more in some ways than the guy himself. A few minutes later, Yun Seo had already forgotten about this situation. And while in a cafe with Yung Jie, he said that he was leaving the house and going to travel the world. The girl said that it was very sudden, although the guy had already told her about this last time. He reinforced his desire by saying that he should take part in the Fiery Phoenix Tournament, because it would greatly help him in the future. The girl remembered this moment, and told him that she simply said it then because the guy was acting self-confidently. Yun Seo said that thanks to her, he will be able to carry out his plans. When the girl heard this, a smile appeared on her face, and a second later the guy also smiled a little. The Fiery Phoenix Tournament is a large-scale event for the Murima Alliance in which the most promising representatives of the orthodox faction compete. If Yun wants to become an alliance elder without the support of the nine great sects, then he needs an outstanding achievement that everyone would recognize. This should be his first step towards becoming an elder, such as winning the Flame Phoenix Tournament that will be held next year. Yung Jie said that she was already tired of the guy again not telling her anything and keeping a mysterious look all the time. But still, she just decided to ask the guy where he was going now. Without thinking, he replied that he would go to Jujang to visit the head of the Waiyang Trading Group. Then the girl remembered that the guy once invested all his reward received from the society. And so I decided to ask how did Yong know that the prices of incense would skyrocket because of the Japanese pirates. The guy was silent for some time, and thought about how to answer this question, because the girl was unlikely to believe the truth. But still he decided to try, and said that in fact he could see the future. Then the girl looked the interlocutor straight in the eyes for a few seconds, and after a few seconds said that she would not ask any more if he answered like that. They moved home, and the two of them witnessed the training of Dugu Wu Jin's son. He looked like a warrior who had great potential, and it was clear in his movements that he was making progress. The teacher's son, Young, was undoubtedly talented, and for the guy this was quite expected. If everything was the same as in Seo Woon's previous life, then he would already be dead. But the hero saved this child and wanted to see how he would grow up. While he was thinking about this, Dugu Jin's wife suddenly came over. She wanted to tell them something. This woman called them to eat, and this made everyone get up from the table and go to another place. By the end of the day, Doug Wu Jin was already reassuring his wife, saying that Young was experienced enough not to be offended on the road. Moreover, considering how outstanding a fighter Seo Wung had become, Dugu himself was thinking about sending him on a journey. When the guy began to leave, his teacher said that he would pray that he would achieve everything he wanted. The student thanked his teacher and said that it was time for him to go and promised to take care of himself. Today was a new beginning for Yun Seo, and as he walked away, some shouted after him, wishing him a safe journey. The security was already ready, and Yun Jie, together with Yun Seo, prepared to leave. But suddenly someone turned to the guy and this voice seemed quite familiar to him. He immediately asked where she came from here, because only the teacher should have known about this journey. Miss Tan So Yun told Seo Wung that she was very happy to meet again, and that she said that they should see each other again soon. He remembered a conversation with his teacher recently, and then he told him that the head of the clan there asked him to take So Yun on his journey around the world. Then the guy said that he was forced to refuse such a request, because it would cause a lot of problems on the road. Even for the sake of the teacher, he just travels a little, sitting on a powder keg of seeing that girl. But being here for a month there said that she heard that her Yun Seo rejected her father's request. And so she thought that it was worth coming and personally expressing her respect, and maybe then it would have an impact. Coming closer to the hero, she directly asked if she could join his journey around the world. After that, she began to wait for an answer, the city looking into Yun Seo's eyes. The guy didn't know how to react to this because he had already refused her father once, and now absolutely nothing has changed. Yung Jie told the guy that there is nothing to think about here, and they should go together. In crowded but not mad, she reinforced this with the fact that this girl was probably strong, and most likely skillfully handled poisons and traps. 
and with her their path will be safer. When Young heard the word trap, he realized that perhaps he should really consider Miss Tan's participation in travel. He began to think and reflect on where traps might be useful in the future. After just a few seconds he said that it sounded good, but he still needed to think through a few details. He turned his head to this girl. He said that he was sure that her help would be invaluable. All this is due to the fact that he remembered the secret cave of Chion Kija. She received her name in honor of the magician who created her. A master of the last generation who had no equal in setting traps. This magician spent the last years of his life in a cave, leaving his treasures there. If everything had gone according to the scenario of a past life, then this cave would have been discovered only five years later. In addition to complex trap systems, there were even more problems. The cave was crowded with a bunch of other mechanisms, and getting inside was not that easy. Well, if the team has someone like Tan So Yun, who understands traps of all stripes, then this can have a good effect on the outcome. Therefore, the guy thought that thanks to her, they would be able to lay hands on the treasure of the cave before anyone else. So he told Miss Tan that he needed to leave right away, and she thanked him. Young Jie decided to introduce herself and say her name, adding that she could just call her little sister. The girl didn't know how to react to this, and then Chan told her that if it bothers her, then let them call her by name. But after thinking a little, Tan she said that everything was fine and she was ready to go. The guy looked at her and was already thinking about how easy it would be to get through the cave, with a master who knows everything about traps. The girls talked constantly on the road, and then Yun Seo realized that he could forget about the quiet trip. And while the guy was driving here, he was thinking about everything, and there was one thought that did not want to leave his head. He remembered his past life, and thought about how lucky he was that someone or something gave him a second chance. When he lay bleeding after betraying the demonic sect in his past life, he thought that this was his end. However, on a whim, he had the opportunity to go back and start his life from scratch. For the sake of a life different from the hell he was in before, he spent the last nine years differently. He was pursuing his dream of becoming an elder of the Murema Alliance. And now it was all just beginning. The guy was so grateful to these bastards from the demonic sect for their contribution to his new life that he forgot to think about anything else. However, he promised himself that one day he would definitely repay them tenfold for their betrayal. Meanwhile, the group stopped to rest. At this time, Yung Jie was showing off a hairpin that she had bought not long ago, and the guy for some reason decided to listen to this dialogue. The girl added that she bought it quite recently, and spent a lot of time choosing it. Tan liked it and she told her that it was indeed a very beautiful thing, noting that it was obvious that it was not just a hairpin. Then Chung Jie told her that it was poisonous, and handed it over to her friend for her to look at. The guy didn't even think that a girl like Tan could be interested in the same things that other girls of her age are interested in. Suddenly, this entire group heard someone's rude voice from the side, and at that moment they realized that small problems would begin. The man stood a short distance from this cart and said that they had all lost their fear. He wondered how they even dared to pass here without permission from the fierce tiger's refuge. It was a small gang of bandits, and one of them, who was the most important, said that if they wanted to travel further, they would have to pay. Yun Seo already at that moment I realized that this would not end well, but decided not to get into a fight yet. The person who handled the transportation said that everything would be fine, you just need to pay for the journey, and asked everyone not to worry. He ran up to these bandits and asked them to take the money, and one of those scoundrels said that it was good that he realized it quickly. One of the bandits turned to the leader in order to point his finger at someone who was just now entering the cart. The leader said that this is a real beauty, and the leader of the shelter will appreciate it if they take them with them. He also said that before handing them over to a leader, it might be worth teaching them a lesson or two. Looking directly at Miss Tang, he told the man who was involved in transportation that the money was fine but besides them, they would also take the girls. When that man said that these girls are clients, and he would rather pay more money. For this, the leader immediately threw him to the ground. Walking closer to Miss So Yun, he asked her if she wanted to play with his team for a little while. But suddenly he saw something on this girl's face that made him grimace. It was a small scar near her left eye, and the leader immediately asked what was wrong with this girl's face. He spat at his feet and said that her appearance simply ruined his whole mood. Chung Jie already wanted to get involved in this dialogue, but Miss Tan made a gesture meaning that she should be silent. 
one of the bandits told his leader that with such a face, he definitely wouldn't get married, and the other one decided to also say that there are still girls whom they dragged from the village yesterday, and perhaps they should just take another girl. Then the leader covered the girl's scar with his hand and said that perhaps she could become his mistress. After he said this, he turned to his gang and informed them that they would have a fourth bride today. At that very second, something very surprising happened, because the leader did not even see what was causing him severe chest pain. His entire chest was covered in sharp throwing knives, which instantly caused incredible pain throughout his body. While he was still conscious, he looked at Miss Tang's hand and saw that she had a few more pieces. The leader very quickly realized that this girl had poisoned him, because after two seconds blood began to flow from his eyes and nose and foam began to flow from his mouth. This leader fell to the ground, and the gang of bandits that stood behind him were very scared when they saw this. They began to ask what these upstarts had just done to her with the glover, and Yun Seo was very disappointed with this situation. Instead of telling them the reason, Miss Tan So Yun told them that they too could not even count on an easy death. All the bandits realized that it was this girl who had just killed their senior leader. They drew their weapons and said that this girl would not leave here alive. This girl's look was quite crazy, and she notified the bandits that they, too, would not survive today. Two of them immediately began to carry out their attack, and hoped that by attacking at the same time they would be able to quickly eliminate it. But the girl was ready for this and for some time she did not even move or look towards the enemies. Then, using one of her techniques, she managed to move, jumping to a small height right next to all the enemies. After that, she landed, and of course all the bandits were stunned and did not know what to do in such a situation. As soon as her feet touched the ground, she immediately sent three poison darts into the bodies of each of the bandits. Then she began to spin around her axis, thereby choosing subsequent victims. After she did this, the girl pushed away from the place where she had been standing all this time and moved towards the other bandits. Walking right past them, she touched the tip of the dart to both of their bodies, thereby poisoning their blood. The bodies of these number two bandits fell to the floor, and this of course plunged those who survived into horror. But those who survived realized that it was too late to give up, so they also decided to attack the girl from the Tang clan. They tried to make several attacks, but after half a minute they were all lying on the floor bleeding, which was also poisoned. The girl turned to the man who was doing the transportation and said that it looked like he had twisted his ankle and needed help. The hero, looking at all this, tried to analyze every step of the girl and was able to draw several conclusions for himself. He realized that martial artists from the Tang clan could not simply tolerate insults. They are the kind of people who will put their lives on the line to take revenge on someone, and they did it very well. But despite all this, the leader of this gang was still moving for some reason. Yung Jie began to approach her friend in order to ask if she had been injured during the battle. Well, while she was saying this, the leader, who was struck by poison at the very beginning, stood up and said to Miss Tang in the back that she was an arrogant girl. He screamed very loudly with the last of his strength that he would kill her and disembowel her right there. This man began to run straight at her back, simultaneously swinging his sword in order to strike. Yun Seo ran past him and stabbed him with his sword directly at the artery that was in his neck. This was the last second of the life of the leader of these bandits, and everyone realized that he turned out to be quite tenacious. This time his body fell to the floor once and for all, and the hero realized that this did not end very well for him. He was impressed that some bandit managed to survive poisoning from the Tang clan, and this was very difficult to predict. But the problem that bothered him was that now all his outer clothing was covered in blood. So he asked the man how long it would take to get to the nearest village, and he noted that to get to Shansi, he would have to cross a mountain, and it would take several days. Yun Somi wanted to travel for several days in clothes that were stained with blood. And while he was thinking about this, Miss Stan decided to ask him something. She said that first of all she had to make sure that the gang leader was dead, and therefore she apologizes for her negligence. The hero told her that he himself was surprised that some bandit would survive after her poison. After all this, the girl said that it was extremely shameless of her, but she had to ask the guy for one favor. After this, the girl said that she learned from the dialogue of the bandits that they had kidnapped girls from the village. Yun Seo realized that she wanted to save them. Without knowing about them, the girl could simply drive by. But since she became aware of the kidnapping, 
Ta cannot turn a blind eye to it, and therefore asks for help. Seeing that the guy was deep in thought, Miss Tang said that if he didn't agree, then everything was fine, and she would just go alone. But instead of refusing, the hero said that he would help her save these girls from captivity. The guy asked the guide if he knew how to get to the shelter of the ferocious tiger, and by evening they were already close to this shelter. Some man was sitting there, and holding a captive woman near him, he asked if she really didn't like him. He hugged her more and more. It was Mac Pyong, the leader of the fierce tiger bandits. Suddenly, someone ran into his office and began shouting very loudly that they had been attacked. Then Mac asked his subordinate what the ruler's army had done, and asked how many attackers there were. But he replied that this was not the ruler's army. He reported that the attack was carried out by a guy and a girl, from two different sides. Then the leader calmed down and asked why the subordinate was reporting this to him at all, if there were only two attackers. The subordinate told him that he did not know much information about that guy, but the girl used the hidden techniques of the Tang clan. The leader did not understand why this clan needed them at all, but the subordinate replied that their guys had quarreled with members of their clan when they were collecting taxes. The order was given to gather everyone and attack that girl at the same time so that she would not have time to fight off the enemies. Then the subordinates asked what to do with that guy, because he also poses a great danger. Then Max said that he would deal with him himself, because he was still a great warrior, and not just a bandit commander. Meanwhile, Yun Seo had already approached the entrance, and said that he had urgent business in their shelter. The guards who stood near the entrance told him to get out before they broke all his bones. The guy didn't talk to them for long and said that he wanted to avoid bloodshed. But they leave him no other choice. Suddenly, someone landed from the air, and very quickly the subordinates realized that it was none other than their leader. And this head told the guy that he thought too much of himself, and asked that they didn't share with their guys at all in order to attack the shelter like that. He replied that his subordinate attacked their carriage, and they also said that they kidnapped girls from the village. He also added that he would have to save them, but first of all, he would like to wash off the blood of his subordinates, whom he killed in cold blood. The head became even more tense, and asked if he really broke into their shelter just to take a bath. He began to spin his weapon, and ordered the guy not to look down on him, because previously he was a general in the service of the ruler. Max started screaming that he managed to survive the hell that the guy even dreamed about. But avoiding the blow of this chapter, Yun Seo said that now he is still an ordinary bandit who does not shine with intelligence. And therefore, for the guy, he does not provide any interest. At the same time, the guy struck with his foot directly in the opponent's stomach. This blow was so strong that it seemed to two subordinates who were watching the fight that he pierced the enemy with this leg. The force was incredibly high and the body of the bandit leader, which absorbed this blow, flew tens of meters away. It broke through small turns, which by that time had already closed, and fell to the floor. All of the subordinates can't believe that the leader was defeated in battle with just one blow. There was a short pause, and Yun So asked his subordinates if they would now let him inside. They looked at each other, and realizing that refusal could mean a death sentence for them, they let the guy in. It turns out that Chung Jie was watching the guy from the tree all this time and analyzing his entire fight. It was surprising to her that he dealt with a rather strong enemy so easily. She couldn't understand what was on this guy's mind, because such majestic warriors were usually very difficult to comprehend. He rushed into the thick of things without expecting any reward, and for her it seemed very strange. With such formidable techniques in his arsenal, he was clearly already among the top hundreds of martial artists but he was not even twenty years old. At that second, the girl remembered the moment when Dugujin said that he could easily fight on equal terms with the best alliance masters. Perhaps, before Zhang Ga's eyes, a new hero was now being born who would leave his mark on the history of Miram. But at the same time, he was walking with his subordinates, who were in real shock. And I was only thinking about how to quickly take a bath. The girls who were released from captivity thanked the team and said that they didn't even know how they could thank them. Miss Tan thanked the guy for agreeing to help her with such a difficult task. But the guy just turned around and said that he just did what he had to do, and there was no heroism in that. After a while, the group was already in Shanxi, and being in one of the taverns, they listened to the conversations of everyone who was inside. A couple of men said that the shelter of a ferocious tiger had been destroyed just a day ago. It was destroyed by a guy and a girl. 
and there are rumors about the girl that she is a martial artist from the Tang clan. The second asked whether the two of them really dealt with more than fifty bandits. He said that not only that, they also rescued the captured girls and distributed to them everything that the bandits had stolen. They called this couple heroes, because for no apparent reason they saved them and gave them money. Yung Jie leaned a little towards the guy and said that he is called a hero, despite the fact that the majority still discuss Miss Tan, because they knew where she came from. Yung Jie also constantly wanted to ask the guy why he decided to just give away all the treasures from the shelter. After all, he had not shown generosity before. In fact, the guy didn't want to carry around extra weight. He already had enough money thanks to the purchase of incense. It was much more profitable to make Tan so young in his debt. If she thinks that he helped her out of pure nobility, then later she will definitely agree to his request. And now he is simply laying the foundation for a future raid into a secret cave. Be that as it may, becoming famous was quite a difficult task. And because he dealt with a bunch of bandits, for his own personal gain, this happened. Everyone around him mistakenly considered the guy a hero, and now the gossip spread from mouth to mouth. But the most interesting thing was that they all didn't know that it was Yun Seo specifically, and this had its advantages. In order to become an elder of the Mirima Alliance, it is necessary to have achievements that would speak for him. Becoming a hero is an even more promising option. After all, if you become famous in secret, and then reveal your identity after winning the Flame Phoenix Tournament, then he will be highly appreciated by them. He thought that this would be a completely useless fight, but he managed to learn an important lesson from here. Meanwhile, while the guy was thinking about all this, someone from a secret society approached Zhang Jie and conveyed some information. She then told Yun Seo that they had a small problem that could turn into a bigger problem. Recently, a man possessed by demonic energy was spotted on the streets of Shangxi. And last night, he killed a disciple from the Hua Mountain sect. Yun So asked his friend how does this even concern their group. She answered him that the enraged head of the sect ordered him to be found and executed, which is why the borders of the Shenxi province were closed. This only meant that until he was caught, they would not be able to leave here in any way. When the guy sighed heavily, he told the girls that he would go for a walk and asked them to wait for him in the rooms. Going out into the street, he noticed that there was a fairly small number of people there, because everyone was sitting at home. It was a complete headache for him. Even though he was in no hurry, he still hated wasting time just like that. However, this did not mean that the guy suddenly wanted to catch the possessed one. Or at least he convinced himself of this. The sect leader ordered the execution of the possessed man, and this gave the heroes some thoughts. After all, if they find out that someone unknown has ahead of them, this will lead to consequences. Then the hero will simply be suspected of undermining the reputation of the Hua sect and this is very negative. And at that moment the guy realized that it was the same as poking a beehive with a stick. They search everyone thoroughly, and Yun So decided to go back and check the situation in the hotel. But just as he thought about it, one of the clan members approached him and asked him to stop for a check. It will come close enough, he also said that he had been watching their masters for some time. And then he turned around and tried to escape. Yun Seo told him that there was a misunderstanding and he asked him to refrain from making baseless accusations against innocent people. The master said that possessed by demonic energy, he is skilled in using techniques that allow him to change his appearance and voice, so they are forced to check everyone they meet. He asked the stranger's name, and the hero told him that asking someone's name without first introducing yourself is very impolite. Then the master answered him that if he continued to refuse to cooperate with him, then he would have to use force and take him away to clarify the circumstances. These threats infuriated the guy a little, but he could not afford to attack the Hua sect master in their own home province. Therefore, instead of going into conflict, he decided to introduce himself and say that his name is Yun Seo Wun. When the master heard this, he said that it was clear from him that he was not from the Shanxi, and he asked if there was anyone who could confirm his words. Then the guy replied that several people from the hotel where he was staying could do this. They approached the inn, and the Hua clan master asked the woman if she could confirm the man's identity. She showed her badge, and also added that her name is So Yun, and he is from the Sichuan Tang clan. Then this master immediately bowed and said that his name was Chion Wu, and he was an adept of the Hua Shan sect. Yun So didn't really like that as soon as he heard about the Tang clan, 
This man immediately introduced himself, even though no one asked him to do so. Moreover, he dared to hug Yun Seo and said that if the master had known about this earlier, he would not have bothered the group. The hero didn't like this stranger's hand on his shoulder at all, but he just moved it away without saying anything. Suddenly, another girl appeared on the horizon, and the clan adept immediately drew attention to her. It was a Changa, and she asked the hero what he was doing here. The clan adept immediately asked who she was, because for some time he was simply fascinated by her beauty. He bowed again, but Chung Jie, meanwhile, took the hero by the hand and began to lead him somewhere. As she left, she said that she had things to do with Yun Seo, and they would talk some other time. The adept did not really like this situation, because he wanted to talk more with such a beautiful girl. When she was already walking along the street with the guy, she told Yun Seo that that adept should simply be ignored. This made the guy ask the girl if she knew him before. Looking back, she said that a very large number of people know this character, and in general he is quite popular. Despite the fact that he looked dull, there was a very powerful force hidden behind him. Meanwhile, the adept bowed to Miss Tan and began to leave. He was one of the ten geniuses. It was no one else, and as the only disciple of the Plum Blossom Divine Sword. Divine Plum Blossom Sword, swordsman personifying Mount Wang a master who is one of the ten heavenly emperors. People call him the sword ghost because of his obsession with swords, and that's the name he's come to live with. The guy realized that it was for this reason that knowledge about a person's past is so important in this world. After he became an elder of the alliance, he decided to use the power he received. After some time, the couple had already reached the door that was located under one of the bridges, and Yun So asked where the girl had taken him. Yes, she told him that the black market was located here, and she took him with her in case he also needed something here. It was an illegal market where stolen and prohibited goods of all kinds were sold, and there were quite a lot of sellers here. The guy had heard about this place before, but had never visited it in person, and this turned out to be a pretty great opportunity for him. While he was thinking about what to buy, the girl handed him a fox mask. When he asked why she was needed, she asked if the guy really wanted to go to the black market without hiding his identity. A few seconds later the doors opened, revealing a huge market with a wide variety of goods in front of the couple. This place was secret, and a very limited circle of people knew that he was located here. When they left here, the girl said that the guy bought only a small pill of light, and Young said that it is important, because this is a medicine that is made only on Mount Wudong. It may not increase the volume of she like the elixir, but at the right moment this thing can save a life. The girl asked if she was worth twenty gold nyangs. After all, even the black market trader was surprised when the guy paid much more than he expected. The guy told her that he just didn't want to waste time on bidding, and besides, twenty gold nyangs was not a big amount for him. The girl didn't have that much money, and she regretted not investing the money in incense. Making fun of her, the guy said that he was ready to sell them to the girl at the lowest price, if so, whenever she wants. By that time they had already approached the hotel, and heard someone shouting that they should not refuse to drink, next to Miss Tan and said that with such an ugly face, it was simply ridiculous to behave so arrogantly. The guy already refused to understand how every second person ran into a fight with a master from the Tang clan. The man began to come closer and closer and the girl asked him if he was ready to answer for his words. These men were Chan'an, head of the Thousand Killing Sect. Suddenly, this man felt a sharp pain in his body, and at the same time gradually began to lose consciousness. He twisted himself and began to slowly fall to the floor, and the subordinate who was standing next to him was very scared. The head could not believe that he had just received a large portion of poison. The girl said that before that she had already asked if he was ready to answer for the words he said. All this man's strength was already running out, and he said that she was just a cowardly girl, incapable of an equal fight. Chong Jie said that if he had already decided to get involved in a fight with the master of the Tang clan, then he should have been prepared for poisoning. When this man heard about this clan, he immediately changed his mind about the situation that happened here. He began to apologize and says that he was blinded by vanity, and made a big mistake, and now he asks for forgiveness. Guy, analyzing everything that happened here, I realized that the man was holding up well after being pumped full of poison. His skills were worthy of a campaign. The dark path sect of which he is the head must be quite strong, the guy thought so. Yun So made a difficult decision, 
and asked Miss Tan to leave it to him. But she said that she could not afford to burden the guy with her problems again. Then he said that this was not the case at all. He had his own plans for him, and therefore he asked to be allowed to sort it out. The girl immediately had some suspicions, but still she did not want to deal with this man anymore. So she said that she was leaving it to the guy, and he immediately smiled and thanked her for it. Yun Seo already had a plan, and began to move closer to the man, who was already losing consciousness from the poison in his body. The assistant to the head said that he could die like that, and the guy who had already come close enough asked if he wanted to live. He whispered to him that if he accepted his order, the guy would neutralize the poison and even forget about his little mistake. With the last of his strength, the man said that he would do anything, calling Yun Seo his master. A sufficient amount of time passed, and the head was already in his office, and said that these two would still dance in front of him. Then the guy said that he would go to the head at night and tell him what the assignment would be. The man realized that this would definitely be some kind of strange task. He began to think about what to do with this guy, and his subordinates said that it was too dangerous to harm the Tang member's companion. The head came up with a brilliant plan to ambush him on the way and attack him all at the same time, leaving no chance of victory. Approaching the wall, he took his battle axe and added to his subordinate that no one would know anything if they got rid of him. Taking this axe, he ordered to quickly gather everyone and prepare to ambush the guy. He came as close as possible to the doors and noticed some kind of glow on the street, despite the fact that it was already late evening. An explosion occurred and the subordinate was thrown into the wall by the lightning strike he received. The head could not understand what had just happened, and took the axe into his own hands in order to defend himself. Well, when he saw who was in front of him, he was speechless, and realized that now he could not leave. It was Yun Seo and he said that it seems that the head did not warn his subordinates about his visit. After all, they all had to lie down to rest for a while, and they were not particularly friendly to the hero. He began to come closer to the head and asked why he took the axe in his hands, because it was unlikely that he intended to cut down a couple of trees in the middle of the night. The head wanted to switch the topic, and asked what the hero wanted to entrust to him earlier in the day. Yong told him that he needed to find someone possessed by dynamic energy and he can ask other dark path sects for help or use his own connections. Moreover, he added that it doesn't matter how the head does it, you just need to find him. The man said in a trembling voice that they could not capture the possessed man. Then Jung interrupted him and said that he did not need to be captured, and all that was required was to find out where he was hiding and also report it. The plan was that if the guy told the Mount Hua sect the location of the criminal, the restrictions on movement would be lifted and they would remain with him for a long time. Hua about his location, so the head should not worry. Turning around, he said that he hoped that the head understood everything, and said that they would meet again later. Now Chan was left alone in his room, and kept the axe still at the ready out of fear. Having reached the door, he also added that it was necessary to find this enemy at any cost before the members of the Hua Shan sect did. Having created lightning in his hand, he added that if he fails to complete the task, the consequences will be the most dire. When the lightning spread across the room, Chan Un realized that he could not breathe normally. Jumping away from the doors of the building, Yun Seo said that he would wait for some news from the head of everyone who has thousands of murders. The man stopped feeling pain and fell to the floor, simultaneously throwing away the axe that was in his hands. He didn't yet have a plan in his head on how to find the possessed one before the adepts because it's obvious that he has much less strength. But suddenly his subordinates, who was leaning against the wall and was already half dead, extended his hand to him, begging for help. The head of the Thousand Killings sect realized that he needed to find this possessed person as quickly as possible, because now he had motivation. After a fairly short period of time, this man came to Yun Seo to report that he had finally found the possessed person. The guy thanked him and said that it was good work, and Chan'an, in turn, bowed and asked if he could leave. The hero knew well that the scum from the dark sections know how to look for people. He expected nothing less from them. The man could already be leaving, and of course he took advantage of this opportunity. And at that time it was already time for the guy to leave. He took his mask and decided that he needed to take it off to take a look at how all this would happen. When he put it on, it was really unknown from the outside who he was. At this moment, Yun Seo Woon was most interested in how the adepts would deal with the enemy. He approached the place just in time, because there were five adepts who were fighting with the possessed warrior. 
The battle had already begun, and the possessed did not know how to get out of this trap and how to win. Yang Xiu, who was watching all this, was very interested, especially when he saw one of the signature and secret techniques of this clan. It was a formation of a blossoming plum tree, and thanks to it, the enemy was not able to escape, because any side was ready to attack him. Hua Shan's signature formation, which has shown its effectiveness in battle quite often, it allows masters who have not yet reached the zenith stage to suppress the possessed who has already crossed it. Due to the fact that there are much more adherents than the enemy himself, it helps a lot. Even if you consider that the enemy is not in the best shape after being corrupted by demonic chi, the battle is still too one-sided. You constantly threw blows, and the possessed one, despite the fact that sometimes he missed them, still stood confidently on his feet. One day, after another combination of blows, all the adherents again stood in the right places in order to prevent the enemy from escaping. One of them said that it was time to finish with this enemy, because he had already lost enough strength. Well, then the possessed suddenly received additional energy, and a bonus to his chain, thanks to his own obsession. He screamed very loudly and began to run towards one of the warriors, who was standing in a plum blossom formation position. The commander of this formation gave orders to hold formation without hesitation, because it was at this moment that the possessed could easily escape. This enemy ran up to one of the warriors and swung his sword to strike him in the neck. The warrior was very frightened, because he did not expect that they would be able to get to him so quickly. The possessed man at that moment realized that he would be able to kill one adept, which means he would be able to retreat. But suddenly he heard that someone behind him was preparing a blow, and ordered him to stand still. Turning his head a little, he saw a warrior who was rushing towards him at high speed and wanted to strike with a sword. At that very second, a brilliant idea came to his mind, and he realized that this adept had just made a mistake. Using one of his techniques, he left an image of himself on earth, and he jumped several meters to the side. Because of this, the adept who wanted to stab him in the back hit the ghostly enemy, and the possessed disappeared somewhere. Running away, the possessed thanked the adept for giving way to him, and after a couple of seconds the enemy was no longer visible. It was really very stupid and one of the adherents asked Xion Wu why he violated the formation. But the guy didn't know how to answer this, because he completely forgot about the formation when he saw that his friend was in the bidet. The possessed man ran as fast as he could and used all his strength to finally reach the city. But all this time, Yanisio was following him, and kept at a safe distance so that the enemy would not notice him. This adept was a hopeless idiot in the opinion of the hero and he also realized that his plan would fail if the possessed man managed to escape. Therefore, he jumped off the roof, from which it was convenient to observe his friend, and prepared for battle. Yun's identity can be revealed if he leaves sword marks on his opponent's body. Therefore, he may have to defeat him with his bare hands if he wants to avoid the attention of the Hua sect. At some point, he noticed that the possessed one was using innate heavenly true chi, and it looked very scary. It seems that now he is going to fight to the death, as he felt that very strong chi was coursing through his opponent's veins. His body moved very quickly, and Yong didn't even immediately notice where he had gone. The enemy was already a few centimeters from his target, and swung his sword to strike the hero on the head. But the guy was also no slouch, and quite quickly was able to dodge this and subsequent blows. Moreover, he managed to jump to a small height after all these attacks in order to make a counter-strike. It was a kick, but to Yan S. surprise, the opponent managed to block it with the help of a stance in his hand. The guy's attacks were not able to even scratch the possessed due to the protection of his chi. Moreover, he looked as if these attacks were absolutely nothing to him, and he would be able to hold them off all day. He also held the hero's hand and tried to hit him, but the hero almost managed to dodge, but even a small touch was enough to throw him into the wall. After the guy flew into the wall, the possessed one immediately made a dash to overtake his opponent. When he got close enough, he swung his sword to cut the body in half. But after delivering a blow, the hero retreated, and the possessed ran right after him in order to catch up while he was weak. But the problem was that Young was much faster, and he managed to increase the distance for a while. Due to the innate chi, taking the enemy alive will not be easy. If the battle drags on, then the Huashan adepts would definitely arrive here. Moreover, the eyes of this opponent looked absolutely empty, and he was ready to fight to the death right now. Young realized that if external attacks did not work on him, 
he would resort to another method. Using lightning speed, in half a second he found himself above the head of his enemy, and let lightning through his skull. He managed to create a bolt of lightning right inside his body, and of course this would be very difficult to dodge. Lightning began to spread in all directions at once, and this could be seen in many parts of the city. Yun Seo stood on two legs and looked at the enemy whom he managed to eliminate after a few minutes. Now he was lying on the floor, and smoke was coming from his body, since it had just taken on several thousand volts of electricity. The guy decided that now he could leave this body here so that the sect could find it. But when he began to leave, a voice behind him asked if he had a minute to talk. The guy did not feel a presence until this voice began to speak to him, almost point-blank. After examining this character from head to toe, he noticed the emblem of the plum blossom of the Hua sect. Only one person in Shanshir can give off such an aura, and Yun Seo very quickly realized who it was. This person was the plum blossom divine sword. None other than Master Hyun An. Without thinking for a second, the guy bowed and expressed his respect to the divine plum blossom sword. When the master asked how he knew him, he replied that he could not help but recognize the best swordsman of the Hua Mountain sect. Well, at that moment he himself only thought that he did not understand where he had come from and what he was doing here. The Plum Blossom Divine Sword also said that his charges would take care of this guy who was lying on the floor. So he suggested that Yun Seo go to a more private place to talk. When they moved to one of the buildings, the master asked why the guy tried to hide after defeating the possessed. He said that he simply did not want his intentions to be misunderstood due to the fact that he was ahead of the sect masters. The master replied that in general he could understand the guy, because the adherents had been out of sorts lately. He also added that Hua Shan is indebted to Yun. According to Yun, his student should have trusted his colleague more, but instead he broke ranks and allowed the criminal to escape. At that second, the guy couldn't even think that the one coming who violated the formation turned out to be a disciple of the Divine Sword of Plum Blossoms. The master asked if the guy wanted anything in return from their sect, and he replied that he just wanted to speed up the process of opening the borders, and nothing more. Moreover, since the master was also nearby, his help, in fact, did not seem to be needed. Hyunan, I appreciated that the guy is not greedy. And then he said that it was not that he was interested in worldly values. However, in such a situation, it would be too arrogant for him to ask for something. He also said that with possession there is no need to borrow. Few people would be able to calmly carry on a conversation with the master. The hero decided to ask why he should be afraid in the presence of such a respected master, when they are alone here. After the guy said this, the master laughed very loudly, but after five seconds he calmed down. I remember in his opinion, the more they talk, the more he likes him. And the master asked Yong whether he was traveling on his own, or whether he had companions. He said that the heiress of the Tang clan was traveling with him. Then the sage noticed that the child who was traveling with the daughter of the clan head of the Tang looked like just a guy. This confused the hero a little, so he decided to ask his young if he knew him. He replied that Chion Wu told him that he had recently met the heiress of the Tang clan and her companions, and then the master became interested, and he decided to find out more. However, there was something he couldn't understand. Almost no one knows about Yun, despite the fact that he is quite strong. Yun Seo explained this by saying that he studied at the Heavenly Lightning School. The sage knew how secret this school was, and added that judging by the purity of the guy's chi, this school must have a very rich history. When he analyzed all the information he heard from the hero, he hit the frame with his cup and said that he had made a decision. A smile appeared on his face and he decided to ask the hero if he could take his student Chion Wu with him on a trip. This, to put it mildly, stunned Yun So and he asked the sage to repeat what he just said. He explained to him that the guy spent his whole life on the mountain, and everyone around him revered him as a genius. Because of this, he became arrogant and started creating a lot of problems. Yun Seo could not do such a thing, even if it meant ruining his relationship with the Plum Blossom Sword. Therefore, he apologized to the sage and said that he could not take him with him, and also asked why he was asking such a stranger. Hyun argued this by saying that he liked the hero's unshakable character and the fact that he was entrusted with the care of the daughter of the head of the Tang clan. But the guy didn't give up and said that he and the student had a lot of complaints against each other and sooner or later it would all come down to a fight. The sage said that it would be even better, 
But at that second the hero did not yet understand why this was so. Hyun added that there is no better way to bring a person to his senses than a heavy blow. He also said that he hopes he will think about something after being beaten by his peer. Yun Seo decided to ask again, and asked the master if he would mind if he was not too gentle with him. The master nodded his head imperceptibly and, taking something out of his inner pocket, added that he was not asking to provide such a service for free. He put the wooden plank on the table and slightly moved it towards his interlocutor. At first the guy didn't understand what kind of piece of wood it was, but literally after a couple of seconds he realized that it was a very worthwhile artifact. This item was a token of gratitude, which was highly valued in those parts. A token of gratitude. This is a tablet that some sects give out as proof that they will definitely pay the debt in the future. Such an item cannot be purchased even for 5,000 gold coins. The master said that he had nothing else to pay for this service, because he was an ordinary master, and he did not have the money or power to pay for this service. The guy thought very hard, because on the one hand it is obvious that the new satellite will be a magnet for many problems. But on the other hand, the reward for this task is quite high, and is very much appreciated, and is worth a lot, not even in money. By morning, Chion Wu was already standing near the carriage and greeted everyone who was about to leave. Along with everyone else, he greeted Yun Seo, who was standing a little further away from the rest of the group. At this moment the guy thought that this adept was speaking very straightforwardly, as for a master. He also realized that he could not hate this guy, because there were several reasons for this. Firstly, thanks to him, he will be able to take advantage of the help of one of the ten heavenly emperors. Secondly, this annoying adept will still bring some benefit, but for this you need to be patient a little. When the ladies climbed into the carriage, the adept asked Yun Seo to wait a little. Apparently he had something to say. He notified the guy that the carriage was too small, so perhaps the heroes would be better off riding on horseback. Walking closer to the carriage, Yun Seo said nothing. The adept added that he would replace him later. A second later, the guy was already inside the carriage, and Chion Wu was screaming that it seemed like the hero didn't hear him. Turning around, she said just one word to this adept which made him think. The adept did not understand what the guy was talking about and asked to explain. Yun Seo asked how much money the adept had invested in preparing for this journey. This was followed by the argument why he should be the one to ride the horse. He wished the adept a pleasant trip, and looking down at him, closed the carriage doors. The slam of those doors closing was quite loud, and overall it didn't seem like a very nice thing to do. After this precedent, the adept was a little depressed, as he did not feel very good due to his high self-esteem. The group began their journey, and for some time everything was very quiet both in the carriage and outside. Yung Jie watched this adept very closely, and decided to say that it looks like Yun Seo is not sure that they can treat a disciple of the Hwasek like that. The guy realized that the girl's words made sense. First of all, he is not a disciple of the Plum Blossom Divine Sword, an adept of the Hua Mountain sect. If Yun Seo messes up his relationship with the sect, it could come back to haunt him in becoming an elder. The guy admitted that Yun Jie was right, but has not yet made a decision on how best to make it better for himself. The adept's face was not very pleased, since a long ride on horseback is not a very comfortable procedure. Ah Yun Seo, meanwhile, said that he would just have to provide a digestible explanation. When night approached the group, they stopped at a pass, and Chion Wu asked if he had told about his teacher. Despite the fact that Chung Jie said that he had already done this three times, he still continued, saying that his teacher is the strongest swordsman Huan, the divine sword of Plum Blossom. He emphasized that he was a fairly skilled fighter, and repeated the words, divine, several more times. While he was saying this, he looked down at Yun Seo to see what kind of reaction he would have on his face. Well, his face was still the same indifferent, and he did not react in any way to the words of this adept. Chung Jie further said that it seems that the adept is quite skilled if he has such a good teacher. He said that people often say that he is destined to bring Hua Shan to a better future. Yun so listening to all this, she couldn't stay away, and said that it was very ridiculous. When the adept heard this, he immediately decided to ask the guy what he just said. Yun Seo told him that he suddenly remembered a pack of stray dogs that he recently met in the forest. The adept did not understand at all what this memory was about and what the guy actually wanted to say with this. Then Yun Seo realized that everything needed to be explained. He recalled that a bunch of dogs surrounded the victim. 
but suddenly one of them broke the formation and rushed forward. The victim took advantage of this opportunity and ran away. And they never caught up with her. Yun Seo decided to ask the adept if he thought this dog was very stupid. He told him that the dog probably had a good reason for this. And Yun Seo said that they are just dogs. All they want is the extra cost of losing their lunch. But what if this happens in Nirim? After all, if the bloodthirsty killer is misdue to someone's mistake, then innocent people may suffer. Yun Seo turned his head away from the guy and said that only narrow-minded people would worry about what didn't happen. There was a short silence, which was interrupted by the hero, asking whether the adept had really missed him. Then Xion Wu obviously understood the hint, and standing up to his full height, he asked the guy what he was trying to say. He answered him that he was just talking about that stupid dog and didn't mean anything. And he also asked the adept why he was so excited by the story he told. The fires were still burning at that time, and were the only source of heat in the cold and dark forest. But literally a few hours later they were all strangled, and the whole tree burned down, which meant that everyone should have been asleep. Yun Seo leaned against one of the trees nearby and slept peacefully at that time. An adept approached him and said that he would like to discuss something with the hero. Next, he asked if he would give him some of his time, and the hero answered him that he was listening carefully. Then Xion Wu said that this is not a good place to talk, and maybe they should go for a walk. In response, the guy did not answer, but after ten seconds he said that he agreed. Now they found themselves in a clearing which was located at quite a considerable distance from the camp they had set up. During the journey, the adept suddenly stopped and then the hero asked what he wanted to talk about, since he had taken him so far. He immediately asked what the guy was up to, and why he behaved the way he did. He also noted that he doesn't know what information Yun Seo Woon has, but he decided to ask why the hell he is provoking. The guy said that he just doesn't like the adept, and it doesn't seem like it's a big deal. First, Chion Wu asked what he meant when he said this, and then he saw the seriousness on his comrade's face. A second later a smile appeared on his face, and even later he began to laugh very loudly. He laughed louder and louder until he finally stopped. Wiping away tears after laughing so hard, he said that Young So is a real joker, and added that he hasn't laughed like that for a long time. Then the hero answered him that he was not joking, and was absolutely honest with the adept. The adept after all this said that the hero simply does not know his place, that's all. Then the guy said that from that moment he realized that in fact they had much more in common than he initially thought. After all, he wanted to tell him the same thing just a minute ago. Chion Wu was unstoppable and asked if the guy was really thinking of acting arrogant while hiding behind Ms. Tan's skirt. And the hero answered him that it was strange to hear such things from a person who allows himself to look down on others only because he belongs to a respected sect. The adept forgot about the rules of decency and this was noticeable to the naked eye. Since there was no one nearby, the guy realized that there was no need for him to behave politely here. The guy told the adept that he seemed to have brought him here just to complain, and he advised him to return to the sect and complain to the divine sword of the plum blossom, because Yun Seo had no use for his whining. Turning around, the adept said in a quiet voice that martial artists still have pride. After that, he pulled out his sword and ordered Yun Seo to do the same right now. The guy said that it looks like there is absolutely no point in measuring strength right now. Then Chion Wu said that it looked like the guy was just scared that he might lose now. But he moved the adept sword away. Yun Seo said that he was simply not interested in fighting such a weak opponent. He turned around and began to walk away. And then the guy realized that this should be enough. He began to yawn and talk about how he only disturbed his sleep so that some adept would whine to him. This guy didn't even look at his comrade but he felt how much evil energy he was emitting now. He used one of his techniques and asked the departing Young Seo if he gave him permission to run away now. A smile appeared on the guy's face, because he understood that he was able to achieve his goal quite quickly. The hero said that Chion calls himself a master, but he himself cannot even control his emotions. The adept no longer answered anything. After all, all his answers were shouts and name-calling towards the hero. The guy slowly began to draw his sword and said that until the very end he tried to avoid this fight. But it turned out that Chion Wu himself dragged him into it, and very soon he will regret it. Suddenly the guy disappeared somewhere, and the adept didn't even understand when his silhouette disappeared. Literally half a second later he was already right in front of his face, and held his sharp sword at the ready. 
Before striking, he said that from now on he was simply defending himself and nothing more. Even though Chion Wu was confused, he knew enough secret techniques that he learned from his teacher. The battle promises to be interesting.